comes to Derbyshire's turn to have a bat. Brooke Guest, Wayne Manson, um, Ben McDermott, Matt Critchley, Alex Hughes, Anuj Dahl, Mikey Cohen, Ben Aitchison and uh, Sam Connors. So uh, Connors has the new ball in his hands as we speak. He will be opening the bowling from the race course end. Umpire Long just working out exactly where he should be standing. They're looking for the uh, scorers, I think. Yeah, they found them. Excellent work. So, uh, Will Rhodes to face the first delivery. The left handed opening batsman and skipper as Connors is on his way in. And this one's left alone outside the off stump. Three slips and a gully. A man at point, mid off, mid on. A mid-wicket and a man down at long leg, who is Mikey Cohen, who we expect to open the bowling from the city end. There will be an update for BBC Radio Derby listeners fairly shortly. Clive will be updating his listeners on WM and CWR. And all the other radio stations with initials. 
Connors in again. Bowls, that one's left alone again by Rhodes outside the off stump. Robbie Yates, the non striker. Derbyshire. Well, they're uh, without a couple of players who've played in pretty much every game, if not every game. Finn Hudson Prentice and Liz Deploy, who are both away with the seconds on T20 duty, as is Dustin Melton, who's the one man from the 12 who drops out. I think they're playing up at Durham today. Keep an eye on that one as Connors is in again. Balls, that's a good delivery. Just takes off and leaves Rhodes a touch as it goes through to Brooke Guest, who's keeping wicket still in place of Harvey Hussain. Three slips of Ben Aitchison, Wayne Madsen and Ben McDermott. I think. No, Matt Critchley, Ben McDermott is at Gully with Anish Dahl at point to the left-hander. And this next one doesn't bounce as much at all and goes through quite low to Brooke Guest. Decent first over so far from Sam Connors, who's bowled well this season, bowled nicely. Fifth delivery of the over, yet to concede a run. In and bowls, that one is just turning to the leg side a little uppishly. Alex Hughes comes in to do the fielding. There's no run. I think my clock thinks we're in Germany today. It's an hour in front, but very accurate otherwise. <laughs> oh, bizarre. Lewis Reese at mid on, Billy Goldman at mid off, Hughes at mid wicket. Update coming up. Yeah, sun poking out here, Heidi, as Warwickshire pick up their first run of the day from the final delivery of the first over. It's gone to Will Rhodes there. Skipper Derbyshire won the toss, decided they'd have a bowl first. It does feel like a bowling day, and now they've got to take full advantage. One over gone, Warwickshire one without loss. Uh, update commitments. Completed on this side of the glass. I'm sure Clive will be through fairly shortly. We'll be uh, speaking to Ian Sky a little bit later on, but I will spare you the one sided conversation online and via the uh, club's stream. And it is indeed the left armour, Mikey Cohen, who's going to bowl the first over from the city end. Again, with the three slips and a gully. And again, he's going to be bowling to the left hander, Will Rhodes, after he. Burgled a single off the last ball of the previous over. And Mikey Cohen from the city end. Left armour, of course. Plenty of pace. Played in a couple of, certainly played in one T20 match earlier this week for the seconds. He's on his way now to Rhodes with the three slips and a gully in place. And he edges this one down into the ground, through the slip cordon and away to third man for four runs. First boundary of the match. And I'm delighted to say mm. from BBC WM and CWR, it's Clive Eakin, everybody. Hi, Dave. My first time in this marvellous new media centre. It's nice, isn't it? Yeah. Trying to work out. I mean, I've been doing this job for such a long time. I'm glad you remember using the old commentary box in the back of the old racing um, oh, stand. The grandstand, <laughs> so, yeah. But it must be about the sixth place of uh, commentator from on this ground now. It's quite a well appointed little ground now. But they stand at the far end of us here at the media centre as Cohen is in again, and this is defended out into the offside by Rhodes, picked up by Billy Godelman. No surprise, I don't think Darby should decide to have a bowl first. There's a little bit of haze around in there. There's, uh, it just feels like it might be a bowling day that turns into a batting day. One of those kind of days. Darby should need to take early wickets, I think. It does look quite a green pitch, doesn't it? Mm. 
It has done on a few occasions this season. It hasn't really played like a green pitch. Right. But uh, I think Derbyshire possibly hoping this one does. The guest crouches down behind the stumps. Cohen is turned into the leg side this time by Rhodes. Alex Hughes does the fielding. Few changes for Derbyshire. Just mentioned them. Lewis Reese back after his knee injury. Mikey Cohen hasn't played in recent matches. Nor Anuj Dahl, although he was a, a concussion substitute in the last game here against Durham. No Finn Hudson Prentice today, uh, and no Leas Deploy. They're both with the seconds playing T20 cricket in Durham, getting ready for next Wednesday afternoon mm -hmm. at Old Trafford. Cohen, the South African. Again, just squares Rhodes up a little bit. It goes beyond the reach of a diving Ben McDermott down towards a wide third man this time, and he's picked up a couple more. You feel he's been a little unlucky here in this first over, Mikey Cohen, to have conceded the runs he has. Yes, a couple of edges off Will Rhodes. Just shaking his right hand there a little bit as well. Got a slight blow on it, perhaps, from that one. As sharp is Cohen. He's... Uh, Full of promise, only 22 years of age. Opening bowler Sam Connor's only 21. As this next delivery is left alone outside the off stump by Rhodes to go through to Brooke Guest. Ben Aitchison, who's likely to be first change, he's 21 as well. So it is an inexperienced Derbyshire bowling attack that they've been going with this season. I did see Anna's Dahl going through his paces as a bowler as well, which is good news. We were told earlier in the season that his back was playing up a bit, but he looked OK. Alex Hughes will have a go. I'm pretty sure. Matt Critchley, of course, will have a go. Picked up a wicket in every single innings he's bowled in this season. As this next one is again left alone outside the off stump by Rhodes, who will finally give Rob Yates the opportunity to face a delivery. Because that's the end of the second over. Seven without loss on all of those runs to Rhodes. Yes, anyone checking the score, but it's early stage, I think a nice comfortable start for Warwickshire, but six of those runs have come off Will Rhodes' outside edge. And Warwickshire, first innings runs has been the issue this season. They did get it pretty much right against Nottinghamshire, them, partly because of a rather unlikely last wicket at half-century stand, but they have struggled at times first innings, and they were on the lowest bonus points in, in the country at one point. For batting points, I should say. I was going to say, Derbyshire picked up one point from the game at Essex. <laughs> uh, well, Warwickshire got one point for the game at Durham. So, uh, uh, Connor comes in to bowl, and that's a punch down the ground nicely by Yates, who celebrates his new th three-year contract by getting off the mark with a couple of runs. Thoughts have started to turn to T20 now, unfortunately. Even before this round of matches, uh, Derbyshire was certainly uh, gearing up for T20. Lots of speculation as to who will be in the starting lineup come 2.30 on Wednesday. Or more speculation about why it's starting at 2.30 on a Wednesday, <laughs> from my perspective. In comes uh, Connor to bowl, and that's a bit of bounce. It's left. So spectators in here at uh, Derby. It's wonderful to see. Opposite us, it's quite a busy stand. From both sides, as I understand it, they went on general sale. They did, yeah, which yeah. is good news. And they were. I noticed on the website. I checked last night. There was the general because members didn't have to reserve their tickets, that's did right, they? That's but right. um, there was a few on general sale. They were sold out for today and tomorrow. There were still some left for Saturday and Sunday. Uh, when I checked last night, so yep. if you fancy coming along. Um, to uh, check the website. So, yes, there may well be some... Well, I'm sure there will be one or two Warwickshire supporters in here. That's uh, left and an awkward one for the wicketkeeper who uh, makes a decent low tumbling stop. Do you know what? Already we've seen Connors from this end. We've seen balls that have taken off and that one there that just died completely as soon as it hit the pitch. So that's a slight... Uh, that's something to look out for as the game progresses, but might be a slight concern for whoever has to bat last. Three slips in a gully. As uh, Connors comes in to bowl. And uh, that wraps him on the thigh pad. Hurries, hurries him up a little bit there. Yates. Who uh, 
I mean, in, in many ways, it's a good sign. But yeah, it's generally the season has either got out fairly cheaply early on or gone on to make a big score, which is actually, daft as it might sound, quite a a good sign in terms of his ability as a player. It suggests that once he gets in the gets over the difficult spell with a new ball, he he go on and prosper. As in comes Connors, and that's a wide and easy left by Yates. Yeah, so spectators directly opposite us. That sounds quite busy. And then a few. I did read that you have to um, you have to stay put where you are. So yeah. they're a bit exposed. The, well, not to rain because they weren't going to get any, but they may be a bit exposed to the sunshine. I hope they've all brought hats and sun cream in the stand opposite us. It was mainly brollies in the first match, sadly, <laughs> that the spectators were allowed to when we had 17 overs in the first two days. Yeah. Grim. Connors with number 59 on his back comes in right arm over and that's uh, defended by Yates back down the pitch. So a couple of runs to Rob Yates that over. Warwickshire nine without loss after three. Unchanged Warwickshire, not surprisingly, after a very good win against Nottinghamshire. Yes, Derbyshire's, uh, well, Lewis Reese's return after a knee injury, so uh, he was always going to come back into the side. He had a couple of matches off to try and sort out his uh, problem with his knee. He did play T20 cricket on Monday, I noticed, and uh, scored a few runs, which is good news. And, uh, Anuj Dahl and Mikey Cohen in for Finn Hudson Prentice and uh, Dustin Melton, who played in the last match. Melton's gone up to Durham with the second. Here is Cohen. His second over from the city end, bowls, and that's uh, pushed out in, off the back foot into the offside. Billy Godelman comes round to do the fielding. It was a fairly comfortable single in the end for Will Rhodes, who moves on to eight. Just Warwickshire to, to Temidola, sorry, Clive. Sorry, I'm well, troubling you, but just to reiterate the point about Warwickshire struck in with the batting first innings, improved a bit against Knotts when they got three points, but they are still, along with Derbyshire, tied for 16th for batting points. We're both out of Yorkshire, though, which is always oh, a excellent. good thing. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Take that all day long. That's a, that's a good season. <laughs> that's a good season. So it's going to be uh, Rob Yates. Taps his back a couple of times. As he prepares himself, Cohen is in. And that, oh, that's a decent delivery. Just pulled the bat inside the line, I think, there. He's got his back to us. Might have been one of those late leaves. It goes through to broadcast. It's the slip cordon that's been jigged about so many times over the course of the last few matches. Liz Deploy started at first slip down at uh, New Road, dropped a couple of catches on the first morning, and in the second innings was uh, back to second slip with Ben Aitchison in them. Wayne Madsen picked up a bit of a finger injury or a thumb injury and didn't feel in the slips for much of that game. Cohen's next delivery beats Yates, definitely. That was a really good delivery from the left-hander. Just have moved away from him a touch as well. He played forward, but not massively forward. And it goes through to broadcast. That's, uh, that sounds like Wayne Madsen to me, <laughs> offering encouragement to uh, Mikey Cohen. It really is quick bowler just needs to work on his on his consistency and he's been good so far this morning and that one is pushed out by Yates into the offside where Godelman again does the fielding yeah two edges at least one play and a miss off his bowling so far yeah, his line's been good his line's been good <clears throat> but anxious and already warming up mm. the first slip Decent fielder, Aitchison. Made the first class half century this season. Six for Cohen. He's pushed into the offside again by Yates up to Billy Godelman at mid off. Always at mid off, Billy. The Derbyshire skipper. Who's uh, in conversation now with umpire Billy Taylor. Just comparing uh, what it's like being called Billy, <laughs> presumably. <coughs> Nigel Long with two L's at uh, Square Leg. With some unfeasibly tight trousers. He's, got, he's gone for the slim fit. 
appreciates weight and is, uh, well, pushing this out to point where Anuj Dahl does the fielding, possibly off a leading edge. And that's the end of the over. A good one from Cohen. Just the one run conceded from it. Four gone now, Warwickshire, who were put into bat by Derbyshire. Ten without loss. Rhodes has eight. And Yates has two. I was going to say that the, uh, the top two players in this group not so good off to a flying start at Chelmsford, but they've just lost their first wicket 24 for one in just the fourth over. So that game's moving along. Um, what Warwick should want from that game... In past years, you'd have set a draw, but because you get eight points for a draw, yeah, there's that's... going to be 16 points awarded between yeah. those two teams, whatever happens, plus bonus points. Um, Connors is going to bowl. I, suppose, I mean, the ideal scenario for Warwick should have not. Um, Heavy rain. <laughs> Even then, it's, yeah, might stop them getting bonus points, I suppose. Yeah. That's left outside of stump. There's no run. <laughs> but Warwick should have still got an awful lot of work to do to qualify. But they're obviously in a reasonable position, and if if they do qualify, they'd rather like knots to go up with them because they did the double over knots, and so they would points, have a yeah. one match uh, yeah. advantage over over them before they even start the <coughs> final stage. I mean, it is, and I'm sorry, home fans, but it's I think still five teams in contention for the top two places. I heard commentators from both Essex and Nottinghamshire write off Worcestershire, but I can't quite mm. understand why. No, they they feel quite bullish. Uh, Connors comes into bowl and that's left and there's no rum. So it starts with Essex f five points go to the top but having only got two games left so they'll only have one game in the resumption which is going to be a bit odd. Um, Nottinghamshire then two points out of Warwickshire both with three games to go. And then Worcestershire only a further six points back. Now they have only got two games left Worcestershire so they probably do need to win them both but if they do they'll certainly be in contention. And then Durham further... 14 points off the top two with three games to go. You can stop there. <laughs> Connors, Connors right down over the bowl. And that's a play down to fine leg for four something. Yeah, it will be four leg buys. Came off the thigh pad of uh, Rhodes. So first extras onto the board. Um, and it's a test, I guess. I mean, this format, the, the worry that many of us have about it is. What happens when teams are, teams are in the second and third divisions? How bothered are they going to be? Uh, I know there's some prize money, which will certainly concentrate minds a bit. Well, but, if it goes to the players. Well, <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. I mean, you already mentioned that Derbyshire have got an eye now on the T20, which is absolutely understandable. Mm. In this scenario, uh, Connors comes into bowl. Right arm over. Oh, and that's a lot high in the air, and that will be out. Uh, it's a strange one, that. He's just paddled that straight to Billy Godelman at mid-off, and Rose goes for eight, and it's 14 for one. Almost done for pace there. It, seemed, it looked like he was trying to turn it into the leg side. He's got a leading edge, and it's just looped up into the air. Billy Godelman set himself at mid-off. And Sam Connors, who's got a bit of a knack this season of picking up wickets early on in matches, has got another one, and a, quite an important one, you would have thought. The, what's this, the Warwickshire, rather, apologies. The Warwickshire skipper, an opening bat, Will Rhodes, goes for eight. 14 for one, and they needed early wickets, and they've got one, Derbyshire. They'll be looking for at least three, if not four, before lunch on a, on a hazy, muggy kind of a day. With Ben Aitchison still up their sleeves. And it's been a decent start by the two Derbyshire opening bowlers. Connors from the race course end and uh, Cohen from the city end. And they'll be happy with that. Yeah, it, it is a significant wicket. Because though Will Rose hasn't made huge runs this season, he's actually looked looked good out there. It might, it might sound strange to say. I mean, that's a rare occasion where he's he's got out to a... where he's been soundly... Um, befuddled. And it, it is a wicket of a batter who was beginning to find a bit of form, beginning to look all the more threatening. But he is gone, and Peter Milan, who's yet to make a really significant contribution, Warwickshire's overseas player, delayed arrival. Yeah, we didn't see him uh, no. in that first game. That's right, yeah, Fahari when it snowed. played. <laughs> um, that was horrible, that. <laughs> horrible. 
Yeah, I, I miss that match. I think I was doing lots of football that time. Connors comes into ball, and that's just pushed out to point. There's no run. Um, well, I missed the Saturday. I went. And I drove from Birmingham to Portsmouth to watch Burton Albion. I um, remember that, yeah. But didn't didn't miss an awful lot of cricket as it turned out. I think by the time the football had started, they'd been off for an hour and never came back. And I, I listened to a fair chunk of it and then watched some in the car park at, uh, at Fratton Park. So I didn't miss an awful lot of cricket. Did I hear you do a game somewhere where you left at lunch to go and uh, cover a Burton Albion game? I left at lunch in the knots. Yeah, yeah I must have been sitting Burton to Albion that. at home. Yeah, yeah. Oh, God, that's that. There's a hard work here for you. Oh, yeah. comes in the bowl. Oh, and that's beaten uh, uh, Milan as he plays forward to that and uh, doesn't make contact. So a successful over from uh, Sam Connors. Does he first Sam or Samuel? Sam. Sam, Sam yeah. Connors. Uh, and uh, he gets that nice sound of applause from an appreciative crowd. Warwickshire 14 for one at the end of the fifth over. Yeah, I've never shied away from hard work, Clive. I just want to point that out at this early stage. Uh, but yeah, it was the Knots game. I came down here in the morning, and it was only 20 minutes up to the Pirelli Stadium. So I well, thought I'd, I'd have a look in. And I just missed the end of that match because it finished as I was in the car before I got to the Pirelli Stadium. They extended lunch a little bit because uh, Knots were on the brink of quite a hefty victory. 14 for one. Then Mikey Cohen bowling to uh, Rob Yates, who pushes this one. Up to Billy Godman, the man who took the catch, the Derbyshire skipper. I had to leave Chester Street. I did the first two days and stayed overnight and then drove down to Huddersfield to watch the Sky Blues, Coventry yeah. City play yeah. Huddersfield. And I finished that day in the car park at Huddersfield thinking, am I going to have to go back? And Ollie Hannon Dolby, bless him, did his best to make me have to go back. Number 11, the match was lost, but he still insisted in trying to take it into a final day. <laughs> yes, I came... I'll break off for a moment because Yates is uh, pushing this next delivery from Cohen out to Billy Godman again. When we were when Derbyshire were at Durham, uh, Burton were playing at Wigan on the Saturday, which was uh, when the fixtures came out. I thought, oh, great, Wigan. I live in Bolton, which is about six miles away from Wigan. <laughs> so I drove back from Chester Street to go to Wigan and then drove back on the Sunday <laughs> to, uh, <clears throat> to see the end of that game. Cricket all the way now until the what, first weekend in August after the <laughs> football's back, so it's not all the way at all. We've got two months, and that's that. Cohen bowls quickish delivery left alone by Yates outside the Austin. He's definitely getting some uh, some swing there. You can even even from our angle, when by no means behind the bowler's arm, it just looked as though it was just swinging away from Yates, and he had no problem <coughs> leaving that one alone. Aitchison continues his uh, warm-up regime. At first slip, Wayne Madsen at second, Critchley at third, and McDermott. It's sort of a cross between fifth slip and gully, really. The chances of having five slips these days are fairly slim, you would have thought, so we'll call him a gully. Cohen <laughs> oh, plays and misses again, does Yates. Just tempted him to come forward and just move the ball away from him sufficiently to get it past, unfortunately, the outside edge rather than taking it. Another good delivery from Cohen. We haven't seen much of this season, in fairness to him. Well, he looks to have, to have something, doesn't he? I know he's been working. Whenever you see him working at lunch or in the tea interval and that kind of thing, they always seem to be working on his wrist. It's, 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 it's nothing to do with his action or his delivery stride or anything like that. It's his, it's his wrist that they seem to be working on. He's in again now, and that one is driven by Yates out into the covers. They'll pick up one. They'll come back for a second as Godelman slides and picks up the ball. They're comfortably back for a second. In fact, Yates moves on to 4-16 for one. So once he, once he can get that wrist right, then uh, he's going to be uh, a very decent asset for Derbyshire. He has played a couple of T20s this week. Interesting to see between him and Ben Aitchison. I think the final bowler spot is down to. Uh, Cohen appears to be in the box seat at the moment. He bowls to Yates, who lose this one alone. Bounces quite high and through to Brook Guest. It's the end of the over. Warwick's just 16 for one. Well, I see one of... Um his two previous championship games this season was that 
game the start of the season against Warwickshire. He took two for 40, only had one bowl because uh, Warwickshire's second innings barely started before yeah. it rained. Uh, which was a pity because it was, it was looking interesting. Well, the Warwickshire's had a target of 213. They believe they would have got them, and, and they have some reason for saying that because they have been so much better in second innings and first innings this season, but who knows? It would have been an interesting potentially tense mm. run chase four slips in place as Connors comes in to bowl to mount a two and Milan and bowls him Yorks him Milan playing forward to that season's off stump knocked over and Peter Milan's finding it tough so far with Warwickshire he is bowled for a duck and uh, Connors has his second and Warwickshire a 16 for two traffic delivery from Sam Connors wasn't it you're right fuller of length he didn't look like he was necessarily expecting it there, Peter Milan. And uh, off stump, out of the ground. No, no finer sight for an opening bowler than the uh, stump coming out of the ground. They always put a little bit of extra water in the holes, don't they, just to make sure that it comes out, I think. But uh, terrific start for Derbyshire, who decided they'd have a bowl first. And when you do that, you do need to pick wickets yeah. up. And they've picked up two already inside the opening 25, 26 minutes. So uh, they'll be cock a hoop. And Sam Connors, I say, he's got this habit. And it's a very good habit to have for an opening bowler of picking up wickets early, not necessarily getting them later on, but in his opening spell in innings, he seems to pick up wickets. And that is uh, exactly what he's done here this morning in. Uh, well, the sun's trying to peep out, and you can sort of see patches of blue sky up above, but it is slightly overcast and slightly hazy, and the bowlers really are taking full advantage. So Sam Hain, who started the season well, had a, the odd hiccup since, but he is still Warwickshire's top-run scorer this season. Um... And he needs to steady the ship for Warwickshire. He hasn't got a century this season, but he has got close a couple of times. Scored 346 runs in the championship thus far this season. Connors can't wait to get into bowl. Hayne is, as he does, Jonathan Trot style, is uh, holding everything up. Taking guard, prodding the pitch, having a little wander around, touching his toes, stretching. He's just showing off by touching his toes, of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's ready now. And Connors comes into bowl. Wickets in consecutive overs from him. And uh, Hayne pushes out to the offside, thinks about a single. Uh, thank goodness, from a Warwickshire point of view, he thought again, because that went straight to the fielder. And it remains 16 for two, with Warwickshire up against it a little bit early on here. Yeah, it's unfortunate. One of the, I, mean, I don't keep many, so I hardly keep any. Let's face it, any stats at all. But it, it, I'd love to know how many of his wickets this season. Sam Connors, 14 of them now have come in first spells. I bet, I bet quite a few. It's looking for number 15 now, and Hayne just gets out of the way of a short delivery, a little bit too wide to really trouble the batter. Uh, although he is coming down the pitch to prod the the surface. If that one sprung up off something, I'm going to have to. I'm going to do something really clever now, and you're going to carry on online, right, okay. sitting next to me. And I'm going to speak to Radio that Derby. Isn't too clever for me. This. No, no, I'll, I'll just remove <laughs> one item here. Okay. So Dave disappears into the ether for a moment as he updates BBC Radio Derby and prepares for a possible quiz. Here online, we're watching. Connor's coming to bowl, and that's beating the outside edge of Hayne, who dabs forward at that. And Warwickshire have had a couple of real first inning struggles. Bowl out for 87 at Chesler Street, 166. They were bowled out for as well at uh, Chelmsford. I find it pretty tough here, 16 for two. And well, it was an important toss, you felt. Pitch looking quite green. As Dave was saying it's quite muggy as well. Not easy batting conditions. And Derbyshire are doing well to take advantage of good bowling conditions. That one's a bounce, which doesn't get up much. Hain ducks under and has to really limbo it. Get right down to uh, get below the ball. He does manage, though, to uh, prevent it hitting him. 
So here, yeah, this uh, county ground diary, which has changed an awful lot over the years. As I say, I've been coming up, doing this job long enough to remember the old racing course stand, of which there's still remnants, but not uh, quite looking like the racing stand that it used to. That one is another Yorker length delivery, which Hain does well to get bat on, though it is a leading edge. It goes out along the ground onto the offside. There's no run. End of the over, 16 for two. That's, uh... So do I carry on now, Dave? Yes, you're not on. Yes, that's fine. You're, uh, just I'm just checking that it is me that carries on while you're on. Yes, 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 that's fine. So, uh, <clears throat> A pleasant day applause down here for uh, and the bowlers must enjoy the return of the applause and Connors acknowledges it and the marquee in front of us uh, <clears throat> in comes uh, Cohen he may feel a bit unlucky he's bowled well without getting the same rewards and there he gets the edge of uh, Yates to be fair to Yates he did well to play it down and it's fielded after it bounced at third slip <clears throat> by Critchley Whisper it quietly, but it's, I was walking behind one fairly grumpy gentleman who went into that uh, market. He gave two stewards a, a bit of a hard time, which I thought was a bit unfortunate. Lots of checks and what have you, you have to go through, but we all know why, so let's, let's just get on with it. Cohen left uh, arm over, and that's defended successfully for uh, no run by Yates. He's on four. And Warwick should need a partnership. They'll be dreading that prospect to be bowled out cheaply. It's a game, really important game for them in the context of the uh, chase for a top two place, which is still wide open. Derbyshire, to be honest, are the only team out of contention, which makes it particularly important then to, to get points against them. In comes uh, Cohen. And that's a little hint of an edge, but again, all on the ground to point for no run. And it is about survival now for Warwickshire, really. Lost Will Rhodes for eight. Beaten for pace, it seemed, and just spooned one up to uh, mid-off. And then Peter Milan comprehensively beaten by Connors has taken both wickets Milan failing to score Warwickshire haven't added to that they lost two wickets for three runs and they haven't added to that 16 they lost the second wicket on so far and they won't there that's a play and a miss it's a lovely delivery from Cohen a play and a miss by uh, Yates you sometimes get this you know, wickets fall early one bowler gets them but the other bowler actually looks every bit as threatening just doesn't quite get the edges. It possibly helps his uh, bowling partner. It keeps the batters unsettled and anxious. And Cohen is certainly doing that here. He's in again. And this time solidly played by Yates onto the offside. For no addition to the score. Don't forget you can follow what's going on in all the County Championship matches. It's it's a it's a one man band today. Alex Alex Winter's doing he's doing it all. He'll be working feverishly. But uh, if you scroll down, where well, you find the links um, to the commentaries. If you scroll down, whether online or on the uh, BBC Sports app, you'll find updates, text updates on all the matches going on elsewhere. You'll see, for example, that Notts twenty nine for two now against Essex. This one, Yates again, defence solidly, plays forward to it. The offside is a maiden from Cohen, during which he uh, beat the bat on one occasion. But uh, Warwickshire, 16 for two. So I'm just chuckling because Dave's shaking his head. A, we've, all, we've all been there, Pres radio presenters that take a bit long to come to you. <laughs> um... Still going to be Connors, the opening two bowlers continuing, and why not? They're uh, causing real problems here. 
still four slips in place. It'll be Sam Hayne. Difficult start to the innings against Connors. He's poised, Connors into bowl and Haynes turns that on nicely through mid wicket and it could have been conceivably been stopped and it wasn't so he's through for a single I mean to be fair to the fielder well, I shall attempt to identify in a moment it was a half stop um, so it could have gone for uh, four if he hadn't got something on it but uh, he may feel shoes that he should have prevented any runs there it was the one where he got a hand to it but it squeezed into the bottom corner in football parlances and it does get Hayne off the strike and gets him off the mark. And takes Warwickshire off the 16, which they lost their second wicket. They are 17 for two. Just three slips in place now for um, Yates. Uh, uh, he's hit lob that in the air, and he is going to get away with it. Ooh, now, could that have been taken? It was Lewis Reese who just seemed to be a bit on the back foot at mid-on. Understandably, he probably wasn't expecting that. It was spooned in the air by Yates. And in the end, Reese didn't he wasn't even able to make an attempt for it. He ran towards the ball, but in the end couldn't even make a dive for it, and it died in front of him. Just wonder if he'd been a bit sharper, it's easy to say from up here, whether he might have had a chance there. But um Yates the left hander, right arm over to him. He leaves that one's a good leave. Didn't get up very much, but he was Confident it was going to go past the stumps, and he was right. Uh, awkward one for the wicketkeeper, sort of ricochets off uh, Guest, but no opportunity to take any run. 17 for two. <clears throat> well, actually, I find it very difficult on a greenish pitch this morning against two lively young opening bowlers. <clears throat> and Connors. Bounds in, red soles of his shoes showing, and that's nicely played that time by Yates, who steered it to square leg for a single to move on to five and take the score to 18 for two. So the left hand to right handed combination means the fielders for the second time in the over have to move around. Well, this is the umpire, we're getting a bit grumpy about it, I expect. Our umpires today are Messrs Long and Taylor. <clears throat> Shouldn't have to worry too much about weather or light, I don't think, today. Connors into bowl, and that's defended by Hain to mid-off. Seems to be a little bit of variable bounce. One or two are bouncing a fair bit. Others are keeping quite low, all adding... So the uh, difficulty in the uh, batting conditions. In comes <clears throat> uh, Connor's right arm over. That's a well, very wide delivery, really, uh, and easily left by Sam Hay. That delivery aside, not a bad over, but a couple of singles off it. Allowing Hayne to get off the mark and Yates to move on to five, and it's 18 for two. How do you get on with your quiz then? Am I back? Y you are, yes. You're mm. not here. See, I can't hear you. Oh, I can hear you. Bit of, oh, that's, no, that's not the reason. Anyway, oh. if I'm back, I'm, oh, I know. There we, ah. there we go. Uh. I knew one of the wires would get me in the end. <laughs> Sorry about that. They, you know, you know how these things work. They play. They thought, we'll be, we'll be busy in a moment. Then they play a song. <laughs> yes, I always try to be about that. Yeah. Oh, we're going to get a song in. Why? Yeah. It won't be long. Yeah. Anyway, have I missed anything? No, not really. You carry no. on. It's Mikey Cohen from the uh, the city end. He's bowling to Rob Yates and he pushes it out into the offside where Billy Goldman does the fielding I mean the only thing you miss he probably saw it I don't know but the the one where Yates spooned to uh, yeah. yeah I just wondered whether Reese was a little bit on the back foot I was mm. slightly surprised he wasn't even able to make an attempt for it in the end it only bounced about a couple of, a couple yeah. of yards at the most in yeah. front of him didn't it yeah perhaps he was just caught unawares possibly yeah first game back after two outs I don't think that will have had any effect 
as you say, maybe just the thought that the ball was perhaps coming a little quicker and then had to readjust. And Anyway, two wickets so far. Cohen is driven to Lewis Reese, who tumbles to his right and pulls off a very nice stop indeed. Gets both hands to it. Prevents Yates from moving on from five. Yeah, excellent stop. That will frustrate Yates. He must have thought when he hit that, that's going to be four. But uh, very well cut out. Alex Hughes now going through his bowling uh, action at mid-wicket. Although I think Ben Aitchison is, is he's been given the nod here by the amount of exercise he's doing. He'd be exhausted if he carries on at that rate. <laughs> 18 for two. As Yates waits for this next delivery from Cohen, which is defended straight back to the bowler. Only a, 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 I hesitate to call him short. He's not short at all, Mikey Cohen, but he's not tall for a fast bowler. So uh, skids it through. And left arm, of course, which just gives that... I do like to see a left armer in a bowling attack. I just think it, it gives you that extra dynamic. We haven't seen an awful lot of him this season. But he's got this opportunity here as the sun just disappears for a moment. So there's still a bit of cloud around. And uh, this one is again defended back to him. He moves to his left to get his left hand to it. Doesn't take it cleanly. And I'm not sure it was going very far anyway. It was hit straight into the ground by Yates. Did have a, a tweet I wanted to read out from, uh, from David McArdle who said that far too early to get excited. This was around 15 <laughs> minutes ago when Derbyshire had picked up two wickets. He said, but this is proper Derbyshire fast bowling and it has been a very good start by these two by Connors from the race course end and from Mikey Cohen who's currently bowling from the city and he's got four slips and a gully and he turns that down the leg side I think he's got either glove or bat on that has he although no it's just come off the thigh pad and it's signalled as leg buys down below us well the signal was out in the middle the ball's down below us and four more to the total, 22 for two. I'm going to say it's never too early to get excited. Never too early. Get excited. Do get excited. I always think that when my football team scores early, I think I know they'll probably lose 4 1, but I've got to get excited now because we've scored. Well, you're, we're you're, well, as you know, your football team yes, and my football team are the same team. Interesting but, yes. managerial uh, development there, yes, isn't it? I wasn't, yes, I was a little surprised, <laughs> I have to say, but yeah, yeah. Never go back, they say. But they said that about Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank. They said it about Nigel Clough. They said it about uh, Johnny King as well. Probably. Yes, indeed, of course. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Mark Robbins at Coventry City is another one. who went back and has done very, very well. So it does work. Let's hope it works at Prenton Park. 22 for 2 at the Encora County ground as uh, Cohen is in again. And that one's left alone by Yates to go through to wicketkeeper Brooke Guest continuing with the gloves in the continued absence of Harvey Hussain who didn't play down at uh, New Road isn't uh, as far as I'm aware hasn't played any T20 yet so we'll hopefully get some kind of update on Harvey he was clunked on the head on day well it was the it was day three it was the Saturday in the game against Dublin that's into the over incidentally at 22 for two um, I was told that night by Matt Critchley who uh, much like myself, he's not a medical man, uh, that he came into the changing room and, and appeared OK, but it's a funny old thing, his concussion. You've got to be very careful with it, and cricket is especially careful with it, which is good. Slightly more careful with it than football, I reckon. Well, there were about 10 million medical people, of course, watching the football last night, weren't they? <laughs> they, all, they, all, they all decided they knew what had happened. Mm. Anyway, um, well, Connors is coming into bowl here, and that's steered nicely into the offside for a single to Hayne. But you're just talking about getting excited about the fast bowlers. I mean, it's two 22-year-olds, uh, and they have bowled well this morning. Yes. Obviously, consistency is always the issue for young bowlers, but it is, it is, it's always great to see a couple of young bowlers. Well, that has been the problem this season. Sam Connors has got his first five for him, first-class cricket this season. Uh, ben Aitchison, who will come on shortly at some point, has, uh, has got his first five. He picked up six in the Durham innings here. Uh, but then the week after, they can go naught for 50, naught for 60. And, and, and that happens with 21-year-olds, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, Connors is in again. And that's in the air. And... Dropped. It's dropped, yeah. It was a splendid effort. Um, and he must have got it on the half volley in the end there. Uh, Reese Again, inducing the batter to punch it in the air. 
It looked for me as if he might have caught it, but Reese made no attempt to claim it, which is to his credit. I think he got both hands to it, and as he hit the floor, it's, it's basically been dislodged, which is mm. really unfortunate, but he was sort of parallel with the ground when he, uh, when he got to the ball. Terrific effort, as you say, to try and take it in. Collins comes into bowl, and that's uh, pushed out to the onside, but it's been a recurring problem then this morning for Warwickshire. That one that's just popped up in the air to mid-off or mid-on. In fact, it's been mid-on, isn't it, each time? Um, wheel roads perishing that way. No, uh, he, he was mid-off, wasn't he, Billy Goldman? Always at mid-off, Billy. Sorry, yes, you're right. Always yes, at, oh, yes, no, yes, that, yes, That's yes, the only yes. reason I can say it with any definitiveness. But anyway, in that sort of V... It's like the ball's just stopping a little bit, isn't it? Yeah. Connors again to Yates, who pushes out to the offside. And there's no run, so I suppose he does go down as having survived a chance there, Yates. That will be a, a difficult one. Yes, on I five. I put dropped in inverted commas on yeah. my notes, because it, it was tough, wasn't it? It, it was. was tough. It would have, well, we would have been saying what a great catch it was if he'd held on to it. You say he was unlucky, got to it, but then the, the difficult bit is hanging on to it as you land, he's thudding to the ground. And he wasn't quite able to do it. Gone is into bowl. And he's just... A nice, that's a nice shot, that one, from uh, Yates. He's just steered that to a wide third man for four. Just leant back a little bit, made room for himself, opened the face of the bat. Maybe a slightly risky shot, but he uh, executed it well and gets four runs, which he'll be pleased with because it's not been easy for him out there. But he's on to nine, 27 for two. Dobbish have removed the fourth slip, so there's a bit more room there, isn't there? Now the fourth slip has come out into the covers, Ben McDermott, and they've uh, they strengthened the leg side. In fact, Alex Hughes is just going out to the mid-wicket boundary, not the square leg boundary, but there are only three slips now, which you often find after the first 40 minutes or so, they remove a slip. Connor's in again. That one, he tries to work around his pads. I'm not sure whether he got any bat on it. We'll soon find out, because they've got through for a single... And, uh, yes, he did get something on it. And uh, umpire, there's this new umpire signal, which we never had before this season or last season, where he puts both hands in the air and waggles his fingers to say sanitisation break. You know break. what? That's the first time I've seen it. It is actually the first time I've seen him do it that way as yeah, well. Yeah, I never noticed it. Well, thank goodness for that, because I've, <laughs> I've seen quite a lot of cricket this year and never noticed it. But, yeah, so, uh, hand sanitisation break after 11 overs. I don't suppose there's an official signal in the MCC manual for, oh, yeah. uh, for that. It's only a matter of time. <laughs> There'll be a committee working on it as <laughs> Probably, we speak, yeah. I would have thought. Yeah. Well, I always used to do it straight away, but as soon as I haven't touched anything for an hour, <laughs> it's <laughs> relatively pointless. 27 for two, no success for England yet today. New Zealand 286 for three, so as I'm right for not picking Ollie Stone. Uh, so 625 for two against Yorkshire. Worcestershire 20 for two against Durham in this group. Not 34 for two against Essex. Northampton's going well at Canterbury, 56 without loss. They played well this season. I mean, yeah, they have. Really great win there last game. Listen to that. It was a great yeah. listen. Lancashire, 24 for one at Cardiff. Somerset, 21 for two. Taunton against Hampshire. And Leicestershire, 30 for one against Gloucestershire at Leicester. Change of bowling with Lewis Rees replacing Mikey Cohen. So it'll still be left arm, but it'll be, uh, it'll be hoping to swing the ball perhaps a bit more than Cohen did. Although he seemed to swing it fairly decently. And if anybody can get a bit of extra swing out of the ball... It'll be Lewis Rees, who is left arm, of course. I almost forgotten he was left arm. It's that long since I've seen him. <laughs> Three weeks. <laughs> How soon we forget. <laughs> of course, Derbyshire, more often than not this season, had a left arm option in their attack. But today they've got two. He's going to be bowling to Rob Yates. He's on ten. Two slips and a gully now. And that first one... Slightly slower than Cohen, and he was through the shot a bit quick there as he as he went forward. It struck him somewhere unpleasant, but he's showing no pain to his credit. Just nine runs off Cohen's five overs, and pretty unlucky to have a zero in the wickets column. Ball nicely, didn't it? Yeah, did ball nicely, and that will have uh, boosted his confidence, no doubt. Very fine guitar player. Did he? Mikey Cohen, yeah. Reese in again. That one's left alone by Yates to go through to Guest, the wicketkeeper. 
there is a 12th man on at the moment. Uh, and I was told, although I can't find, oh, I know where it is, I took it out. Uh, it's Connor Marshall, who is performing 12th man duties today. He's fielding at mid-wicket, very close to some old uh, footmarks. He might want to move away from those for his own health. As Yates leaves this next ball from Maurice alone outside the Ostom. So, uh, well, Mikey Cohen's still out there, and so is Sam Connors. So I'm going to try and uh, try and work this out. It shouldn't be that tricky, really, should it? But it is. Has the next bowler gone to get boots? Maybe. Oh, Ben Aitchison's still, still there. Yeah, first, yeah, still yeah. the first slip. Critchley's still out there. Billy Godelman's still out there. Just sneak the next one on as this next one is left alone as well outside the Ostump, taken is, by a guest. Is Lewis Reese still out there? He didn't do any damage, did he, when he. Uh... Well, he's bowling. So he probably is out there yeah, then, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think he's there. It's first day. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll be on it by Sunday, uh, if you ben, say. Ben, I know Ben McDermott's there. <clears throat> well, everybody's there. Perhaps I'm fielding with 12 players then. <laughs> there are only 11, unless that. <laughs> Isn't Mike? Uh, Alex Hughes has gone. This next delivery is uh, driven by Yates up towards mid off. He may well have gone to put some boots on, uh, some bowling boots on, but it's Alex Hughes. Right. It's always the last person you. Yeah. Always. It's the yeah. last place you're looking at. But that's where he'd been fielding as well, which was a bit of a clue, which I didn't pick up on. 28 for two. Lewis Reese yet to concede a run in his uh, first over. Looking to complete the maiden here. First up from the city end. As I say, the sun has disappeared. It's a quite thick cloud up above now as uh, he bowls outside the Ostump. And it's taken in front of second slip by Brooke Guest. So obviously a bit of movement there. He hitches up the, uh, the knee protector that he's got on, got on underneath his uh, whites. And Conor Marshall's moment of glory has come to an end because uh, Alex Hughes is back. And we are going to see Ben Aitchison for the first time this morning. By the look of it, from the race call sense, Sam Connor, six overs, two maidens, two for 11. Decent. Yeah, could have had a couple more. Oh, Warwickshire, slow going, but their priority at the moment is to try and limit the damage early on. Something they failed to do, particularly against Durham, when uh, they found themselves 30 for eight. They need to obviously just try and see off the first hour and a bit longer and ensure that even if runs are hard to come by for the top order there's an opportunity for other batters to maybe come in and push the score on a bit so Ben Hutchinson wearing number 11 on his back statistically Derbyshire's uh, best bowler this season 16 wickets at 16 well, that's not very good news for Warwickshire is it and he, uh, he has bowled nicely Struggled a little bit at the start of the season, I thought. He kept leaping out to the left, but he's, uh, he's ironed out that little kink in his delivery stride. Comes into a bowl, and that's a good leave from uh, Hayne. It looks a bit missed by all that much. It was an interesting run up. He's running straight. It seems to sort of half stop halfway through. Mm. Uh, maybe that's the point of acceleration really good last season and then suffered an ankle ligament damage and we didn't see him again uh, and at the start of this scene he looked almost as if he was trying to protect that ankle as he uh, just stepped to the left as he delivered the ball but mm -hmm. that's gone now which is good news and he's looked much much more threatening he comes to bowl and it's a right arm over on the wall that's an edge which has beaten the wicket keeper an inside edge and has gone through for Four. In fact, they'll get six because it was a no ball. Um, so a rather a lot going on there. Clearly overstepped. First no ball, I think, of the uh, innings thus far. But uh, four runs to uh, Sam Hain, uh, who moves on to six, and it's 34 for two. So he's just re-marking his run up. It's... Um, uh, so a little kink as I'm looking at it again. It's where he sort of stands up straight. He leans forward and then halfway through he stands up a bit. Um, and he comes into bowl. 
now and uh, that's a legitimate delivery and it's played to point for no run a number of former Lancashire players in the uh, in the Derbyshire ranks uh, along with Brooke Guest and Lewis Rees who uh, well, Lewis Rees has been here a good good spell now Brooke Guest arrived last year on loan Aitchison arrived last season Matt Critchley began his cricket career in the junior ranks at Lancashire Former Warwickshire bowler Keith Barker is having a good day. He's taken three for four for Hampshire against Somerset, who are 26 for three. The next one, he just drops bat on that uh, Hayne and puts it out onto the onside for no run. That was an accurate delivery from Aitchison, making the batter play. Not too much bounce on that one. It remains 34 for two. The mist coming in over the city, it is, isn't it? it, does that looks drop, a bit... it looks like it's dropping down, doesn't it? It does, yeah. Which isn't necessarily a good thing. No. It's becoming more hazy by the minute. In comes Aitchison, his first over, bowling right arm over, and that's neatly turned through mid wicket by Hain. Just beats the field, who is now giving chase, and the ball's going to win. Connor could, Connors couldn't reach it, and that's a, a nicely timed shot from Hain to put him into double figures. And this is proving a productive over for Warwickshire, 38 for two. Half century this morning for a former Derbyshire player in the uh, New Zealand team, Harvey Nix, Henry Nichols. Mm. Made 61, but he's now out. Caught by Robinson off the bowling of Wood for 61. One of the few Derbyshire players to have represented the county, but neither or didn't get a bat. Didn't get a bowl, didn't take a catch. <laughs> Had one complete washout and one innings where he fielded, and that was it. Uh, this next one is straight down the leg side, and it's going to be... Oh, it's a, oh, a very good attempt at a stop, but an unsuccessful one. Now, I didn't see the on pass signal leg by is there. If he no. did, I missed it. So he no. must have got a little tickle on that. Hain, and moves on to 14. 42 for two. Just maybe straight down the leg side a bit. Aitchison and Hain got the slightest of touch... It touches, which helped it on its way. Now he's moving his uh, marker again on the top of his run-up. He's, uh, mm. he's blaming it all on the run-up at the moment, <laughs> is, uh, is Big Ben Aitchison. That's a tough start for him. Just his cat will be worrying a little bit. He's letting Warwickshire off the hook a bit because they're scoring runs this over. Aitchison comes into bowl, will be forgiven if he gets a wicket, but it's defended out to mid-off, there's no run. Well, I make it 14 runs in that over, yeah. including the no ball. Haynes on 14, Yates on 10, 42 for two. Yeah, a little expensive to start with, uh, Ben Aitchison. I shall leave you for a few moments, uh, Dave. I can't yeah. do anything clever like you do. I'll just have to go to the next room. <laughs> I won't be doing that again. 42 for two, Haynes 14, Yates 10, and... Uh, the great irony of, of seeing Lewis Reese waving for the 12th man to come and remove his cap or take his cap off the field because uh, quite often Lewis Reese doesn't wear a cap, but he is today. So while he's bowling, the 12th man has to uh, come on and uh, take it off the field for him, Connor Marshall, so keeping him busy. Yates on strike, left hander, left alone outside the off stump, first delivery from Lewis Reese. In not for 14 off one over Ben Aitchis and not uh, not, what he, not the way he would have wanted to have started. He's down to a couple of slips now. Two slips and a gully. So it's Aitchison at first slip. Madsen at second. They're deep in conversation along with Brooke Guest. Ben McDermott at gully. And uh, of course Anuj Dahl at point. Just slightly backward of square as Reese is in. And that one is pushed up to mid-on where it's fielded by Mikey Cohen. Looking across to the towards the city and it decided to get quite gloomy over there now. I don't think the weather's necessarily coming that from that way but it's this looks like it's bubbling up a little bit. Reese is in again and balls. That one is pulled into the leg side quite violently by Yates. He picks up a single only though because down at deep backward square leg is Sam Connors. 
There'll be a, an update for BBC Radio Derby listeners fairly shortly. Clive Eakin will rejoin us once he's updated listeners to BBC WM and CWR. 43 for two. So two wickets in the opening hour for Derby. Should both go into Sam Connors. Will Rhodes for eight. Peter Milan without scoring. Sam Hain, who's got 14 to his name, defends the first delivery he's faced from Lewis Rees back to the bowler. Similar kind of uh, field for Sam Hain. They've got the uh, two slips and a gully. Man at backward point. Reese in again. This one is a little hurriedly played into the offside. Anish Dahl beats Matt Critchley to the ball to do the fielding. My exceptionally accurate clock, which is not only an hour out, it's an hour and a minute out, I think, now. Which is a good effort. Not sure why. It doesn't appear to be picking up the satellite at the moment. Perhaps it's the heavy sky up above. Here is Reese in again. Bowls to Hayne, who leaves alone outside the off stump. That's the end of the Lewis Reese over. It Cost him just one run, so he's conceded one run in two overs. And Warwickshire are 43 for two after 14 overs this morning. Yates on 11, Hayne on 14. And ben Aitchison is going to continue. Uh, thank you, Ethan. Ethan Calder has been in touch by email. Fletchcricket at gmail.com. Uh, I shall get, get to that... Uh, shortly after this update. It's been a good opening hour for Derby. Should have won the toss and decided to have a bowl this morning with Sam Connors taking wickets in successive overs. Will Rhodes out for eight and Peter Milan bowled for naught off just three deliveries. Uh, they've started to uh, sort themselves out though, the Warwickshire batsmen. Sam Hayne has 14, Rob Yates has 11 and they've moved on to 43 for two in their first innings, Warwickshire. Oh, he's got himself in a tangle. Yes, Ethan's been in touch via email. <laughs> uh, how long ago does it feel when Derbyshire were battling for a draw in the snow at Edgebass? And uh, uh, he says uh, it's all really gone downhill since then with an exclamation mark. Well, there have been one or two disappointing performances, certainly, as uh, Hayne is on strike now and turns this next delivery from Aitchison into the leg side down towards long leg. They're going to come back for a second as well as Mikey Cohen does the fielding in the far distance. He moves on to 16. Yates has 11.46 for two. He says, as a pesky student, he has his final viva this afternoon, after which he'll be hoping to graduate with a master's in chemistry. Good man. Uh, I'm hoping that I'll tune in again later today to see Warwickshire was skittled out before tea and Derbyshire building a big lead. Or is that too much to ask? Well, they've, they've started well enough of Derbyshire. It's just got a little cooler as well in the commentary box, which suggests that... Uh, there is moisture in the air. And they took advantage in that opening hour. Here's Aitchison in again, bowls outside the off stump to Sam Hain. And it's through to Brooke Guest. Well, good luck with that, Viva, if you're still listening, Ethan. I have no idea what it means, but... And I did go to university, but I don't think I ever did a Viva. Sounds very... Uh, very complicated. But uh, a Masters... In chemistry, that's the kind of calibre of listener we're looking for. <laughs> You're all welcome. Decent crowd inside the Encora County ground for this first day's play as Aitchison bowls and it's defended by Hain upon his toes, pushing it up to mid-on where it's fielded by Lewis Reese. And there's no addition to the score. Scoring rate pretty decent at uh, a little over 3.1 or just under 3.2, whichever way you prefer to look at it. And that 
has been a problem that Derbyshire have had this season. There's always been runs put on the board, even when they've been taking wickets. And early on today, that wasn't the case. But Aitchison, a little expensive so far, come for 16 off his first 10 deliveries. And he's in to bowl to Hayne, who's beaten. Terrific delivery from Ben Aitchison. Went forward, didn't take the edge, though, as it went through to Brooke Guest. That was a decent ball. And that will just have settled him down. He knows he can do it. We all know he can do it. Six for against Durham. Tall man. Keen to impress, no doubt. Why wouldn't he be? He turns. The next delivery is a bit short and it's punched away, probably for four runs. Yeah, they weren't, he wasn't entirely certain, Sam Hayne. Initially he thought it was going for four and then he didn't, so he set off for a single, but the ball had enough on it to go away to the boundary. Billy Godelman deep in conversation with Ben Aitchison after that delivery. Uh, 20 runs off his first two overs, Ben Aitchison in the half century is up for Warwickshire. 50 comes up in 15 overs with Sam Hayne on 20 and Rob Yates on 11. Dave McArdle adds his good luck to Ethan as well. Nobody knows more about your topic than you do. You've got this, he says. Certainly hope so. Be, uh, good to hear how it went a little bit later on, Ethan. If you'd let us know. Assuming you're happy to let us know. Change of bowling. Alex Hughes is coming on from the city end for the first time today. The fifth the Derbyshire bowler used already, which is something that Billy Godelman's tried to do. He's uh, mixed up his bowling attack as much as he possibly can throughout the uh, season so far. Alex Hughes hasn't done an awful lot of bowling though. In fact, he's yet to pick up a wicket as he begins an over from the city end and it's defended by Rob Yates straight back to him. Yep, going into this match, he's bowled in three innings, he's bowled 21 overs, five maidens, naught for 72. So economical, just uh, a little under three and a half and over he goes at Alex Hughes, but yet to pick up a wicket so far this season as he bowls again. That one is driven, it's a fine stop by Hughes and his follow through, diving to his left hand side. Parries it to Mikey Cohen at mid wicket. Another dot ball. Nicely done by Hughes. Who will be a key member, no doubt, of the T20 side, which will now include Logan Van Beek, of course, who uh, is currently on duty with the Netherlands against Ireland with a big victory yesterday. Next delivery from Hughes is uh, driven on. He gets a hand to it, almost deflects it onto the stumps. And just for a moment, Sam Hayne would have been concerned that he's on one knee still, having turned and got back into his ground. And whether he got back into his ground in time, only Billy Taylor, the umpire at the far end, will be able to tell us. We're going to see Brooke Guest, who gets the helmet, stand up to the stumps to Alex Hughes. He is uh, he's that kind of pace of bowler, no question. I'm sure Ben McDermott's interested as well. He'll be keeping in the T20. This next one is turning to the leg side. Good stop diving to his left by Mikey Cohen this time. The pressure remains on the batsman to get, get moving. He's faced 51 deliveries for his 11 now as Rob Yates. I know that means very little in the context of uh, red ball cricket, but batsmen, even in this form of the game, like to uh, like to score runs, and if they're being frustrated, Hughes, again, played straight back to him by Hain. Hughes is the kind of bowler with his economy rate over the course of this campaign, from a small sample size, suggests that he's not going to go around the park. Still quite chatty out there, the Derbyshire fielders. Let's have a round up for the 
the scores at the end of the over is from elsewhere and that one beats Hain and isn't uh, Gates rather and isn't taken cleanly by Brooke Guest but a maiden over first up from uh, Alex Hughes good start for him and we're not going to see Ben Aitchison continue because Lewis Reese is going to swap ends and come in from the race course end I think that makes sense just take him out of the attack momentarily elsewhere in the test match at Lords, New Zealand have moved on to 292 for four against England. Sussex are 35 for two against Yorkshire at Headingley. Worcestershire 28 for four against Durham at New Road. Knots are now 54 for three down at Chelmsford against Essex. Northampton just going really nicely at 79 without loss against Kent at Canterbury. At Lancashire 37 for three against Glamorgan in Cardiff. Uh, Hampshire against Somerset, Somerset 37 for four, that game being played at Taunton and at Grace Road, Leicestershire are 44 for one in their game against Gloucestershire, you bang up to date with the scores from elsewhere, 16 overs gone here, 50 without loss, uh, 50 without loss, 50 for two Warwickshire, Sam Hayne on 20, he's on strike, Rob Yates on 11, and in comes Lewis Reese bowling one outside the off stump, that one's allowed to go through to the keeper Brooke Guest and there's no run we're starting to get a little gloomy here I'm surprised to be saying that if I'm entirely honest with you because the sun was out at 11 o'clock when we began there is more brightness down to the south as this uh, current cloud moves over no problem with the light though this one is pushed into the offside and Matt Critchley does the fielding skips in like a gambling lamb to do the fielding two slips in a gully a point cover mid off mid on Mid wicket and a long leg for Lewis Reese over the wicket, left armour in now, and that's defended into the onside where it's fielded by Sam Connors. And there's no run. Big match this for Mikey Cohen and for Anuj Dahl ahead of the T20. I know it's a completely different format, but. Will Dahl make it into the T20 side again? Such a magnificent fielder. His, his next delivery is defended by uh, by Hain. Mikey Cohen possibly battling with Aitchison for that final bowling spot. I certainly had the better of today so far. It is, as I say, a very small sample size from this match. Aitchison, over the course of the season, has probably got the edge as Reese bowls one that just stops on Hayne and he pushes it out into the onside. He controlled it very nicely in the end as Sam Connors comes in from mid wicket to do the fielding. Connors, two for 11 from six overs. Mikey Cohen, naught for nine from five. They bowled four maidens between them, shared equally. Ben Aitchison, two overs for 20. Alex Hughes, the one maiden. And Lewis Reese in his third over here. Nought for one. As miserly as ever. As this one beats Hayne outside the off stump. A little bit of extra bounce for Lewis Reese on that occasion. And it was taken round about chest high by Brooke Guest. And uh, umpire Long does the little fiddly thing with his hands to suggest that they're going to have a sanitization break the poor old 12th as Connor Marshall who come on to uh, bring <laughs> Lewis Reese's cap back has to turn tail and go and get the uh, the sanitization fluid which you will be more than familiar with I'm sure listening wherever you're listening around the country around the county around the world by the BBC Sport website and app and on the Derbyshire County Cricket Club 
Stream live from the Incora County Ground. Just half of the permanent temporary stand at the far end of the ground in use today. The other half is uh, pretty much acting as a sight screen as we play almost slap bang in the middle of the uh, of the square. The right hand side of the permanent temporary stand as we look out from the race course end is uh, relatively well populated. As is the East Midlands demolition stand and the seats in front of the uh, old calf. There's a few in front of the players pavilion away to our left hand side. There'll be some down to our right as well as Alex Hughes around the wicket bowls and that one is what did that hit? I think it's hit some part of uh, poor old Rob Yates's body. Again, he's showing no pain, but it sounded like a hard plastic sound to me, which is why he's down on his haunches, I think. The only bit of hard plastic he'll be wearing is his protector. <laughs> so uh, that was not as painful a blow as it might have been had Cohen been bowling, but painful nonetheless, because Hughes can get it down there. He's in again. The lights come on. Ooh, and out is out of the corner of my eye as that one is defended by uh, Rob Yates. It's getting quite dark. I'm so sorry to leave you so long no, there. Not a problem. Oh, IT issues. I thought you were paying me back for earlier. No. I, and you know IT issues when you ring up there, so I'll ask you questions. I don't know. Is your computer a Z342, whatever? It is? If I, knew, I have no if idea. If I knew that, I wouldn't be asking you. <laughs> quite. Yeah. Have you tried turning it on and off? <laughs> It's Hughes bowls, and that one is off a thick inside edge out into the leg side. And that's fielded by Sam Connors. Yeah, that's got really gloomy. Um, it does. So, so is, that a, is that a BBC computer? Is it? it is a BBC computer. Uh, um, I always steer clear of any BBC <laughs> equipment if I possibly can, for uh, that very reason. And um, I always feel so stupid when I have these conversations with these technical people. Obviously, must be thinking, oh, blimey, this is kind of nothing. And the answer is, no, I don't. Well, you, you get the IT blokes in here to do six, day, six hours of commentary, see how they go. <laughs> Horses for courses, Clive. Horses for courses. 51 for two, single to uh, Yates, who moves on to 12 uh, from that last delivery. As Hughes is in again outside the off stump, left alone by Sam Hain. He's on 20. And, uh, after that flurry of runs off Ben Aitchison, it's all calmed down again now. I think Billy Godelman did the right thing. It's never nice when you've got to take one of your, uh, your front-line bowlers off after two overs, but he did concede 20, didn't look entirely happy. So Billy Godelman's decided Alex Hughes and Lewis Reese for the time being is the way to go. Ooh. That one has popped on uh, Sam Hayne and looped into the leg side, but I think it came off a pad. But it just seemed to pop on him there. This some of the even bounce in this pitch already, which is very exciting for the game. <laughs> Not particularly exciting for the batsman. I wouldn't have thought, or indeed Derbyshire, who are going to have to bat last unless they bat long in their first innings. So Hayne waits. Hughes bowls a full toss to him that's uh, crunched out into the offside, but straight to Sam Connors. And that's the end. Of the over, one run from it, one run from the last couple of overs, in fact, or well, three overs, I think, uh, because Alex Hughes bowled a maiden first up. Lewis Reese has just bowled a maiden from the race course, and now Alex Hughes has conceded one. 51 for two, Hain has 28, has 12. Well, a good thing from these two point of views, they have steadied the ship somewhat, haven't they? 35 now added for this third wicket after they were 16 for two. It is now quite gloomy and dark, it isn't is it? Very I really wonder whether we'll get to uh, to lunch. I didn't see this coming at all. No, it's a fair breeze blowing. I think the Derbyshire flag is blowing reasonably keenly. So that is all we need to concentrate and try and get through. Now, as Reese comes in, left arm over, and that's just pushed to mid on by Yates, who's on a a really hard-working 12. It was uh, Hayne who benefited from that little flurry of runs in Aitchison's over. Not sure it would have done Aitchison any great favours to have kept him on, would it? No. No, I think Godland's done the right thing. England have got a fifth wicket, I see. I don't know if you mentioned that. No, I hadn't. I hadn't seen uh, that one. So, uh, Wood has gone. Uh, sorry, Watling has gone to Wood, I should say. Right. 
and uh, Dom Sibley's taking the catch. So a bit of Warwickshire success there. That one keeps a bit low and moves away. Outside off stomp, there's no run. 51 for two. So New Zealand are 293 for five. Our uh, Warwickshire would love to be 293 for five in this innings at some point. They are a day in advance of us, of course. <laughs> <laughs> New Zealand. <laughs> I haven't got all those this morning. No. And North Hats are going great. Comes out. Mm. Canterbury 97 now without loss. Yeah. Kent are having a disappointing season, though, aren't they? They are, yes. Mm. That's true. I think we'll, uh, Derbyshire will be on their way to Canterbury, or <laughs> Kent will be coming awesome. here. That's uh, driven to mid oh, well, A nice trip to Kent wouldn't be bad. No, no, absolutely. I'll take you to Tunbridge Wells, you never know. No, in September they're not allowed, no, I don't think, right, are they? Okay. <clears throat> After Derbyshire took Kent to Chesterfield in September one season, I think the uh, ECB said no outgrounds because not a ball was bowled. <laughs> yeah. They had a concert here. They were concerned that they wouldn't be able to get the ground ship shape in time, and as it turned out, they would have been. Reese into bowl, and that's uh, pushed out to the offside. That is a no ball. Um which I think is the second I've spotted anyway. Yeah, the second yeah. the you can see shadows as well now, can't you, from the floodlights? And, and with the greatest of respect to the Derbyshire floodlights, if you can see shadows from them in daylight, then it is dark out there. The plume of black smoke now yes, the back I've as well. Derby County looking for a new manager or something. We're waiting for the white smoke. <laughs> Not as far as I'm aware. <laughs> Nothing would surprise me, though. Uh, Reese left arm over, comes into bowl. That's left. You see, the Morecambe manager's uh, left today because apparently he's got... Going to uh, Bradford, Into Bradford, yeah. Mm. Adams. Adams. Yeah. yeah. He, uh, he swerved all questions, didn't he, at Wembley? I think it was already a done deal before then. From what I can gather. I mean, uh, yeah. I've done a couple of seasons with Bradford City. I still follow one or two people who appear to be in the know. Two slips in the gully then as Reese comes in and bowls. Accurate enough, just going just slightly wider the storm. So it's left by Yates. He's playing very cautiously. And he, but he's doing a good job for his team here. Warwickshire 53 for two. Put in this morning by Derbyshire. Lost two wickets with for 16 runs in the first seven overs. Connors striking twice, Rhodes for eight, Milan without scoring. Reese to bowl. And that's edge, or oh, a top edge, which flies over the two slips. A very false shot from Yates. He's going to get four for it. Again, I don't know, it seemed to stop on him. It sort of looped up in the air. It didn't go quickly off the bat, but too high for the slip fielders to have a chance. He's on to 16, 57 for two. Yes, for Lewis Reese, his, uh, his mood will not have been improved by that, I'm sure. But I mean, it was miles over the slips, wasn't it? Yeah. Got a different 12th man now. No idea who that is. <laughs> I certainly don't recognise him as a first teamer. But the rest of the first team squad up in Durham to play some T20 cricket. Alex Hughes is going to continue from the city end. I just wonder if Cohen was still bowling, whether uh, he might be a bit too quick for this light. Here comes Hughes, and that's pushed by Hayne very pleasantly up to mid-off, where Billy Godelman does the fielding. That's what I was going to do. I was going to have a look and see how many people were down to our right. Oh, there's a fair old sprinkling to our right as well in front of the marquee, and... In the little stand just down below us. So it's a, it's a decent turnout today. Certainly far more people here today than there were against Durham in the very unpleasant conditions two weeks ago as Hayne pushes this one to mid wicket. Critchley. He's the man who does the fielding there with the towel poking out the back of his trousers. I, I fancy we'll see Critchley before lunch. We generally do. Not just the one over, usually bowls two or three. Likes to be involved in the game. It's Hayne, 
defends this next delivery from Hughes out into the offside this time. It's uh, Sam Connors who does the fielding. There's no room on the two cars with their lights on going towards or coming from the Pentagon Island roundabout. Can't actually see the lights of the cars going towards it from our vantage point. So that's not good. And the lights on here at the county ground as Hughes bowls to hand. That's a leading edge up towards mid on. The ball is definitely stopping on the batsman. I'm trying to look, the clouds are barely moving, it seems to me. They're probably going at about 200 miles an hour up there, but uh, they are moving from the east. So uh, going across the ground from left to right as we look out from the race course ground. This next delivery is pushed into the offside once again by Hayne. And it's fairly uniform cloud away to our left, which is where the weather appears to be coming from. So uh, no let up likely anytime soon in the in the gloom. No. I just didn't. This is more. This, it was sort of like this at around about seven o'clock this morning. Not here. I wasn't here then, but. This one's turned nicely by Hayne into the leg side. Mikey Cohen comes in from square leg to do the fielding. They pick up a single from the final delivery of the Alex Hughes over. Not for two from three overs. Hughes, Hayne moves on to 21. Yates has 16 and Warwickshire are 58 for two. But yeah, it was, uh, it was quite overcast first thing this morning. The sun seemed to burn it off, and I thought once the cloud had been burnt off, that'd be it for the day, but no. Mm. It's just not raining as of yet. The supporters are out in the open. We'll hope it stays that way, because <laughs> nothing they can do about it. It may as well get wet unless they go home, I suppose. That would be the other option. There's a little hint of rain around one o'clock in the forecast. I've just oh. looked out, so... Uh, Good luck with your sandwiches. Yes, yeah, could be a soggy lunch. Reese comes in the bowl. And that's turned uh, neatly by Hayne to midwick. He settled down nicely, Sam Hayne, after quite a difficult start. He's on to 22. So he's shown some form this season without making the really big score. Fifty-nine for two, Warwickshire. Reese hands down by his side as he comes in. That's uh, left by Yates. So many balls Yates has faced. He's faced 63 balls for his 16. That make that 64 now. So very cautious stuff, but no one will mind the change in them. They'll be happy that he's. Oh, so should get this far without any further damage. He comes in now. Reese, and that's pushed, not with the middle of the bat. A little hand to head there from uh, Reese. Of course, he'd almost squeeze that one through. Thick inside edge to mid on for no run. And. Uh, so this Derby ground, we've seen changes. The, the Lodge Hotel over the right-hand corner. Reese Bowles, that's left. She stayed there for one match, and we were commentating from that side of the ground, and it was pouring down with rain. As I was looking out of my hotel room, I could see where we were due to commentate. Well, I'm not in any hurry here, am I? <laughs> I, could see, I could see our commentary box getting... Nip Pelt back, it on. Nip back for a nap. <laughs> Reese comes in to bowl, and that's left. You have to get strangely excited about Southampton when I stay there. If I stay in, a, in one of the rooms overlooking the uh, the ground, I've never been Great. to Southampton. You could, you could, because of where we commentate from. You could do the entire four days without ever leaving the hotel. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Um, Right now, of course, because it's been uh, comedy, isn't it? Well, the India's going to prepare for the World Test mm. Championships, so no one else is going to be getting in there, I wouldn't think. 
race to bowl. And that's defended solidly back to him. There's no run. Yes, I remember one match. I was watching Countdown during the game because it was raining. I just... <laughs> <laughs> and watch a bit of countdown, look out the window every now and then and tell the office it's still raining. Uh, 59 for two here. Um, Warwickshire after 21 overs. The update coming up for BBC Radio Derby listeners fairly shortly. Well, I say fairly shortly. They're talking about winning the Willows at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Contemporary, uh, a new novel. Yes. Uh, it's only just been published. Alex Hughes is going to continue. He's down to one slip. Oh, no, he's not. I missed the wicketkeeper. had been standing up. Yeah. So a couple of this bit gets tricky because Clive can't hear my cue. Here is Alex Hughes in from the city end, pushed out into the onside by Sam Hain, fielded by Matt Critchley. I keep looking for rain in the dark parts of the roof of the members' pavilion on the far side because it just feels like you wouldn't be you wouldn't be massively surprised if there was a little bit of drizzle in the air at some point. But there, I can't see any. I can't see any. And I couldn't see it at New Road, and it was chucking it down. <laughs> Hughes in again, left alone outside the off stump by Hayne. Taken cleanly by Brooke Guest on this occasion. These two are added 43. So, yeah, mm. just seen not only have not lost three wickets against Essex, but they've also lost Joe Clark, who's retired hurt oh in that game. Hughes in again, that one is uh, played nicely off the back foot for four runs out to the cover boundary. Beautiful shot from Sam Hayne. He moves on to 26. Warwickshire into the 60s now, 63 for two. And they move closer to a half century partnership, these two. 47 they've added since uh, Peter Malam went for a three ball duck. As Sam Connors. Picked up wickets in successive overs, and of course they're going to play a song now. <laughs> He's completely forgotten about me. <laughs> so I might do what we did last time. I'll disappear at the end of this over and do it that way, and then that way we're not interrupting the commentary. Apart from by me saying, what on earth's going on? <laughs> it's one of those <laughs> occupational hazards. Yeah. Hughes in, Hayne pushes into the leg side. Critchley again does the fielding out there and returns the ball to Brooke Guest. Plenty of sun hats out there in the permanent temporary stand, which is good to see. Keep covered up. And somebody's light is on on a phone, I think, and it's shining brightly. <laughs> Next delivery is all hits the pad. There's a big appeal for lead before we're gonna have been in some bat on that. Hmm. Uh, and it lodged in the top of his pad, so there clearly wasn't any bat, otherwise he'd have been out. It was a very elegant appeal. Some mm. starfish <laughs> <laughs> stance taken by Hughes. As I say, he hasn't got a wicket this season yet. I mean he hasn't bowled an awful lot. He's bowled twenty one overs going into this game, so uh, wasn't anywhere near the first team at the start of the season, which is remarkable for somebody with six first-class centuries to his name. But he's in again now, and that one is turned into the leg side to Matt Critchley once more. It's the end of another decent enough over from uh, Alex Hughes. He did concede a boundary. He's conceded six runs in total from his four overs. And Warwickshire with Yates on 16 and Hayne on 26, a 63 for two. Well, it's, he's walking backwards to, uh, not to Christmas, but to... Uh, <laughs> mid, oh, I'll show you your age a bit. Then. <laughs> oh, well, people know I'm old. Well, I knew what you were referring to, so it shows mine as well, I guess. <laughs> So, am I all right to carry on? Yeah, you carry on, and I'll, right. I'll move across now. That one's left. There's no run. 63 for twos. Reese continues. And, uh, has it brightened up slightly? Maybe slightly. Might have got away with those uh, clouds. 
Reese in the ball to uh, Yates, who uh, just fends that off his thigh pad away to mid wicket for a single. It's quite a rare run for Yates. He's on 17. 64 for two. And the uh, field moves around the left and right hand combination again. Square leg on Pike Grumpley walks from one side to the other. Still two slips and a gully in place. So the zip of the early morning success. I've got to have said that. That was a delivery that uh, had Hayne looking very uncomfortable. I'm not sure, he don't think he got any bat on it in the end. I think it might have come off his thigh pad and bounced into the ground to second slip. There was a stifled appeal, an LBW appeal. So still something out there for the bowlers, but maybe just not quite the pace we saw from the two opening bowlers. I think they've missed me altogether. Oh, dear. Well, it's one of those things, isn't it? In comes uh, um, the bowl of recent. Well, wide, yes, long, uh, long since the day has gone where a, a stiff email would follow if I if I was left out, as you say. Yeah. C'est la vie. Yeah. Well, there's so few staff knocking around. Well. <laughs> That's part of the problem. <laughs> so uh, you're stuck with me. If he suddenly <laughs> jumps across, which is unlikely, I'll let you know with a startled... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Shriek comes in again then and uh, bowls as a recent. It's an accurate delivery which is solidly defended by Hayne. No run. Yeah, they've done really well, these two, haven't they? Yates and Hayne just to uh, steady things after 16 for two. Stopping without its uh, scares, but they're still there, and that's the important thing. And Derbyshire in the final, what? 23, 24 minutes of the morning session will be very keen to pick up another wicket here. Yeah. So she having won the toss. It's definitely brightened up. That one leapt off the ground a little bit. It was wide, so the batter wasn't troubled by it, but it leapt up a bit at the wicket keeper. End of the over, 64 for two. Yeah, the odd one, it, 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 it's behaving erratically, isn't it? The, uh, the pitch at the moment, so... To bear in mind as it goes on, it's not going to get flatter, you wouldn't have thought, necessarily. No. Although, yeah, it could get quieter, couldn't it? It yeah. sometimes happens. Yeah. Must be Ben H isn't coming back. We've got a new first slip. Look, Ben McDermott's gone into first slip now. He's a wicket keeper in one day cricket. May well be a wicket keeper in four day cricket in Australia, but not here. Wasn't supposed to be playing, only came across for the uh, Royal London and the T20, but Billy Stanlake's injury meant that uh, they had a spare slot for him on the overseas. Ben Etchison from the city end now. Two overs for 20 from the race course end. He's in and bowls, and that one is pushed up to mid on by Yates. Good start for Etchison. He'll just be looking to put it in the right place for the first few deliveries, get himself into some kind of rhythm. Alex Hughes, four overs, one made naught for six in his uh, brief spell from the city end. He's got three slips as Ben H. So Matt Critchley's gone into third slip. No gully, though, just a man at point. Aitchison is in and he reaches for that one. Yeah, it's quite a long way outside the Austin. I think he's going to get four runs as well he is. And that's despite the fact it was being chased by Anuj Dahl. It's a half-century stand between Yates and Hayne from 105 balls. So they've scored at a reasonable lick as well. 52 they've added since the early departure of Rhodes and Milan. And steering Warwickshire into calmer waters. Did reach a long way for that delivery, though, to uh, force it out to the point boundary. So Aitchison is in again, and this one's left alone by Hayne, and it goes through to Brooke Guest. 
Connors down at long leg. Mikey Cohen's found himself at mid wicket now. He's a good fielder. Sam Connors is a decent enough fielder as well. Mid on and mid off. The usual two Lewis Reese and Billy Godelman. Alex Hughes in the covers. And there's Dahl at point just backward of square. And then the three slips already mentioned alongside Brooke Guest, the keeper. Who crouches down now because Aitchison's on his way in and Yates just guides this to Dahl at backward point. And there's no run. F uh, 68 for two. 26 to Hayne, 21 to Yates. Batted pretty well through the gloom. And as Clive said, it's just starting to brighten up a touch now. The effect of the floodlights isn't quite as obvious, although you can still see shadows. And solitary pied wagtail <laughs> joined himself down there. A fine leg. As Aitchison bowls pushed into the offside by Yates. Dahl does the feeling, throws the ball to the keeper, who throws it to Critchley, who throws it to Anuj Dahl, who fielded it in the first place. I quite understood that. <laughs> and they wonder why we don't get enough overs in a session. Should be 32 with bowl. Well, this is the 24th now. There's only 20 minutes to go until the lunch interval, so I doubt whether we'll get to 32 unless something remarkable happens. Aitchison is in again. That's a good delivery. The beats uh, Yates goes through to Brooke Guest. That's the best delivery I think that Ben Aitchison has bowled. It was the final ball of his over. It cost him four runs in the end, but having uh, beaten the batsman, he will go away in a fairly decent mood. And then he realises he's got to come back <laughs> and sanitise his hands, so that will all be negated. Hain 26, Yates 21, 68 for two. Yeah, a good piece of captaincy from Billy Godelman. Protecting his young bowler after that over when he went for 14 runs and went for a few in the second over. So take him out of the attack for a while. Give him time just to get over that and then change of ends as well. And he did finish that over very promisingly. 68 for two though. Watch, will be very happy with what they've got to after they were 16 for two. They can get to lunch two down. Even three down wouldn't be too bad. I just feel that's about par when you put the team in. As uh, Reese comes in, that's left. And by Hain, who remains on 26. Looks like. Uh, Anush Dai might be preparing to have a bowl. Yeah, well, we were told that Dal didn't wasn't able to bowl earlier in the season because he, he had a slight back problem. But right. he, he was bowling like a good one in warm up this morning, and, and I think he'll have to bowl. It's one of the uh, one of the attack. This one from Reese oh, wraps the pads. There's an appeal. It's only low enough. Bath was playing at it as if it was going down the leg side. We're not straight on here. So, very difficult for us to judge. But not out is the call. Certainly low enough, as I say. Mm. <clears throat> he was there with the, in the familiar pose, Lewis Reese, with his right arm across his, uh, his midriff and his left, touching his left elbow and his left hand, stroking his chin. <laughs> Does that quite a lot? Does that quite a lot? It's, it's good to see. He was so, coming to bowl. So something might have gone to his yeah, eye. Right. Yeah. yeah. Suddenly so stopped. <laughs> we might need Nigel Long to help him out here. Just have a yeah. look at that ump, would you? Yeah. Maybe suggesting something in your eye. I mean, you didn't give that LBW a minute ago. <laughs> I'm not sure whether the umpire can help him. Probably can't. Because no. he won't be allowed to. If he can't touch his cap. Oh. He's unlikely to be able to touch his eye, is he? He's had a look. <laughs> yeah, yeah, from a safe distance. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's irritating when that happens, isn't it? I mean, I'll be watering a bit now yeah. as well. Yeah. Not well to see you for the next appeal. <laughs> Still 
checking it. I think he's going to come in now to bowl. A large flock of geese. Ah. Uh, this one is uh, left. Again, it bounces a bit. It was well wide, but it lifted a little bit off the surface. How do they get into that V formation? They, they got completely <laughs> out of shape for a moment there, and then they've all gone back into that big V formation. It's brilliant, isn't it? Absolutely yeah. brilliant. They've now gone out of sight, the geese. It'd be great if they landed on the cricket field. <laughs> Slightly alarming as well, I would have thought, because they're quite big. Reese in the ball, and again it wraps up the pass. Again, he's appealing. This time the appeal is stifled. Um, so there might have been a little bit of bat in on that. And he didn't really follow through with the appeal that time. It's keen though. Yeah. It will get some. He will get some movement in the air, Lewis Reese, but just a quite a slingy action. Been as successful with the ball this season as he has been in previous seasons for Derbyshire. Should I be keen to rectify that? And he comes again to ball, and that's a play down to fine leg for a single by Hayne. It moves on to 27. Yeah, this season so far, Lewis Reese just uh, five wickets at more than 70. Which is a little unfortunate because he's batting. He's got 161 runs at 16. It's entirely the wrong way around for the opening batsman. His averages at the moment. New Zealand a seven down now. Goodness me. 297 for seven. It's a good fight back by England. Reese bowls. Definitely brighter now. That's driven to mid off and there's no run. Conway still batting on oh, 172 <laughs> on his debut. Terrific effort from him. Will he run out of partners before he gets to uh, 200? It rather looks like he might. As uh, PJ Watling won, Colin de Grandon. Was he a former Warwickshire? He was, yeah. T20, T20 played the yeah. T20. He was out for a 10 ball duck. And Mitch Santner, who would have been. A Derbyshire player with his knee not disintegrated, and uh, he would have played T20 for Derbyshire. It's usually a one ball duck when play for uh, the Bears in T20, <laughs> but occasionally it came off of the bat. So there a six ball duck. Uh, Robinson getting De Grandom and Wood. Climbing the wicket of Santner as Ben Aitchison begins a new over from the city end, bowling to Sam Hay. That's uh, off the pads down to backward square leg and they stick to a solitary leg by signalled by Billy Taylor at the far end he's always waiting for the signal back he's going to have to get it soon he's going to have to get it soon otherwise he'll be falling over he's feeling the base of his back now there he's, he's been he's been acknowledged thank goodness for that I thought I thought he was going to need physio good balance though wasn't it was it? terrific he didn't barely move did he but he was on one leg for a long time 70 for two I think the scorers had already put that down as a single off the bat as well, looking at my scorecard, so we'll have to wait. This next one is uh, defended by Yates. He's on 21. Yep, they've taken... Oh, yeah, it's, it's all happening on the, uh, on the computer. It'll go down as a leg by shortly. I think they'd accepted it to come off the bat when Billy Taylor said it hadn't. Pretty much what the uh, umpire says goes. Aitchison's <laughs> in again, and this one is cracked at to backward point by Yates. There's a breakaway flock of uh, geese going in the opposite direction to the ones we saw a moment ago. Either that or they're doing a grand tour of Derby. There seem to be as many in that flock as there was in the previous one. Aitchison is eaten and Yates. Oh, he struck on the pad, but was there some bat? Was it outside the line? Either way, Billy Taylor was quick to move his head away, which prevented Aitchison from going into the full throated appeal. Ten minutes to lunch. 
thereabouts. My very accurate clock is not only not very accurate, but it's becoming <laughs> less accurate now. It's an hour and a minute wrong, or is it 59 minutes? I'm not sure. Aitchison's in again, and this played off the back foot into the offside by Yates. Ball dribbles out to Alex Hughes. Hughes has a little satellite signal in the bottom left-hand corner. And clearly isn't picking up any kind of satellite signal at the moment. I'm not sure why. Also thinks I'm German. Mikey Cohen fielding down at uh, deep backward square leg has come 10 yards in off the boundary. We're going to see a short delivery here from Aitchison. No, we're not. We're going to see a regular length ball. And, uh, it's a maiden over. Is it? Yeah, it's a maiden over from uh, Ben Aitchison who... Uh, in the absence of Finn Hudson Prentice, who quite often celebrates maidens by punching the air, <laughs> punches the air as he picks up his first maiden. Four overs, one maiden, not for 24. Good for him. And we are going to see Anish Dahl. You're absolutely spot on. I don't think it, we can't have bowled much this season. In fact, he hasn't bowled at all this season. I didn't think he'd bowled much. Not at all, Anish Dahl. So in his fourth game... Well, it's, I don't know if that four it will include the substitute appearance, won't it? Because he was a concussion substitute. So uh, that gets him an appearance rather than just a sub appearance. Quite often, 12th man, because he's an excellent fielder. So he comes in to uh, bowl. Fifth ball, he uses left outside off stump from Hay. A bit of a looser to start with. Another useful operator, though, in the Derbyshire ranks. Terrific in T20 with his fieldings. Regularly saves between half a dozen and a dozen runs in an innings with his uh, with his fielding. A sharp haircut as well. Number 65 on his back as he comes in to bowl. And that's just steered off his pads by Hain to square legs. A long run around from uh, fine leg. He does a good job and gets the throw in and restricts Hain to two. Mikey Cohen must have run about 40 yards there because he's down at yes. long leg and ended up at square leg fielding it. So he did well, didn't he, in the end? It's not a great, great place to be fielding with all that space. Comes in, dial to ball. It's that one in. It's just, uh, played up to mid-wicket. There's no run. Looks like it's quite a short run-up with then quite a wristy, quick action, mm. isn't it? seen an awful lot of Dahl full stop as a bowler during his Derbyshire career but he's clearly in the all-rounder category. He started the season uh, at three in the batting order dropped down at seven and then was left out. Next one has left outside off stump for no run 72 for two Warwickshire His omission allowed Brooke Guest to come in as a batsman he started at seven, moved up to three, opened with Billy Godelman when Lewis Reese was out. I imagine they'll drop back down to three again in this one, but he also has the gloves in the absence of Harvey Hussain. Dahl bowls, picks that one up, and it's solidly defended by Hain. Bowler gets applause, makes a batter play. Sure. I do. Yeah. 56 the partnership now. He comes in again, and that's well why that time that's easily left by Hain. Temperature's plummeting. <laughs> yeah, I took my sweater off the side. Of I'm, I'm persisting at the moment. But... You're a braver man than me. I've got my shorts on. It's obvious. I haven't, I haven't gone that far. A clear mistake. <laughs> if the sun doesn't come back out anytime soon. It's always likely to be warmer when the sun's out. Ben Aitchison to continue his fifth over of the morning. 
But only his third from the city end, and he's into bowl to Yates, who hands this up to mid on. And Lewis Reese does the fielding without any major problem. 304 for seven now, New Zealand, so passing 300 in their first innings. Devon Conway, 174 not out. Edgerson bowls that one's off an edge and just to the left of Matt Critchley. No, I can't have been too far to the left of him as he dived away. The ball races away down the third man for four runs. Ben Edgerson can count himself a little unlucky there. Yates not in control of that shot at all. He moves on to 25 though. Warwickshire to 76 for two. Yeah, there have been a few edges in this innings. We should have ridden their luck a little bit. But they are beginning to build some foundations. Yeah, it's weight and turns this into the leg side. Picks up a comfortable single as Lewis Reese moves around from mid on to do the fielding. 77 for two. Worcestershire up at Durham struggling. 55 mm. for five. This, this group, of course, Nottinghamshire 67 for three against Essex. But with Joe Clark having retired not out, I think the phrase is nowadays, isn't yeah. it, for some reason. This next delivery is uh, defended by Sam Hain back to Ben Aitchison. I don't think there's anything wrong with retired hurt, no. all honesty, <laughs> but, you know. I suppose you sometimes retire ill, but... Uh, yeah. yeah. Bit, uh, it actually you know. on this on on cricket, but it actually says retired hurt. He was on eleven. Just twenty five for Ben Sledge, of course. Uh, Hasib Hamid isn't playing in that match. He was with the England squad as backup as Aitchison is in. Hain clips this very nicely down to fine leg for a single. It's fielded by Sam Connors. He moves on to 30, 78 for two. Yes, yeah, so I had some discussion as to whether the players not selected would be potentially available for the counties, but presumably because of if they're in the squad for Edgbaston that perhaps can't come out of what we no longer call a bubble. Yes, so, it's not been a bubble for a while, has it really? Uh, Ollie Stone, of course, not selected for the test match, but I don't think there was any question of him being able to come back for this game. Aitchison bowls left alone outside the off stump by Yates to go through to Brook Guest. It's the end of the over seventy Eight for two. Aitchis and five overs for 30, so he's clawing it back, although six runs did come from that over. Four of them, however, from a rather fortuitous edge down to third man. Yates has 26, Hayne has 30. Batters of a chat. Last over before lunch, you would think. Yeah. And if they can get through this over, it's been in the end a pretty good morning for Warwickshire. We've been 16 for two at one stage. It looked very dicey. In that opening spell. <clears throat> from Connors and Cohen. Nice alliterative opening attack. Dahl into ball, that's an edge. He did play it down in fairness, but I think it was more edge than he intended there from Hain. It's gone down to third man for four. Pass second slip. Had there been a third slip there, they wouldn't be able to catch it. They would be able to field it. But uh, Hain on to 34, 82 for two. Yes, they don't show up in the scorebook edges, do they? But there, no. there must have been half a dozen or more. I expect they show up on the various analysis charts, yes. though, don't yeah, they? Don't think so. Not in the old fashioned pencil scorebook. It's four runs. I just get away with describing one more delivery before I have to leave you for our one o'clock. Dahl comes into bowl. And that's pushed. The great thing is I can never be forgotten for our early reports because we just do them at three minutes past. And if, they, if they don't take or him not. or not, it's their problem. <laughs> <laughs> I just speak at three minutes past, off you go. Brilliant. See you after lunch. Cheers, Clive. Clive will be back with us at uh, 20 to 2. When we resume day one. News bed just starting on Radio Derby as well as this one from Dallas, left alone outside the Alstom.
So a good opening half hour for Derbyshire when they picked up those two wickets. But since then, although Robbie Yates was dropped by Lewis Reese on two real tough chance, he's moved on to 26. Hayen has 34. And it's 82 for two. Derbyshire, no doubt, would have liked more wickets. They, of course they would, but they'd have, having decided to bowl first as Dahl is in again, and that was turned into the leg side. Connors is onto it quickly. Yates had set off for a single, but Hain, who played the ball into the leg side, says, I'm OK, thank you. Left alone outside the air stump by Hain. Goes through to Brooke Guess. So we're down to the final delivery of the morning session. Dahl in only his second over. Conceded just six runs so far. Just to make sure Sam Hain spots something on the pitch that needs prodding. Now he's ready. Dahl is in bowls and it's driven. Billy Godelman moves around from mid-off to do the fielding. And the players leave the field at lunch. Warwickshire, 82 for two. Sam Hain has 34. And Rob Yates has 26. He's been out there since the start and faced 86 deliveries. And between them, they've added 66 for the third wicket. If you're watching us on the stream or listening to us on uh, the BBC Sport website, we will return for the afternoon session at around about uh, 1.35 or so.
it's Alex Sale. Rocketed through point. They're going to go all the way. 17 years in the making. Finally, they make it to Edge Baston and Finals Day.
It's on 26 of the men out. Will Rhodes for eight. Peter Milan without scoring. And the man who took the wickets was Sam Connors. But it looks as though we're going to see leg spin at the start of the afternoon session because Matt Critchley's come out without his cap on and he's gone to fetch the bowling disc. So uh, we didn't have any leg spin before lunch, but we're going to have some immediately after lunch, which is an interesting uh, development. Not entirely sure why. Sounds like a lunchtime conversation, doesn't, doesn't it? Just, <laughs> yes, absolutely. Mikey Cohen is going through his bowling action down below us to the right. He's fielding a long leg. So Matt Critchley will have just the one slip. Wayne Madsen will have a backward point. There's a man out on the cover boundary as well as an extra cover much closer to the bat, mid off, mid on mid wicket, and a man out on the mid wicket boundary as well. Which is probably about right. Looks like a leg spinner's field to me. I'm not sure whether our uh, effects mic's working as well as it might be. Anyway, here is Matt Critchley from the City End in Bowls, and it's turned by Gates down to Mikey Cohen. A long leg for a single. It's one of those ones where if it starts turning square, probably Derby should be more concerned. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Do you think we've got an issue with the effects microphone? Mm, possibly. Which one is it? Is it that so this one? Yeah. Yes, that, yeah. I'll try and do something when uh, in the next over then. <laughs> Might be a new battery required. <laughs> Good yeah, that great technical trick, I'll put new batteries it, in. Switch it off first and switch it on again. <laughs> Critchley's in again, that one's left alone outside the off stump by Sam Hain. Many a football commentary or sports commentary I've had to say, well, I'll just leave you a second, I've got to do something technical. I'll scramble to get a coin to get them. <laughs> Battery cover out, stick new batteries in. Uh, this next delivery from Critchley again is outside the off stump, goes through to broadcast. I'm sure I've got a battery somewhere. I actually felt for uh, Mike Taylor and Dave Bracegirdle, I don't know what they had a faulty box of batteries or whatever, but apparently that's changed about four times during the course of a day, which okay. shouldn't happen. Uh, I've got one. This one is driven by uh, Hayne up to mid off. There's no room to see if I'd have been back sooner, I'd have re re realised sooner and therefore could have done something about it before we came back on air, which would have been uh, far more preferable. But there we go. Critchley in bowls and Hain pushes it up to mid on where that's Lewis Reese doing the fielding up there. I don't know why it should. It seems bizarre that it's suddenly decided that it doesn't want to work today, but nothing's changed, so it must must be a battery issue. I don't remember changing it down at Worcester anyway. Critchley Bowles pushed out into the off side. Uh, Fielded by Dahl. It's the end of the over. One run from it. One run since lunch. 30 overs now complete. Warwickshire are 83 for two. So, good morning session for Warwickshire. Now they want to build this afternoon. Try and get a, a good total on the board and look to put pressure on Derbyshire. In exaggeration, describe this as a must-win game for Warwickshire. I think it's one they certainly can't afford to lose in the pursuit of a top-two place. So tight. It's hard to call, really, how many of the remaining three games they need to win. But um, well, Sam Connors have all a very... Good, no, yeah, a bit of encouragement you can't hear because the test mic's not working. <laughs> it's a bit of encouragement from the crowd down below. But a really good spell in tandem with Michael Cohen at the start. Claimed the wickets of uh, Will Rhodes and Peter Milan. So he's now back in the attack. Can he make it work? Oh, that's better. There we are. Comes bounding into bowl. Oh, you can hear the... Leather on Willows. It's dispatched through mid-wicket for four by Yates. Almost as if Rob Yates realised that the effects mic was on. No point doing <laughs> anything in that first over. <laughs> no, absolutely. <laughs> Crisply connects with the next one. The move was a 31. 87 for two. Brilliant. Just a small battery. Brightening up as well. Now we can switch the lights off, I think. Sun's out. England have got an eighth wicket now. 317 for eight. That game has changed dramatically. Ollie Robinson is on four for 64. Um, 
Connors, right arm over the bowl, just wraps the thigh pad there of uh, Yates. And the sun comes out as well, so it's all, it's all back to where it was this morning. Yeah, weird, isn't it? A few spots of rain, according to uh, Debbie Griffin, who was out taking photographs this morning. A couple of spots of rain throughout that uh, morning session towards the end of it. I see that uh, Devon Conway's still there, though, isn't he? 179, not out. Astonishing. The one South Africa will feel got away. In comes Connor to bowl. Connor's rather, that's uh, defended out to mid off, and there's no run. Do the older members of the team nickname him Jimmy, or are they all too young for that? I think, they, I think they're probably too young, aren't they? But yeah, mm -hmm. you'd certainly get that in my team. <laughs> I think he's just a Sammy. He's in the ball, trots in, and uh, ball that's uh, solidly played. A beautiful shot that by uh, Yates. That was just he blocked it but uh, timed it perfectly and it ran through long off for four. That's a terrific shot from the young batter who's just signed a new three-year three contract at Warwickshire. They think very highly of him, have done from the word go, and he's on 35, 91 for two. Yeah, that was glorious, wasn't it? Four from the moment it left the bat. Beautiful shot. There's a couple of boundaries this over. And uh, Connors look to respond. Just two slips in place now. Start of the day with four. And he's got a bit of a false shot out of uh, Yates that time. But uh, Yates manages to turn it round to a uh, fine leg for a single. To move on to 35. Nine, to 36. 92 for two. <laughs> I was just watching Matt Chris. He's just looked up in the sky there and looked startled <laughs> to see the sun. A fair amount of cloud around, but much, much brighter than it was just before lunch. <coughs> well, she'll put in this morning. Sam Hay doing his stretching exercises again. The uh, faces Connors for the first time in this afternoon session. And uh, yeah, that's a qu quickish delivery where she tries to work out onto the leg side. Hay and gets a leading edge out to the offside. Uh, decent delivery to end the overall bit, no real bounce in it. 92 for two, Hayne on 34, Yates on 36. Uh, one over from Matt Critchley. It's going to be Anuj Dahl by the look of it. He's just removed his elbow protector, so he was just bowling the ball so that everybody could bowl at the end that they wanted to bowl at by the look it of it. It looks like it, yeah. But why didn't Dahl bowl? Anyway, uh, <laughs> not for me, is it, really? <laughs> not for me. Why, why cricketers do things? Billy Goldman will have his reasons, I'm sure, whatever they may be. So 92 for two as Dahl returns. He bowled a couple of overs just before lunch, but from the race course end. Now he's going to be bowling from the city end with the sun shining. He bowled in gloom earlier on. Matt Critchley one over, naught for one. Go and have a breather. He's feeling where Dahl would be at point because Dahl is bowling and that's a, a Yorker length delivery and he does well to keep it out. Does uh, Yates first up? Nice to get the bat down on it fairly comfortably in the end. Yeah, two hours for six in that spell before lunch. And there's Dahl. He's now in charge. He's coaching a team in the Staffordshire League, I think, when he's not playing for Derbyshire. He's uh, one of the officers on the PCA. He's got his own coaching company. This next one is left alone by Yates and goes through to Brooke Guest. So he's keeping himself busy. He's only 24. Yeah, keeping himself busy. He's a really nice button, really nice. About as much cricket as I A really nice lad. And uh, deserves a proper chance, I think, but no, don't pick the team. The day will come, Dave, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, you think it's only a matter of time? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. I keep 
put my name forward and again now and that's left alone again by Yates to go through to Brooke Guest takes it nicely and immediately pops it off to second slip Wayne Madsen looks like Matt Lambs ready I've just seen him uh, he's, he's just come down the steps in his pads and then retreated back into the changing room away to our left hand side so he's uh, he's all ready to come in next they'll have been ready for a while the next delivery from Dahl is pushed out to Critchley in the Dahl position of point by Rob Yates and there's no run 92 for two then crowd behaved themselves at lunchtime and pretty much stayed where they were. They'll, they'll probably need to stand up at some point just to stretch the legs, I would have thought. It's the world we live in when they're told at lunchtime, stay where you are, Don't please, move. crowd. Don't, Don't move. move. It's such a social game, isn't it? Yeah. This next one is uh, pushed up to mid-off where Billy Godelman does the fielding. Well, it's one of the pleasures, particularly a ground like this, it's not a test match ground, is is I'm not absolutely understand the reasons why you can't do it at the moment but it's one of the great pleasures just to wander around the ground yeah catch mm, up with mates and yeah <clears throat> especially now it must be even more frustrating now because you're catching up with people you've not seen for yeah. 18 months or more Dahl is in and that one's <clears throat> driven very nicely to the left of Ben McDermott by Rob Yates and fielded by Billy Godman, but not before they get through for a single from the final delivery of the over. Yates moves to 37, 93 for two now, Warwickshire. Yeah, it's a, it's a real shame that, that there are so many restrictions. And as you say, we all understand the reasons and we accept those reasons, but it is a shame. But it's nice to see as many people have who've uh, braved those restrictions and turned up to watch the cricket. It's uh, so much nicer. Did my first rugby match with the crowd recently, just 4,000 in Northampton, mm. but boy, it made a huge difference. Um, <clears throat> did one football match all season with the crowd, that was away at Wickham during the brief lifting of restrictions. Yeah, we didn't have one at all. Mm. No, we did at MK Dons. Connors comes into bowl, and that's Edge and caught it second slip, and Connors has his third wicket, and Rob Yates' vigil has ended. He's gone for 37. And it's 93 for three. Sharp chance to Wayne Madsen, who took it in the midriff, but it still took some climbing, didn't it? At second slip. Sam Connors, well, he's done it again. I was going to say early in a, in a spell, but it's only his second spell. Good delivery. Is and uh, Yates is on his way. Is it too early to tip him for all ten here? I think we should go for it. <laughs> I think we should go for it. <laughs> it's not in my nature, as listeners will know, and will be shouting at their uh, listening device, I'm sure. Well, it's a good delivery. Zip on it. Yeah, he's done a good job. He'd be frustrated, though, that having batted for so long and worked himself in that so soon after the interval, he's gone. We were actually at lunch talking about it. would be useful if he gets a century because for him to be the end of match interviewee just after he signed a new contract would have worked quite well. Uh, but. Oh, hum. Well, he could yet be the leading scorer in the innings. He could be, that's true. <coughs> that, would, that would tend to suggest it's a coach's day if it ends up being the case. Absolutely. Well, we've been given the great news that we're speaking to players face to face for the first time uh, this season here. Much, much preferred. Yes. I mentioned Matt Lamb being ready. Well, he's out there now. Such a good job he was ready. Well, it was a partnership of, uh, what, 77 in uh, 26 overs. I'll have to start again. A couple of quick wickets here for Derbyshire. Get some right back in the day. So three slips in for the new batter. Matt Lamb, the right-hander, Connors, into ball. That's uh, left outside off stump. I feel he wasted that delivery slightly there, Connors. No need for Lamb to worry about that at all. 93 for three. Seems to be getting a bit windier out there. Mm. Yeah. Storms are brewing. <laughs> Seems unlikely. Connor 
Davis. Leans forward as he runs in. Balls, and that's a, ended up being a low full toss. But he missed out a bit. Lamb he's just come in and he's played out to the offside for no run. Tempting the Yorker, but didn't quite get it right. It's quite a broad shouldered bowler, as it comes. I mean, literally, not, not, not that he can take insults or anything. I'm not saying that. Literally broad shoulders, he comes in the bowl. And uh, again, a quick delivery. It's uh, pushed back to him by Lamb. He's definitely got a quick delivery in him, Sam Connors. He just seems to have picked it up a little bit more today than perhaps he has done in the last couple of matches and he's brought its rewards. Three for 20 now. Rob Yates faced 99 balls for his 37. Connors into Lamb. And pushes out to the offside. So into the covers safely. He's becoming quite an accomplished interviewee as well, Sam Connors, this season. As he's been... Out on more than one occasion, <laughs> so he started to realise what we want. Yeah, three minutes, Sam. Please, thank you very much. Just, uh, just talking to this microphone here. Eighteen second answers. Yes, preferably. <laughs> I can chop the odd er out. Connor's in the ball, and uh, he's going into the ground straight to point. To Dahl uh, acts swiftly to stop it. So good over from uh, Connor's. He's got the wicket of Rob Yates caught by Madsen was a good sharp catch second slip it was straight at him but it was travelling fast and he clung on to it well Yates gone for 37 93 for 3 yeah lifted him well he lifted himself off the ground to take the catch didn't he so it almost looked like it was knocking him backwards it was struck firmly or it came off the edge firmly enough it wasn't struck firmly at all a decent catch by Wayne Madsen who's among the leading catch takers is that, is that a category yeah i guess yeah, so in the country i noticed the other day so that won't have done okay. his chances any harm have to go and find out i will find out shortly how many he's got now but he's, he's certainly in the top top 10 i would say as dahl is in again that one is clipped into the leg side nicely by sam hain down towards sam connors for a single he's fielding in the sunshine as it moves across the ground 90 Four for three. Hain moves on to 35. I can get it up here. Let's have a look. I'm sure he was in the... Uh... Oh, Sam Hain, second. Yeah, Joint was, second. Well worth looking up. <laughs> yes. uh, yeah, Madsen, um, I don't know whether that last catch has been counted yet, but he was on 12 in fourth place. Yeah, well, he was up there. He's crouching down now as that one is just about got some bat on it as uh, Lamb to push it into the leg side and pick up a single Mikey Cohen. With the fielding, he's off the mark. 95 for three. Um, obviously excluding wicket keepers, Tom Cole Cadmore leads away with 16. Say so Sam Hain joint second with Liam Dawson on 14, then Wayne Madsen 12. Yeah. Those slip fielders always up there, <laughs> as you would expect. Yes. Does help. Yeah. You're going to field somewhere where the ball's going to go. You're going to find yourself near the top of the list as Dahl is in again and off the back foot, Hain pushes it up to mid on. Doesn't reach bit on because Mikey Cohen intercepts. Still got to hang on to them though, haven't you? No, oh, indeed. That. that was a good, sharp take. I shall be back in about five minutes. Time yeah, I know. The two o'clock is the one that's so yeah, easy to miss. Oh, I've remembered, oh. thankfully. <laughs> it's dull. In again, and this one is defended by Hayne. Again, up towards mid on, and again, Mikey Cohen comes in and intercepts the ball before it reaches Alex Hughes. Must have fired up the news jingle back at Radio Derby, so we're not far away now. 95 for three. Hayne on 35. Lamb on one. It's Hayne on strike. Uh, he pushes it out rather convincingly towards mid-off. And there 
is no run. Lewis Reese, just down below us, you can probably tell. Well done, Nudger. New Zealand 327 for eight now. Two slips in place for Dahl, who's in, and Hayne oh, well, plays that one handed into the leg side. Nearly didn't play it at all. Scampers through for a single, moves to 36, 96 for three, end of the over. Lamb. Matt Lamb on one. Dahl has now bowled uh, two overs since lunch, four overs in total. Conceded just 10 runs. Sam Connors. Three for 20 from his eight overs, one for nine since the lunch interval. He's going to continue from the race course and as you would expect. Connors on his way in then past umpire long now and Hain defends this back to him. Update for listeners on BBC Radio Derby coming up fairly shortly. The floodlights remain on here even though the sun has been out since the uh, lunch interval. Connors turns, three slips alongside wicketkeeper Brooke Guest, he's in, balls to Hayne, that one just lifts a little bit on him, he does well to keep it down, McDermott runs around from mid-wicket to square leg to do the fielding, but doesn't pick it up cleanly, and they get through for a comfortable single, 97 for three, Hayne moves on to 37, Matt Lamb on one on strike. Connors turns. He's on his way in now. Lamb waits and pushes it out into the offside where Billy Godelman does the feeling and huh, I've forgotten me in the news now. Hurls to uh, Mid on. I am here. Yes, Steve, 97 for three. Warwickshire Derbyshire won the toss this morning. There's going to be another wicket here. Is it not quite? Lewis Reese couldn't quite grab it with his left hand as it sailed over his head. Two wickets early this morning for Sam Connors. It was 16 for two at that stage. And one since lunch also for Connors. Rob Yates caught by Wayne Madsen at second slip for 37. He added 77 for the fourth wicket with Sam Hayne. He's still there on 37. Matt Lamb's joined him. He's on three. And Warwickshire at 99 for three. Thank you, Peter. So, Connors sets off again. Almost picked up a wicket with his last delivery. This one's banged in short and it's straight to Ben McDermott into the ground, who claims it beautifully at uh, mid wicket, almost effortlessly. The ball appeared to be uh, off the bat at 100 miles an hour. But he barely flinched as he claimed it to his left. It must be four or five another times one, now another that one, yeah. Connors has got the batters to do that. Yeah. What's that say then? Are they misjudging his pace or...? Or it's just sticking a bit and they threw the yeah. shot a bit early, I'm not sure. I, it, yeah. I mean, he's, unless he is taking a bit off every now and then and it's, and it's confusing the bats, but that one looked like it was a, a full pace delivery. Oh, he's slightly annoyed now, Connors. Tossed that ball quite sharply to the yeah. wicketkeeper. He's done well, the young man. Might have, might have been even more spectacular for him.
They forgot me there at lunch. At Did they? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it was beautifully saved by the producer Pete, oh, <laughs> who, uh, who got Steve Jordan to uh, come to me. In fact, I, I thanked him, and he, he, he didn't, obviously didn't hear what I'd said, so uh, just sent him a message because he's asked if everything's all right. Everything's absolutely fine here. We're watching cricket, and it's warm. That'll do for me. I swear to still haven't come back, have I? New over from Alex Dow from the city, and that one beats Sam Hayne, who's on 37. It was a good delivery, just squared him up a little bit. Actually, some of these uh, hands on his head. But, uh, first slip. Good delivery. I feel that Derbyshire can get another one now, particularly yeah. if it's Hayne. Well, it should be really back under pressure again. Two relatively new batsmen, and it's always key, isn't it, that? As New Zealand are proving, if they've got one man who's set and he's in, they can build up a decent score. This one is driven by Hayne up to Billy Goldman at mid off. Yeah, if you can, if you've got one man who's in, it just helps the new batsman when he comes out to settle things down. I'm assuming England and New Zealand rather are still. Uh, Eight down. Yeah, 3.30 for eight. And 99 for three. And there's the three figures for Warwickshire as Hayne plays it nicely into the leg side for a couple of runs. So 100 up for Warwickshire in the 36th over. Hayne moves on to 39. 101 for three. A little slower than their first 50, which came up in 15 overs. I'll give you the exact balls in a minute. Excellent. In two no balls, isn't there? Yes. Here's Dahl again from the city end balls. And then we squares Hayne up again, leading edge along the ground out into the offside where it's fielded by McDermott. No run. So 221 balls for the 100. Um, which means they lost three wickets in that time. And so the second 50 has actually taken longer than the first. Yeah. 130 balls. The first took 91. It was just that one over that accelerated them, didn't it, during that first 50? Yes. Yeah, so ben Aitchison bowled two overs for 20. I think one of his overs went for 14, didn't it? Yeah. Which was slightly damaging. He's come back well since then, though, as Dal bowls outside the off stump. It's allowed to go through by Hayne to the keeper. I do not accept responsibility if those stats are wrong, by the way. Well, I don't know. I, I, <laughs> yeah, I don't think I'll quote them. <laughs> I'm sure they're right. I'm not, not going to quote them because they might be wrong. I'm just. <laughs> Something I like to keep a tally on gives you an idea of how an innings is moving. I never include no balls and stuff like that. This one's edged and dropped. Did it, did it carry I all the way to Wayne Manson? I thought I'm it not bounced sure. just, yeah, short. just short of him, was it? But it was definitely edged to second slip. Manson might have got it as a, on the fingers again, and he, he suffered a knock to the fingers uh, in the game against uh, Worcestershire and ended up fielding down at third man for a while. No damage of that nature it looks like this time but a good end to the over for Anush Dahl, didn't have any luck there, five overs for 12 he's bowled now, three for six since lunch Warwickshire 101 for three, with Hayne on 39 and Lamb on three it's still not easy for Warwickshire out there let's see if I can bring up that last delivery Yes, he had his back to me, which is why initially I thought he dropped it, but it made more sense for it to have dropped just short of him, didn't it, really? The way he reacted, the way everybody else reacted as well. So Connors, a successful bowler so far, bowls, and that's pushed out by Lamb onto the offside for uh, no run. Sun once again emerging. Probably switch the lights off now, guys. It takes them quite a while to come back on. Yeah, well, I know that's the, I know, I know. The new that's ones, are, have you been to Essex yet? Uh, yes. Those lights yeah. are astonishing. Yeah. On, off. <laughs> Apparently they do shapes of fours and sixes <laughs> for T20. It's mad. Really LED. They seemed reluctant to put them on at 11 o'clock, though, in uh, two mornings. I was there when they possibly should have been on. Anyway. 
Connors bowls and that's defended out to mid off for no run. It's one of those places where I hadn't been since 2016, so uh, nice to go back just to remind yourself what a ramshackle old ground it is. <laughs> I just looking at that again. It, it bounced only just short, I think. Um, it's taken almost on the half volley. The, uh, edge. Yeah, they can be uh, finger damages, those, can't they? They can. But, uh, I think it managed to pick it up reasonably cleanly. That one is wide and it's uh, punished by Lamb. I mean, too many bad balls from Connors, but uh, he was a little wide there and Lamb helped himself. It is first boundary, move on to seven, 105 for three. There is, and with any great to suspect to any Essex supporters who might be listening, there is something quite enjoyable about being at a full house at Chelmsford and seeing your side win. Yeah. It does tend to make the locals quite grumpy, so yeah. it's quite, <laughs> it's had, quite we, good yeah, fun. We had no locals and were forced to walk, walk three quarters of the way around the ground rather than going the short way because that was behind the pavilion where we weren't allowed. Oh, yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah, slightly, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ir slightly irritating on day one and day four. When oh, you really? They didn't make us do that. When was that early season or was that... I wonder whether... Mm, no, only about three weeks ago. Okay. Uh, yeah, we were, we were. It was just because we were from the north and we were very happy. <laughs> we did have to go along the little edges and uh, around yeah. the back of the... Uh, we, anyway. should, we shouldn't complain. We were in the ground. No, exactly. And that's what I'm yeah. always conscious uh, of. The, 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 yeah. the reflex to be slightly grumpy about it. You think, no, no, no that's uh, no, no, no. no cause. No minor for... inconvenience, really. Exactly. In the grand scheme of things. Yes, I can't tell you. I'm lucky I feel being able to watch live sport over the past year. Yeah, I'm really conscious of that. Speaking to a football fan, I'm brother-in-law who also happened to be Neil Snowball's brother but that's another matter a big football fan not, not been to a game all season yeah. and, just, and you realise how lucky you've been to you wouldn't have said that in the first half of the season at Burton in fairness <laughs> in comes Connors to bowl pushed him in. Oh, what a great job Jimmy Ford well, second half of the season was yeah, terrific yeah, absolutely yeah, terrific yeah, yeah. yeah it was very enjoyable it was a certain dreadful inevitability about it in the first half of the season as it wore on well watching Coventry City throughout the season was certainly eventful it was a strange one they felt the whole season they were battling against relegation but actually they were only in the bottom three for about half a day or something yeah. um, but uh, anyway it worked out nicely in the end that one is defended to a mid off for no run 105 for three are they back home next season? They are back home, yeah. yeah. Good. Looking forward to that. So yeah. they've got a 10-year a deal with an opt-out after seven. The owners still insist their plan is to build their own stadium. But Can't too in the meantime, <laughs> <laughs> in the meantime, they will be at the Rico Arena. For, Good. So that will be nice. Yes, looking forward to that. And hopefully with crowds, hopefully by then, yeah, we'll be almost back to normal, hopefully. Connors comes into ball to uh, Lamb. Oh, he's another one with top edge, and this time he will be out, and he's gone. Trying to pull that. Connors has struck again. He's got all four now as Reese takes the catch, skied by Lamb. Not the wisest of shots, perhaps, and he's gone for seven, 105 for four. Well, there's something in this. If we're going to speak to Sam Connors, I have a feeling, at the end of the day's play, and we're going to ask him exactly why this is, because that is r ridiculous, the number of times a batsman... Has, has been late on a shot, really, and, well, what a way to get out. The batsman will be absolutely furious with himself, Matt Lamb. 16 deliveries for his seven, and that was exactly the wicket that Clive had been talking about there. If Well, perhaps it, perhaps it might have been better only if it had been Sam Hayne, but get another one, four down, 100 on the board. And they're right in this game again. The, the wickets that they would have liked in the morning session have come early in the afternoon session. And uh, Sam Connors is having a day out here. I'll keep him on a bit longer this time, I think. That was the last ball of the over, incidentally. 105 for four as he wanders off out into the deep to uh, contemplate the fact that this was a successful over rather than the previous over when it was just inches out of the reach of Lewis Rees. I don't think I've witnessed an all-ten. 
all the years. I've been commentating. See the nine. Chris White has got nine in the innings once. Yes, yeah, that's how hard it feels you and get nine. Yeah. Uh, Sussex. It's an astonishing thing to watch as well, isn't it? No matter how well everybody else has bowled, you bowled brilliantly down at Hove, did Bill Jean, but you just, it was almost inevitable. Yeah. The person or the people at the other end were bowling decently enough. But they just could not get the wicket. And then uh, Harry <coughs> Podmore nipped in with about the eighth, seventh or eighth. He was on loan from, I think, from Middlesex at the time. Playing down at Kent now, Harry. So 105 for four. Burgess, the new batsman. Oh, and Hayne is beaten by Anuj Dahl this time. Squared up completely. So, I mean, look, look at the shape he's in at the end of his shot play. I mean, his back leg was round the front. He was facing Anuj Dahl. The ball went past the edge, through to the keeper. I mean, it was just a, a mess. Well, yeah. uh, Michael Burgess. Just watches it at the moment, just fiddles around with his back grip and he's in his stance at the non-striker's end as Dahl is in to Hayne, who leaves this one alone as he goes through to the keeper. I would have called a story of a county, I won't say which county because I don't want to identify the player, but there was a first team player who, who rocked up at a second 11 game and he was a nice enough guy but a bit full of himself, this, this player. <laughs> And he got sort of the first eight wickets or something. I have to say, apparently the second eleven virtually chaired the uh, the bowler who got the ninth wicket off the field. So they would never hear the end of it if he gets all ten. Connors <laughs> is thinking about it. Well, Dahl bowls and again, he's trying to play that into the leg side, Hayne, and it hits something and goes out into the offside, where it's fairly by Matt Critchley. Just beats Ben McDermott to the ball. McDermott and Critchley have a little bit of by play. Settled nicely, Ben McDermott was desperate to come over here. He was contracted last season. And as soon as he found out he couldn't come last season, yep, no, 2021, I'll be there. And true to his word, he's also playing a bit of red ball cricket as well as Dahl bowls to Hainu again, gets one off the edge of the bat, plays it nicely with soft hands, though. It comes down to third man where Reese does the fielding. They pick up a single, Hayne moves to. 40, 106 for five. And uh, it not only may Sam Connors get all 10, but at this rate, Clive Eakin. Yeah, I know. I'm, so I might, was thinking So that. might you. I was, thinking, I was feeling a bit guilty about that. A moment ago, thinking maybe I should let you take over the Connors end. <laughs> no, not at all. Not um, at all. Nothing would give me greater joy from, than for you to describe all 10. <laughs> I'm sure I'll, I'll, I'll have to give you the 10th wicket if we get down to nine. <laughs> Four so far, 106 for four. And the first delivery to Burgess is pushed up to mid-off, where it's filled by Billy Cuddleman. It's funny how these little quirky things work out, though, isn't it? Yeah. You can have spells where you commentate on wickets and then days when you seem ne never to. But, uh, I think they did a match at Canterbury a couple of years ago. Where I'm not sure I'm a kind of single. And there were only about seven wickets in the match, in fairness. We sat and watched Dom Sibley grind out thousands and thousands of balls. Just waits and wafts at that one outside the ostomy. Actually, went past the inside edge of the bat. He was so far out into the offside, and through to the keeper. And uh, Dahl, who's bowled quite nicely, six run, six overs for thirteen runs, still wicketless at the moment, but he's bowled nicely as Anoj Dahl. Just the one run off that over, 106 for four now. It's one of those sort of 600 for three plays, 500 for four yeah. games, and I'm not sure I've got a single wicket. Ben Watt got them all and didn't. Didn't understand my everything but the girl reference. To him. Again, age, you say. Um, they were big when I was at university. That's, yeah, that's how long that's, ago yes, that is. Yeah, I'm <laughs> afraid <laughs> me too. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, 106 for four. So crucial from Sam Hain's point of view that you need this, this, this would be a good time for Sam. Not that there's ever a bad time, but this would be a good time for Sam to. To actually convert this into a century for the first time this season. He pushes that to mid-off for no run. Connor's coming in with four to his name already. And arguably unlucky not to have more than that. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Four for 27. He's now got... He's joined Ben Aitchison and Finn Hudson Prentice, who obviously isn't playing in this match on as the leading... The joint leading wicket-taker for Derbyshire this season was 16. He 
He's got 16 at 27, Aitchison 16 at 17.9, and Hudson Prentice 16 at 28. In comes uh, Connors to bowl. Oh, that's gone past the outside edge. He leans forward. Goes to the wicketkeeper. Jimmy Anson's got his second wicket at the Test match, New Zealand. 344 for nine with Devin Conway, 186. No oh. doubt. Is he the first player to score a test match century at Lords with the name of an English county as his first name? Lovely. I don't think Devon Malcolm ever managed it. No, no, that would have been, uh, I think I'd have remembered that. <laughs> Devon got one. Could carry his bat on debut though, couldn't he? He could, yeah. So the next one is short and he just uh, plays off the, um, on his tiptoes a little bit, Sam Main plays it well through the offside. That's gone all the way for four. Good shot from uh, Hain, who moves on to 44, takes the score to 110 for four. Connors will realise soon, I'm sure, that, that there's no real profit in the short deliveries. That most of the short deliveries that he's bowled have been put away. He'll know that clearly. But, uh, who am I to tell somebody with the four wickets in a first class match when uh, that's four more than in my entire first class career, of course? <laughs> <clears throat> Surprisingly. Not sure if I ever got four wickets in a match playing village cricket, if I'm honest. And he comes in, Connors looking for his Pfeiffer already. It's a ball, and that's a Yorker length delivery this time, and uh, Haynes as well to dig it out. What's he trying to vary it? I suppose he can afford to gamble a bit, Connors, maybe. Buy another wicket. 110 for four. Look at this stage, he can pretty much do what he wants. Yeah. Four wickets to fall to his name. Well, it's the first time I've seen him, and uh, I've enjoyed watching him, I must say. Only with real zip, he comes in now, and um, again, he plays that on his toes. Pushes out to the offside. That counter is the way Hain says no for a run. You see this quite a lot. He holds the bat out in front of him horizontally. Mm. To his uh, batting colleagues say no. Well, there was never a run there. Burgess at the other end. Been in reasonable form. Decent form this season. Got a century. Got 80. Crucial 80 in the terrific win against Nottinghamshire. Tends to play positively. So he does give the bowlers a chance. Almost from the word go. And that's Connor's balls, and that's uh, left again. Pounces a bit, and wicketkeeper takes it quite high, but it was wide. Haynes stays in pose for some reason, and uh, it's 110 for four, Warwickshire. Yeah, Connor's uh, best figures in first class wicket: five for 83 earlier this season at Durham. We'll take. You no, know, he needs one more. Doesn't say take him off. No, he needs one more first. Doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah, then take him off, so it doesn't. Yeah, again, he's got plenty of runs to play with at the moment. Lewis mm -hmm. Reese has just gone off temporarily. To the pavilion away to the left hand side, so uh, means another outing for Connor Marshall, who's going to feel down below us. I think it's Connor Marshall, it might not be because I don't really know what Connor Marshall looks like. I was just told it was him. Here's Anuj Dahl then from the city end in and bowls to uh, Burgess, who pushes this one out into the offside, fielded by Ben McDermott, who was a little disappointed with his. Uh, Scores at uh, Worcestershire last week on his uh, Red Bull debut for Derbyshire. He scored 25 in the first innings. He's only picked up one in the second, but did hit the first ball he faced for four. So that was a, a little show of intent. They were very much on the back foot by the time he got in. In each innings, Dahl is in again. And again, Burgess pushes it out to McDermott. Well, he looks quite a substantial human being from this distance, but it was only when I spoke to him face to face at the close of play on the on the last day at lunchtime on the Sunday, he stood in front of me and he's uh, he's not massively tall, but boy oh boy is he wide. He's got he's got some serious muscles, which is exactly the reason why he managed to get the ball out of the ground at Canberra in the big bash and down the road. Dahl's in. That was off uh, a guided edge by Burgess down to uh, third man where Marshall the substitute fielder 12th man at third man 
It's as cricket's confusing. <laughs> well, it's more confusing when he's on the field without yeah. a number or a name on his back and nobody announces who he is, but I'm, I'm going to stick with Marshall for now. 111 for four. As Hain waits and leaves this one from Anish Dahl alone outside the Austin. Quite an elaborate leave. I do like an elaborate leave. Yes, he does do some of those. Um, he has his mannerisms and characteristics. When he first burst onto the scene, when he and Jonathan Trott were batting together, it was a, that was a <laughs> that was a treat to watch. Yes. One stage, Jonathan Trott actually complained that Hain was holding things up. <laughs> Carl in, and leaves alone. Pushed his bat forward to leave it, then pulled it back, and then pushed it forward again after the ball has landed in the wicketkeeper's gloves. So uh, he's going through it all here. Ben Aitchison's going to come on soon. I think somebody's uh, he's just signaled for somebody to take his cap. That breeze has picked up, hasn't it? I think so, it's yeah. It's billowing yet, the breeze. And yet the... Oh, there we go, the flag's just got... Mm. got, a, got caught it there on the pavilion as <clears throat> another solid defensive shot from Hayne to complete an over which saw the concession of just one run seven overs for 14 for Anuj Dahl, Hayne on 44 mm. Burgess has one in Warwickshire uh, 111 for four well, maybe some relief for Warwickshire that Connors uh, is coming off always a danger of course when you're struggling as one bowler and then you See a change, you can let your guard down a little bit. I think oh, this will get a bit easier now. Richardson's going to bowl from the uh, the end, at which he had the yes. trouble in this morning, isn't he? So. And it was Sam Hayne, of course, who scored the runs off him yeah. that over. So, uh, a little bit of a gamble here. Connor's four for 31 now in 11. Uh, he comes off, and Hitchison, Ben Hitchison to bowl to. Michael Burgess initially. I say Burgess tends to be quite an attacking batter, as the word go. It's worked hard on his batting. You know, he's got big shoes to fill and replacing Tim Ambrose after his wonderful years for Warwickshire. And he leaves that one outside off stump for no run. Mike quickly windmilling his arm around and going through his bowling action and just bowled a one over after lunch. Now the sun's out and there's a, a new batsman out there that you might fancy uh, bringing him on. Hitchison. A tall bowler tosses the ball from one hand to the other. Runs in. And Burgess again is happy to leave that. Didn't get up much, but it's wide of off stump. Hundred and eleven for four. I'm gonna give up guessing who's gonna bowl next because Lewis Reese is warming <laughs> up now. <laughs> <laughs> Thought I was trying, mm. trying to be clever before. Never works. This next one from Aitchison is he just opens the face of the bat and runs it down to third man, does uh, Burgess for an easy single. We're in a short sleeve sweater, so maybe not Quite so warm out there. Now, 112 for four. Last county championship cricket before we change formats. It's always fun when you come back to the county championship. You invariably get sort of 80 for eight after 15 overs, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> A spell of T20. Aitchison pulls and he just leans into that hay and pushes out to the offside for no run, 112 for four. Some of these players, of course, won't be involved, but both Hayne and Burgess will play, I'm sure, in the uh, T20. There will be some players who are heading for a little bit of a break now in terms of first team cricket. Mm. Yeah, it's weird, isn't it, the way they've. Uh 
two games after this for Warwickshire as well, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Indeed. This, uh, and he leans back. Uh, Hayden cuts that to uh, out to the deep as a sweeper at point, so he gets a single. Yes, but before, of course, that last four matches in the second phase of the. Well, this is the last uh, championship, championship match here until September because yeah. they play Essex at Chesterfield. Oh, Chesterfield would be nice. And then uh, Knotts at Trent Bridge. In, in and amongst the T20, they were supposed to play India A in a four-day game, uh, but that, that tour game was oh, the tour was cancelled, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, it's... Hitchison, see with that acceleration in his run-up, that one again kept low, nipped back a little bit, but didn't trouble uh, Burgess to let it go. So, a couple of singles out over. Hayne to 45, Burgess to two, Warwickshire to 113 for four after 40 overs. A tweet from Gary Charles with Athletic Sport, if you want to get in touch. Uh, our young bowlers have not been the problem. Uh, they've more than competed in matches. That it's our batsmen who need to give them something to bowl at. Well, there's a little bit in that as well. Uh, they've deployed badly out of form, sadly. Uh, Lewis Reese averaging 16. Both he and Billy Goldman have missed <coughs> matches because of injury. Wayne Madsen's batted nicely at the top of the order. And, of course, the man who's coming on to bowl here, Matt Critchley, along with Harvey Hussain, who's not ready to return from his concussion, have been the pick of the batsman. But uh, they have been scoring poorly, in fairness. So Keith Barker's now taken six wickets, the former Warwickshire bowler. Six out of seven, some set 113 for seven against Hampshire. I'm just looking at Devon Conway on 189, and Neil Wagner at the other end. 20 off 12. He's hardly <laughs> playing uh, uh, circum <laughs> circumspectly so he can, his colleague could get to 200. No. But there we go. Perhaps his attack is the best form of defence. Two fours and a six for Wagner. <laughs> so here is Critchley then. From the city end, bowling to Sam Hayne, who turns this into the leg side for a single. Fielded there by uh, <clears throat> the substitute fielder Marshall. Just getting a fairly lengthy spell out there because uh, Lewis Reese is back. He's at mid off. No, he's not. He's at mid on. Why would he be at mid off? Billy Goldman's at mid off. I think it's uh, Alex Hughes again who may have uh, just gone off momentarily. Critchley tosses himself a catch. Michael Burgess on two weights. He gets a full toss that he just thumps back past the bowler. It's half stopped by uh, Lewis Reese and the fielding completed by Billy Goldman. They go through for a single. Well, the greatest piece of cricket we've seen today was no. it? It was a high full toss, no. not really punished by the batter, and then rather untidily fielded. Apart from that, <laughs> you can see why they're uh, full time professionals. In comes Critchley and Bowles. This one does pitch. It's a little short, though. Punched off the back foot out into the uh, covers where it's fielded by Ben McDermott. I've got an update coming up here. Uh -huh. It's exciting. You can't hear it, of course. Mm. No. Are you getting music at the moment? I'm or? getting music yeah. at the moment, yeah. What's the track, man? Uh, that's it. Um, it's the Bangles. Oh. Yeah, this one is played into the ground by uh, Burgess. Feel it and slip. Came up in 3 and 10 on Popmass the other day. Got one. Do what, do what she wants, is that what it's called? Yeah, that's one that was... Uh, yeah, that's what this one's oh. called. Oh, oh yeah. Is, yeah. That's the... Uh, it's found its way into the BBC local radio playlist as this one is uh, defended by Burgess. Back to Critchley. Not one of their more famous ones. It's no. It's from the album that Manic Monday came from. Tosses himself a catch. There's Critchley. <laughs> it's in and bowls. That one is driven by Burgess beyond the diving Anoj Dahl and goes through to Billy Godman. As they get through for a single, Burgess moves on. Does he move on to four or is he on to five? What's the scoreboard doing? He's moved on to four, 117 for four. Hayne has 47, 42 overs gone as we approach the halfway mark in the day. Very excitingly. Do you need to carry on then? If you don't mind. No, I don't. This is Ben Aitchison over from the race course eh? pleasant breeze blows up the back of my t-shirt <laughs> rather rather alarmingly <laughs> as he 
get along the t-shirts. Just can't find them. Just can't find them anywhere. 117 for four as Aitchison to Burgess. Two slips in place. Burgess props his front foot forward and defends it up to Lewis Reese at mid on. And there's no run. All the uh, all the portable toilets that were brought in for the previous game against Durham are getting a good uh, good bashing today. I think it's always good. <laughs> you can tell I'm filling now. Aitchison runs away from us to Burgess, who leaves alone outside the Austin. Tumbling claim by Brook Guest, the wicketkeeper, moving to his right in front of. Uh, Ben McDermott has found himself a first slip, of course, because Ben Aitchison is currently bowling. Connor Marshall making the most of his time as a substitute, having a good chat there with uh, Billy Taylor, the umpire at Square Lake. Burgess waits. Aitchison loses his run-up quite early on there. Perhaps there was an extra gust of wind. Just blew him up off his stride or out of his stride. He's okay this time though. He's in now and bowls and Burgess drives but straight to Billy Godelman at mid off. And there's no run. I think they could have played another tune by now actually. But he's just been talking. Steve Jordan likes to chat. 117 for four. 47 to Sam Hayne. Four to Michael Burgess. He's on strike. Lights on, sun's out. All very bizarre. Aitchison's in. Oh, and gets a thick inside edge there. Pushes it up to mid on. Goes through for a single. He moves on to five. 118 for four. In, in, indeed, Steve Jordan, yes. Uh, 118 for four now. Two wickets since lunch and both to Sam Connors. He's now picked up all four wickets to fall, having got rid of Will Rhodes uh, and Peter Milan this morning. Rob Yates and Matt Lamb were his victims since the lunch break. Uh, Rob Yates caught at second slip by Wayne Madsen for 37. Lamb by Lewis Reese at mid on to another ball that just looped into the air. Billy Goldman took a catch this morning to dismiss Will Rhodes in exactly the same kind of way at mid-off. And we've seen several other uh, batsmen loop the ball into the air just short or just beyond fielders. So uh, Sam Connors has got four wickets, could have had six and perhaps even seven. He'll be happy with four at the moment. He's not bowling as we speak. Sam Haynes out there on 48. Michael Burgess has five and Warwickshire 119 for four. The next delivery from uh, Aitchison is pushed out into the offside, and there's a single taken. 120 for four. It was hardly worth waiting for in the end, really, was it? <laughs> there was. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, that was the end of the over. 120 for four. 43 overs gone. Burgess has six now, and Hayne is on 48. Have his half century very much on his mind, and then perhaps. Will he, will he accelerate then, do you think? No, yeah, probably no, not. No, probably no. carry on at much the same rate. Fair enough. Particularly when he's got he's got an aggressive bat at the other end. True, so. yes. Yeah. Um, shall I take this one then? Yeah, so why not? Critchley why comes not? in the bowl. Wickers will start falling from this end. Yeah, no, um. yes. <laughs> I'll have words if he takes one in this over. <laughs> Critchley into uh, Burgess. Elegant looking drive and very well stopped by Dahl. That was a terrific piece of fielding. There is a sweeper out there, so it probably would have been two if it's gone past him. But uh, having sort of mocked the cricket earlier, that was good cricket all round. Nice looking shot and a very good stop. And this next one is uh, pushed to the same field, a more straightforward stop that time. That's exactly why Anish Dahl has to play T20 cricket. Saves an enormous number of runs over the course of a T20 campaign. 
Um, use that one a bit of air, Critchley. This time, Dahl can't quite reach it. He might have just got something on it which slowed it down, but it's a single to Burgess. Probably always was going to be, but the sweeper coming in from the boundary. Burgess on to 721 for four. You'd be disappointed that you didn't manage to hold that one in. I think it was to his other side, wasn't it, this time? So that brings Sam Hain onto the strike, Critchley. Was a quicker ball, Hain just prods it out onto the onside for no run. 200 for Devon Conway, double century on debut at Lords for New Zealand. 22 fours and a six, 347 balls. Uh, that was a four defensive. 377 for nine now New Zealand Neil Wagner 24 from 17 so he didn't really slow down that much uh, and that one's whipped away by Hain and it's uh, stopped at Wildish mid off so he's just able to get a single he's on to 49 122 for four so when he gets out for a duck in the second innings he'll have an average a test average of 100, 100. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good time to retire, isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, overs completed, 122 for four. Hain on to 49, Burgess on to seven. Goodness knows what that must feel like. Yeah. A, playing for your country, B, playing at Lords, getting a double century. Unbelievable. And they're effectively using these two tests as, uh, as warm-ups for the World Test Championship, aren't they, down at mm. Southampton when yeah. they take on India? So Ben Aitchison from the race course end, bowling to Sam Hayne, who flicks this one away down towards fine leg. There's a chase on here for, uh, I think it's Mikey Cohen. Yes, it is. He picks up left-handed and throws it back in. Fine piece of fielding, actually. Keeps him down to a couple when it looked for all money as though it was going to be four. And he gets generous applause from a decent crowd inside the Incora County ground for that piece of fielding. 122 for four. 124 for four, I beg your pardon. Hain. A half century for him from 111 deliveries. Yeah, so it's the sixth time he's uh, reached 50 this season. It's the 36th time in his career he's converted... 10 of the previous 35 to centuries, but none this season. Sixth time he's got to 50 this season. 72, I think, is his highest score this campaign. Consistent. Just yep. left alone outside the off stump by hand. Lights are being switched off. There we go. Either that or the power's gone. There was a time at Edgbaston, but one of the bolts wouldn't go out. Really? They're quite high floodlights. I don't know who had to... Oh. Oh, yeah, they were just permanently on. They couldn't, they couldn't switch it off. So try to switch it on and back off again. Still wouldn't go out. IT, no use whatsoever. <laughs> As Aitchison is in, bowls to Hayne, who drives. <laughs> it's uh, not stopped by Billy Godelman. It's going to go all the way for four. He threw himself with that one. Godelman outstretched right hand, and he got something on it, but it was struck firmly enough by Hayne to go all the way to the boundary for four. Well, if it just bobbled over his hand, in it, a little bit? Yeah. Uh, something that's... Uh, He's got a little touch on it, but not enough. He was trying to deflect it towards uh, Lewis Reese, who was coming around from mid on, but couldn't get there. 128 for four. Hain to 55 now. That was his eighth boundary. I'm sure that Ben Edgerson is feeling a little sorry for himself at the moment. Last time he bowled here at the county ground, he even tried an over of spin, which was dreadful, <laughs> when he was on a four-foot with the light fading to try and pick up his first five. I came back and picked up two more wickets when the light improved. He's in now, and that one is left alone outside the Ostom. I thought he chucked at least two of them. <laughs> and his arm was very, very round. It was almost like a side-arm pitcher in baseball. Uh, and I asked him after the end, I said... You're not in the running to be the next spinner. I said, oh, I used to, I used to uh, be an occasional spinner. Blimey. It's terrible. It's <laughs> as negative as I'm going to get. 128 for four. <laughs> Zane waits, just flexes his knees and then uh, defends it up to Lewis Reese at mid on. 
I noticed Warwickshire on their Twitter feed posting pictures. Yes, then people were saying Joe Root was the only spin in the England team. They said, ah, oh, they've forgotten Sibley. Showing a picture of Don Sibley buying his spin. But I think everyone else is still right. Is that relatively <laughs> occasional as well? Uh, fair, yeah, he had a little spell we did. You'd see him every now and then. But Rob Yates is now the um, the go-to occasional spin. I don't think he's got a first-class wicket yet, but they still turn to him a bit. Just an in again, and that one's turned into the leg side by Hay. And there's going to be one here. Is there going to be two? No, there isn't, because uh, it was good hustle by uh, Sam Connors to get to the ball and threatened to throw it in. He did throw it in, but nowhere near the stumps. But it was enough to put the batsman off from coming back for a second. What it does mean is that Sam Hay has kept the strike. He's moved on to 56 one twenty nine for four with Burgess on seven. Let us have a chat out in the middle. Live ball by ball commentary with BBC Radio Derby, BBC WM, BBC CWR. Online on the BBC Sports app. And don't forget, you can scroll down and see what's going on on all the other matches. And North Ants is telling me I've just brought up the 200, 205 for one against Kent. Wow. Ah, so we are dispensing with Critchley. Mikey Cohen. Oh, yeah. Mikey Cohen, who didn't get the wickets in the opening spell, but did uh, bowl well, got quite a few edges, um, and certainly contributed to that being a, a tough opening attack for Warwickshire to face. Uh, five overs, none for nine in that spell, and he's now back on. He's uh, coming in. That's, have you seven bowlers this morning, Derbyshire? And that, he leans back there. Hayne pushes it through the offside, just beats the fielder as a chase on for Dahl, who will pull it in, but it'll be two runs to Hayne. Normally, you see a boring side of you seven bowlers. You think, oh, they must be really struggling there, but uh, it's not been the case. But, uh, Critchley there, bowled two overs in that spell. He's now numb for seven off his three. Yeah, he brought Hughes on when uh, it was going quite dark and perhaps couldn't bring the pace men back on just before lunch when he might have wanted to, I suppose, Billy Godwin. Two slips in place. Not quite as attacking as when he first bowled. Pulling left arm over. That's left. Nips back a bit, but uh, Hayne is confident to leave it. And, uh, he walks down the pitch and... A bit of prodding. 31 for four. I wonder if cricketers garden like that. Go around their lawn just <laughs> patting things down. <laughs> Take a little dibber out with them or something. <laughs> Whatever that, no, it's not a dibber. That big thing that they crash into the, uh, yes, into the footmarks when they're trying to uh, <laughs> It's always fairly them. terrifying, yeah, isn't it? Isn't that? Get your toes in the way of that. 314, uh, 378 all out. New Zealand. Ah. Well, England would have taken that at the start of the day, but New Zealand might have taken that at the start of the inning, so take your pick, I suppose. Cohen comes in to bowl. That's uh, left. 31 for four. And a little sadly, mm -hmm. Devon Conway was the last man out, so he does have a test uh, match average a... of exactly 200. He was run out. Oh, no. So didn't carry his bat. <laughs> didn't carry his bat because he was run out. Oh, Throw by dear. Pope to root. Two fours and a six. In his innings in the end, Neil Wagner, the not out batsman, 25 from 21 balls. Hoping for around 17, 18,000 at Edgbaston for the uh, yeah, that test one, match. That would be a great uh, occasion. You'd be on the road with the T20 by then, won't you? Yeah. This next one from Cohen is left again by Hayne. Happy to leave them at the moment, Sam Hayne. Again, that one nips back a bit, but it doesn't trouble him. He's on 58. He will be thinking now, this time I've got to try and convert it. It's very impressive to have scored six 50-plus scores in the season, but a player of his calibre and relative experience now, has been around for a few years, knows he needs to try and convert some of these into really big scores. 
Cohen will try and prevent him from doing that. Bowls and he leans back. Hey, that's a really nice shot. Time through the offside. Chase R. I think the ball's just going to win. The ball gets gold. Dahl gets silver. And uh, who's that that gets bronze? McDermott, McDermott a McDermott. long way back in third place. <laughs> <laughs> Four runs to Hain. He moves on to 62. Good shot, that. 135 for four. Dare I said he's playing with increasing confidence, Sam Hain. If he's out next ball, there'll be nothing to do with the fact that I just no. said that, by the uh, way. No, we will point the finger. <laughs> well, I will, because you're born at your commentator from the opposite <laughs> end <laughs> going into ball uh, he won't be out of that ball it's into the ground to the offside for no run so. Hain on 62 holding things together for Warwickshire the other uh, batters and you want to make any sort of contribution really Rob Yates for 37 Will Rhodes out for 8 Peter Milan for nothing and Matt Lamb for 7 all four falling to Sam Connors. Yes. John Brown just confirming the, the numbers for Sam Haynes half century. <coughs> get another ripple of applause for that. Quite right, too. Put it nicely. <coughs> she had a fourth wicket stand of 77 with Rob Yates. Before Yates was the first man out. After the lunch interval, followed relatively soon after by Matt Lamb. Michael Burgess on strike now. As Aitchison begins a new over from the race course, and he leaves that one alone to go through to Brook Guest. Matt Critchley's now found himself down at third man. Seems a bit of a waste. Ice cream van, oh, yeah. everybody, ice cream van. <laughs> I can't see it from no. here, so it's obviously at the far end of the ground. There's one young girl got very excited over there in front of the corporate boxes. I think she was uh, going to nip around the corner to see if she could find it. <laughs> Not sure what the, what the situation with food is here. So Aitchison is in again, and Burgess just goes back into his crease and pushes it back to the, the bowler. The, there is some catering open, isn't there? Yeah, I, yeah, so, I believe um, so. You're Did allowed to use the toilets and the catering areas in your block, but woe be tied if you uh, head for anything yeah, else. I think it's masks on when you're moving around. Yeah. But at least they're in. It's yeah. a decent number as well, decent turnout. Yeah, no, I'm impressed. It was a shame that Durham game, it was just wash out really ages and bowls he's turning to the leg side it's going to be a shy at the stumps here from Sam Connors who misses and Hain would have been in all sorts of trouble there at that one hit because there was an awful lot of hesitancy between the two batsmen it didn't go very far and it almost went straight to Sam Connors in the uh, mid wicket region had a shy at the stumps had one to aim at failed to hit it as a result, Burgess moves on to 8, 136 for 4. Well, they suffered their first run out of the season near the end of the second innings against Knotts, but uh, Haynes been involved in a few. Hain and Bell used to be quite uh, quite an adventure when it came to potential run outs. Haynes on strike now, having survived that shy at the stumps and leaves alone outside the off stump. I don't know if there was only one stump to aim at. I think if it had hit, as you say, I think Hain would have gone. We didn't look like he was desperately trying to get into his ground, which either means he was well in, which he didn't look like he was, or he was well out. Well up, yeah. Yeah, so uh, he survives, though. 62, not out. From 123 deliveries with 9 4 so far. You can hear his bat tapping on the ground as Aitchison approaches, and he. Guides this out into the offside. There is a single there. And Alex Hughes picks up and shies at these dumps at the end to which Hayne was going, but uh, he was well in. Was to show winning the race to be the first team bowled out today. They're eight down against uh, Durham, 113 for eight. Lancashire and Somerset not too far behind. Lancashire 126 for seven against Glamorgan. Somerset 153 for seven against Hampshire. A few wickets around. Yeah. Only really Canterbury where the wickets aren't coming at all. 
hardly. It's supposed to be really hot down there today, isn't it? I want to be in the field as Aitchison bowls to Burgess, who defends it out into the offside, and Hughes does the feeling. There's two runs off that over then from Ben Aitchison. Nine overs for 44 now, his figures. He has bowled a maiden in and amongst as well. Hayne has 63, Burgess has 8, 137 for 4. Warwickshire, 47 overs gone. Almost halfway through the day's play. And glorious sunshine here again at uh, Derby. They turned the pitch around here, didn't they, some years ago? Yes. They, um, because yes. the sun was... Well, especially for evening T20 yes. matches, they had to go off a good light. Because <laughs> it was shining in their eyes. <laughs> and um, Cohen comes in to bowl, and that one uh, tucks up Sam Hayne, comes in to admit him on the thigh pad. I recall one televised game, they were trying all sorts of tricks to try and stop the sun, putting up. Screen. Well, they had a they had a, a cherry picker with a, yes, a big piece right, of board or right. metal sheet hanging from <laughs> it. Didn't to they? follow the sun. Well, interestingly, it was this way around originally when they moved to this part of the, of okay. the, the complex, and then because most of the uh, members sat in the old grandstand, they turned it round so that they'd be behind the bowler's arm. But of course, that was a huge mistake as it turned out. Because they had to turn it back again. <coughs> Cohen. Bowls. Oh, that one almost gets through Hayne inside edge, which just misses his leg stump as it rolls away. And uh, Cohen asks one or two questions of Sam Hayne this over. 137 for four. I think, I think Mikey Cohen's bowled nice. And yeah. He's in his seventh over. He's only conceded 15 runs, uh, and he has troubled the batsman on more than one occasion. And uh, with a little bit more luck, he might have joined Sam Connors in taking a wicket. But he'll keep going, will Mikey? Well, you'd hope he would. <laughs> Plays that one. That's a really good shot. Into the ground and through the offside for four. Time that superbly. The previous delivery showed that it's still not playing sailing for the batters, but Hayne is looking in good nick, so when he is connecting with one, it's yielding him runs, and that was a lovely shot to move on to 67, 141 for four. There was a sort of half dive, wasn't there, from that was Ben McDermott in the, uh, the cover. Well, just passed him in a flash. Didn't stand a chance. Well, Lewis Reese polishes the ball as a chat with the bowler. Intelligence as he passed on. I wonder, let's see, as uh, Cohen bowls. And again, that tucks up Hayne. He's going to get uh, a run onto the board. Did he get bat onto thigh pad? Uh, no, he didn't. It's going to be a leg by. Taking extras to 15, of which four have come from no balls. And without looking, I'm going to guess all the rest have come from leg bys. I can't think of anything else that's... Uh, no, no, there is no... Extras. They haven't been any wides, have they? No buys. It's not much luck, Mikey Cohen, nope. so far. His time will come. Well, he's hoping his time will come, certainly. He's had the satisfaction of making a well-established batter look quite uncomfortable at times. It's over, albeit he's hit one very good shot from it. So it brings um, Burgess onto strike, still a relatively new batter. He's getting a shortish mid-wicket as well as the two slips. And that one again darts into the batter and inside edge onto thigh. And rolls away. Mm. Sam Hain has a chat with Michael Burgess. They've just sent... Matt Critchley out to the mid-wicket boundary. No, they haven't. He's coming back in again. Oh, no, he's going to stay out there. I thought he'd just gone to speak to the 12th man. He's staying out there. Square leg, really, rather than mid-wicket. Next one from uh, Cohen is left by Burgess. That was very nearly my first miss of the day, but I've just spotted the time, oh, so I shall leave you. You'd have been fine. 
been fine, Clive. Yeah, coming up to three o'clock, although my clock isn't accurate, so you might not have been. It's, it's, it's a minute slow, rather disappointingly. I've no idea why. So 142 for four after 48 overs. Reporting that Portugal is going to be removed from the green list. For uh, travel abroad. Four for thirty one at the moment. Sam Connors is not bowling though. Aitchison in and bowls it's turned to the leg side by Sam Hain for a single. So far, this Nigel Long has a chat with Ben Aitchison as he moves past him on his way back to his uh, mark. Heidi Booth on news reading duty this afternoon on BBC Radio Derby as Ben Aitchison sets off again. He's in and bowls, and that one is uh, one of dies rather as it's taken tumbling to his right by Brooke Guest. The Derbyshire wicketkeeper. He's still keeping wicket in place of Harvey Hussain. Lewis Reese, Mikey Cohen back in the side for this match. Lewis deployed Dustin Melton and Finn Hudson Prentice dropping out from the game against uh, Worcestershire at uh, New Road. I thought the seconds were playing today, it's tomorrow. As Aitchison is in and Burgess gets a full delivery and crashes it to the boundary for four runs. The cover boundary, beautiful shot, over pitched. And he moves into double figures. Burgess is on 12, 147 for four. It was a disappointing outcome for uh, Ben Aitchison. I can hear that wind in the effects microphone. coming up. Yes, Heidi, uh, 147 for four. Uh, Warwickshire now having been asked about this morning by Derbyshire, who won the toss. All four wickets to fall have gone to Sam Connors. He's on four for 31, but not bowling at the moment. Potentially on for all 10, who knows. At the moment, though, it's uh, Sam Hayne and Michael Burgess who are just steering Warwickshire into calmer waters. Uh, they're 147 for four. Got the mention of all ten in while we can. There's Aitchison in again. And uh, Burgess cracks this one away for four as well. This time it was short and wide. Not a good delivery by Ben Aitchison, I'm afraid. And all the way to the boundary for four more. Uh, <laughs> Pat Critchley, who's off the field at the moment, goes across the uh, sheets that cover the square to retrieve the ball. Four more to Burgess, who moves to 16, and the 150 is up for Warwickshire, 151. 150 coming up in the 49th over. Burgess getting a taste for it here. Boundaries in two of the last three deliveries. This one strikes him on the pad and dribbles down towards backward square leg for a leg by. Picked up by Sam Connors. He pinches the strike. He wants something from the dressing room. He wants to, somebody to remove his sleeveless sweater. Well, he'll remove it and somebody else can take it off the field. Burgess moves on to 17 with that single. Hain has 68. No, he doesn't because it was a leg by. He's on 16. Hain has 68. Warwickshire are 152 for four. He's warming up. Michael Burgess has just asked somebody mm, to come and retrieve his uh, sleeveless <laughs> sweater for him. Playing the way he does, playing attacking shots. Just noticing the next one was one of those old fashioned window poles, just reminded me of my school days. I mean, you're happy to have teachers struggling to open high windows. Good way to delay lessons, that. Well, the one in here is very modern. Yes, that is. Aluminium a thing. Bit of a new yeah. gadget, isn't yeah. it? But good old fashioned one next door. 
and not a window that opens in there either, so I'm not sure what it's doing in there. <laughs> Is it me or you? Well, go on, you can carry on. Going in to Boulder Burgess, the players out of mid wicket for no run. He's on 16, Michael Burgess, so off the back of an impressive 80 against Nottingham Shewitch. Century partnership, which turned that game, really. That was the, the turning point of that match, really. Uh, eventually won it for Warwickshire. Big, big win, that. Three wins so far this season for Warwickshire. Two of them against Notts and one against Essex. So quite an impressive list of wins. We try not to talk too much about Durham. Cohen comes into ball, that's left. Just well, I certainly try not to talk too much about Durham. But, um, <laughs> he's just showing off with three wins. Derbyshire, one of the teams, I think they're only two now, aren't they? Who uh, don't have a win to their name this season after Leicestershire won last week. Derbyshire and Kent, from memory. Should say Dom Sibley's now in there, backing the way he does. None off six balls. Yeah. Good now, Dom. Keep it up. Played. Uh, well, he sort of officially played two games for Warwickshire. This next one is uh, Yorker length is dug out and played to point, but the first one he didn't. Hardly oh, big as he. Do you know that? No, I think he only played one. He got a broken finger, didn't he? That's I don't think right. he actually played. Played against he? Derbyshire. In the, uh... Yes, that's when he got the broken finger, wasn't it? And, I, didn't, um, I didn't even see him break his finger. Then he uh, rocked up at uh, Chelmsford and. Um, <laughs> trying to play a second 11 game bless and the match there were seven overs in the entire game he did bat for the whole of those seven overs so I suppose it helped a bit but uh, then he rocked up at Chelmsford and scored actually a very impressive 43 in very difficult conditions that's played back to the bowler there's no run and then the second innings again it was a bit of a brief cameo due to rain So he hasn't had a great deal of batting under his belt, but uh, he's in there for England now. Well, he's what England have been looking for for a number of years, isn't he? And yeah, mm -hmm. He still gets criticised for not batting quickly enough. I never quite yeah. understood that. Cohen. Still got that halfway back at mid-wicket but uh, this one's playing the offside very well timed by Burgess and going to start on some running today he has to chase that one and he draws it in and he's very careful watches his foot to make sure it doesn't go on the rope watches it very carefully and uh, did that very efficiently that was almost the sort of thing you'd show to a schoolboy this is how you do it and you know what else he does and he, he does it a lot if he does a fine piece of fielding and gets some applause. He always touches the tip of his cap. Always. I mean, he's, he's such, a, such a nice bloke. But he's a magnificent fielder. Well, two runs there to uh, Burgess. Now one to 18. Dahl takes his position at point now. As, uh, Cohen bowls and that's just play to mid-off for no run. And the end of the over. Uh, everyone heads for the sanitizers again. 18 to Burgess, 68 for Hayne, 154 for four. Yeah, I'm starting to feel a bit for Mikey Cohen. Yeah. Apart, apart from the fact that he's just wandered away from everybody and uh, <laughs> isn't going to sanitize his hands unless he can find a bottle of something down at the far end where he's fielding. <laughs> In fact, he's just told the 12th man that he needs to bring some sanitizer to hand sanitise around to him because he's not coming back. I just feel a little bit for him because uh, he remains wicketless after eight overs, not for 21, but he's probably bowled well enough to have picked up one at least, if not a couple. And the 12th man diligently. Connor Marshall trots out to uh, the far end of the ground in front of the uh, permanent temporary stand to deliver said and sanitizer. And yeah, Matt Critchley again. You're never far from a Matt Critchley over. <laughs> He's bowled three so far in two separate spells. One immediately after lunch. And he came back. Then he went away. Now he's back again. Uh, HS and five overs for 23 in his latest spell, which is uh, better than five overs for 30 in his first. 
and they've all been waiting desperately for this detail but the 150 came up in 295 balls so the third 50 took just 74 balls so they've really raced along lost one wicket for that 50. Critchley Zinn and that one's <coughs> driven very pleasantly out towards the uh, cover boundary where Sam Connors does the fielding and picks up a single 69 to him 155 for four got those two wickets at 93 and 105 Derbyshire will be uh, quite keen to pick up another one here as quickly as possible because even though Burgess is only on 18 he looks like he's getting into his stride and obviously Hayne on 69 is well set 18. 50 partnership now isn't it? it is you're right that's one of 51 now as uh, the ball is driven up to a, a long off who is uh, Billy Godman 50 partnership coming <coughs> from 79 balls have sped Critchley's in again right out of the middle of the bat of Sam Hain Critchley fields off his own bowling just into the onside as ever Wayne Matson at slip Critchley's in again. This one keeps a little low and it's aerial as it goes past the left hand of a diving Critchley at the end of his follow through from Sam Hain. Not the best shot he's played in this innings of 70 now. 157 for four. He'd have been cross if he got out to that one, wouldn't he? Yeah, he certainly would. Brings Burgess back onto strike. Just rechecks his guard. He's already faced. Critchley in this over goes back into his crease and guides it out towards the cover boundary off which comes Sam Connors to do the fitting almost overthrows Brooke Guest the keeper they go through for a comfortable single now Burgess wants something else now he's just had his sleeveless sweater removed now he's trying to attract the attention of he wants new gloves this time probably could have done that the last break but there we go next Delivery. A hint of turn as uh, it's played into the ground by Sam Hain. Critchley fields. That's the end of the over one. 58 for four. Hain has 70 now. Burgess is on 20. Going to see Mikey Cohen continue. We not. Are we? Oh yeah, we are. Sorry, I saw um, Lewis Rees marching mm. very purposefully to the far end, but he's going to field it at mid on. So Mikey Cohen will get another opportunity to break his duck in the wickets column, which he clearly deserves to. Indeed. You don't get what you deserve now, Clive, as we know. <laughs> Look at us. <laughs> so, then he comes in, Cohen will walk at the end of his run up, and then he comes up. running in. Oh, balls a bouncer, which. Uh, Burgess ducks under, stays on his haunches, Michael Burgess. Must have been close to a no ball, that. Yeah. It's a long, long way over the batsman's head. Inverted numbers of these two batters, 61 Burgess, 16. It almost caught me out before. Eight. Yeah. Almost. They're different sizes, of course. Uh, just stands upright as Cohen bowls to him, just pushes out onto the leg side. He's getting him to drift into the batter. And uh, getting plenty of encouragement from his teammates on the field. Mikey Cohen. First time today, feel Derbyshire in need of wickets, but yeah. equally as before, they were certainly to get a couple, they'd be right back in it. Going bowls, that's left. Late decision to leave it by Burgess. Not the right one. Oh, hello. England have lost a wicket. Is it Dom Sibley? I'm afraid it is, yes. Yeah. Sibley going for a duck off seven balls. It's a shame.
comes. Cohen. Seven bowlers used. By Derbyshire today. That's driven by Burgess. Nice shot. Beats mid off. And once it's beaten mid off, it's only going one way. And that's down in front of the crowd for a four. Of course, no one from the crowd's allowed to go and fetch the ball. So Lewis Reese has to jog all the way over to collect it. We had at New Road a ball that was hit. I think it might have gone for six. Uh, and it was thrown back by a member of the ground staff. Ooh. Oh, oh dear. All hell, all hell broke loose. <laughs> the ball had to be sanitised. When it was thrown back to Lewis Deploy, he had to go and have his hands sanitised because he touched the ball. I'm pretty sure the umpire came, the, the gloves came <laughs> out. And, oh dear, oh dear. Yeah. Well, of course, um, Tom Sibley was involved in the incident, wasn't he? As, uh, this next one from Cohen, his play back to him is no run where he um, had a force of habit, put saliva on the ball, realised instantly that he'd done it and had to confess. And that led to, uh, it's almost like those films where you get like, monster, monsters film where you get all these people in these <laughs> various uh, kits to come and descend on the ball and fumigate it. Shouldn't jest really, it's, it's part of a bizarre way of life at the moment. But we've got cricket, we've got a crowd, so everything's good. And uh, Burgess, well, a little bit of bounce from uh, Cohen Burgess, plays it into the ground, the uh, onside for no run. Warwickshire 162 for four. Wickets have gone in pairs. Two went uh, early on and then two in fairly quick succession after lunch. But this is the second notable partnership of the innings. Warwickshire, 162 for four. Dan Wheeler, who was on commentary with me last week down at New Road, is up at, uh, no, he's at New Road again, isn't he? Uh, where Worcestershire are now, 131 for nine. He just tweeted me and said, the only crumb of comfort in the midst of the Worcestershire carnage is that there is no cooathon. We had three or four pigeons um, last week. A couple of them were relatively amorous. Well, they... <laughs> it was all very noisy. Critchley begins a new over from the race course and it's driven by Hayne straight to Anna's Dahl. You know, funny you should say that, we had that at Edgbaston. I, I'm wondering partly is because we had no crowds, I'm suddenly noticing noises that I never really noticed before. And, and the one was very loud pigeons. My word, they were loud at New Road. This one is driven this time to Billy Godman by Sam Hayne. He picks up another single. Godman just fumbles it momentarily. Without that sort of murmur of the crowd you normally get, you suddenly hear yeah. all the noises around a lot more. The squeals of footballers have been very loud this season. Oh, as, dear uh, me. Critchley here balls in his defence. Well, there's some <laughs> brilliant physios in football, aren't there? Because oh, I mean, players okay. have gone down with career-ending injuries and the physios managed to cure them instantly. Occasionally they've gone down with career-ending injuries and got up themselves. <laughs> yes. Critchley balls and this one is driven towards... It's Dahl one spot, 153 for four. I won't make any reference to League Two playoff semi finals on that subject. But, uh, <laughs> oh, Wigan was the worst that I came across. <laughs> Max delivery is pushed out into the offside. I didn't see that game. Sadly. Or not. 163 for four. It's all bits of the first one. Next one that's dragged down by uh, Christian, brilliantly fielded by Honours Dahl. It really is worth his weight in gold. Isn't he just? He prevents any runs coming from the final ball of the over. One run came from it in total. 163 for four, Hayne 71, Burgess 24. It's always one of the entertaining aspects of cricket when you've got a really good fielder mm. you can enjoy watching. chat there with uh, Matt Critch. He says, Matt, you've just had two overs there, so I'm going to take a breather. <laughs> Let's see if he puts his cap back on, although he is, I think, going to feel close to the boundary in front of the players' pavilion away to our left-hand side, but he is indeed putting his cap back on. Mikey Cohen's going to keep going here. It's only his fifth over of the spell, but... His first over was five spells. Uh, first spell was five overs, mm. wasn't it? So... Uh... You see Leicestershire going well against Gloucestershire, who have been very good this season. Leicestershire, 189, 9 for 2 at Leicester. 
Right arm, sorry, left arm over from Cohen. It's played back to my hang. It's 163 for four. They sort of relaunched, didn't they, in the winter Leicestershire with this running foxes business that uh, were trying to capture everyone's imagination and there was lots of talk about making a challenge and all the rest of it and it all sort of fell very flat at the start of the season. So perhaps, uh, perhaps the promise that people saw is starting to be fulfilled. Maybe they put too much pressure on themselves early yeah, on. Poor yeah. Alex, yeah. Cohen. To Val. And uh, just drops a bat on that and plays it to mid off. And there's no run. 163 for four. Yeah, you can do that, can't you? Sort of the weight of expectation mm. and lots of chat around the club mm -hmm. of. Uh, well, we might make a challenge this season and all of a sudden you, you get off to a poor start and it all falls in on you. But the time Derbyshire will play them is in T20 this year. We've been perennial Leicestershire opponents. Leicestershire and Durham we seem to play all the time. Every other week, just alternate between the two. <laughs> Thanks all from Cohen. It was a bouncer, it's a high bouncer, that. I did have a look across the square leg umpire just to see whether that's uh, in the any signals. It's one for the over over shoulder height. I think Derbyshire are there fairly soon into the T20 from memory. Lancashire next Wednesday. I think it's Leicestershire the, the game after. I think. Yeah, it's going to seem strange, that change of competition. This one is left by a elaborate leave. Uh, Oohs and ahs behind the stumps. But I think he was pretty much in control of that, the batter. The Bears, of course, start on Thursday at uh, Headingley against Yorkshire, followed by Trent Bridge the next day. And then back here, Sunday the 13th. Start of five away games because of the test match going on at Edgbaston. That one is uh, as Hayne tries to work around the leg side. And oh, it just hit him. It's a fairly eye-watering level. Yes, I think so. Kind of a little one. They're trying not to make it too obvious. <laughs> Ethan's been back on. He sent me an email earlier on. I'm not sure if you were with me or not. He was doing a Viva for... They're called Vivas, aren't they? Um, for a Masters in Chemistry. So I wished him well. So I did ask him what a Viva was. <laughs> and he's explained... Next one from Cohen. Is it like the back of square leg for a singer? Just been asked on text. Is it all right to dial at half five? Shall I just say no? No. No. Shall I? No. no, of course. Absolutely not. <laughs> no problem. There we are. It's just an interview and the research that you've carried out over the past year. As with any interview, there are a few times he says where you're made to feel a bit of a lemon and others where you feel much more confident. Not too bad, though, which is good to hear. Sad to see my wish of Derbyshire having Warwickshire all out by the time he'd finished, not materialised. <laughs> now, uh, he might have been aiming a slightly too high, Ethan, but uh, they've been all right. They've been all right at Derbyshire today. Well, Dolham have won the race to be the first to bowl a team out today. Um, Worcestershire all out for 131. So Dolham are still very much in contention in this group. Taken three bowling points in the blink of an eye. So Dan Wheeler suggesting there wasn't a coup-a-thon might be wrong. Somebody, somebody or something will be cooing up there. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Uh, Matty Potts and Bryden Cast taking four apiece there. Critchley is going to bowl a third over, which will be his longest spell of the day, and that one is driven very pleasantly by Sam Hayne up to Billy Goldman at uh, wide, long off. Keeps him to a single. 165 for four, paying to 73. Critchley has taken a wicket in every single innings he's bowled in this season. 
all Ooh. beats the edge of Purchase's bout with one that turned a uh, considerable distance and the bales were whipped off as well by Brooke Guest which was a really fine piece of keeping unfortunately he didn't take the edge and his foot was firmly behind the crease but apart from that it's the first one we've really seen that's turned and he's in again now and off the back foot it's cracked into the offside and now he's off the bat was really very pleasant indeed it's fielded by Sam Connors who's out on the cover boundary he just moved to 25 167 for four 166 for four I thought so they got slightly ahead of themselves there scoreboard now that one takes the edge of Sam Haynes bat it's all along the ground and wide of the slip picked up out in the deep there by Ben Aitchison who hurls it back in but not before the batsman have got through for a couple so Hayne moves on to 77 ish <laughs> well I've got conflicting conflicting scores mm. here um, and, and I don't want to give anybody any false information any more false information than I have to really Next delivery is left alone by Sam Hayne. Goes through to Brooke Guest. We're going to settle on 168 for four with Hayne on 75. Yeah, there we go. Everything's back in sync again. Critchley bowls, and that one is driven back towards him. Dives to his left to get his left hand to it. Stops the ball to a large degree. Fielding completed by... Anuj Dahl and the over comes to an end. 168 for four. Hayne 75. Burgess 25. Christy North for 16 from six. And now he's once again in deep discussion with Billy Godwin. He gives him a tap on the back as he sends him on his way to the boundary to do his fielding. England have lost a second wicket. 18, <laughs> 18 for two. Zach Crawley has gone. So they're long way behind New Zealand's 378. Was it the first test, was it the year before last when they played Ireland and did they follow on? Yeah, I think, oh yes, that's right. And then, and then won it? Yeah. It's a good scenario. I think it was quite murky. Then the lights were on at Lords last night, I noticed. Of course, you can watch the highlights on BBC TV mm. tonight, 7 o'clock, I presume. Cohen comes in to bowl, and that's uh, played the offside for no run, 168 for four. I am actually, I'm going out. We'll always watch up in the eye player later. Oh yes, of course. Yeah. Currently staying at the at the home of uh, our breakfast show presenter because it saves me having to drive back to Bolton every day, and he's very very accommodating. Is he quiet when he gets up? Um, <laughs> not not so much this morning, certainly, <laughs> but you know, I can't really complain. Cohen bowls. That's a left nips back. And uh, gets a bit of a glare from the bowler there, does Burgess. So I say, you're sure about leaving that one? But, uh, 168 for four. It was a very loud bang at around midnight last night that neither of us know what, <laughs> co <laughs> was co what caused it. He's got a dog, but it wasn't the dog. <laughs> so uh, mm. that was quite alarming. Uh, we're uh, we're going to see Jakob Larsson, who was captain of Derby County when Jim Smith was at the club all those years ago he's in a, doing a Q&A tonight mm -hmm. this one is a whip down to a fine leg a bit of an inside edge and just one run still Cohen is asking questions still striving for a wicket that he's always looked capable of getting but just hasn't quite come for him Burgess on to 25 168 for four so rather unusually, I'll end up in a pub. Oh, uh, dear. Yeah. It's a Derby County pub as well, I'm told, the Neptune yeah. in the city. So I'm looking forward to that. Never been there before. I saw Derby a couple of times this season when covering Coventry. They did uh, cut it a bit fine, didn't they, Derby? Yes, yeah, a little bit. A little bit. It's, uh, Cohen. Bowls. Oh, that's the uh, left leans back. 
anything get out of the way. It was actually quite enjoyable the last day of the season because we thought that Coventry might well be involved right up to the last game of the season. In the end, they were safe with a couple of games to spare. So it was actually quite enjoyable just to lean back while we were playing our game, winning 6-1 and just seeing all the various ups and downs yeah. and emotions that well, the other teams went through. Certainly at one stage, they were in the bottom three. Were, yeah. For quite a time. Martin Waghorn got them out of it. Rotherham concede as well, didn't they? Yeah. Had to feel a bit for Rotherham, but uh, there we are. Well, there's much sympathy in this city for them, but uh, I know <laughs> what you mean. <laughs> um, that's our play back to the bowler for no run. 169 for four. Well, we've got quite a likeable manager. He's one that doesn't blame referees too often. Yeah. Occasionally, but not too often. 169 for four, the score here. Hain 75, Burgess 26. It's what you never get at the end of a day is cricket. You never get a coach saying, oh, just the umpire. It was just, oh, shock. Cost us everything. <laughs> Even if that's what they're thinking. Oh, just <laughs> they didn't say, say yeah. it. Yeah. Cohen to bowl. And always a leading edge there from uh, Hain, trying to work it on the leg side. It's all safe, rolls along the ground. But again, Cohen. Causing the batters a lot of problems. 169 for four. Yeah, he's bowled really well as Mikey Cohen. He's just having no luck whatsoever. A conversation there between Wayne Madsen and uh, Billy Godelman. Guest just. He looks like he's just taking a watching brief there. Ball handed to Matt Critchley, who then has a conversation with Wayne Madsen. They do like a chat, Derbyshire. You know what plan they've hatched here. Lewis Reese just keeps him, keeps his feet moving, keeps his legs going at mid on. As Critchley is in and bowls, and that one is uh, oh, brilliantly stopped again by a guess who. Andrews Dahl moving to his right, got down quickly, one hand to it, popped it up into the air, and straight to Matt Critchley again. Magnificent stuff. Critchley's ready to come in again. This time he goes back into his crease and forces it to Dahl, who doesn't have to move a muscle to field that one. Burgess made good contact with that, but straight to Dahl. He waits now with Madsen at slip, and that one's a full delivery right in the block hole that he pushes out into the offside. We should just take it as red that Dahl does the fielding. For the third successive ball. Difficult man to keep out of the action when he's in a key fielding position, which is at the moment shortish extra cover. This one is uh, cut squarer on the offside this time, though, and he does pick up a single as the ball goes out to Sam Connors. Burgess moves on to 27. 170 for four. 57th over of the day. Century today for Emilio Gay for uh, Northants. Just 21 years of age. This is made in first class hundreds on his eighth match. Hey, looked like he was thinking about a sweep there, and in the end, it was a very full delivery that he just about kept out. Played it straight back to Critchley, who coincidentally is the only man to have scored a century for Derbyshire this season. In again, and this one is pushed out into the offside. They pick up a single as Dahl goes out to do the fielding, almost inevitably. Hayne moves on to 76. Burgess has 26, 170. 171 for four. We're going to see a change now. Mikey Cohen is finally being replaced after uh, bowling six overs for 18 from the City end because Lewis Reese has just a frisbee style thrown his cap in the vague direction of the 12th man who still has to run the thick end of 100 yards to pick it up. We're going to see some left up, and again, Billy Godelman in deep conversation with Matt Critchley. He had that one ball that seemed to turn quite a lot, but not much else. It's a day one pitch, of course, but he is a wrist spinner. 
Well, Sam Haynes in unknown territory now. It's his highest score of the season. I think I said earlier this was his sixth uh, 50. I was being a bit kind to him. It was actually his fifth. Yeah, I wrote that 50. down. I'm well sorry. I'm mm. sorry. I've not uttered it out loud yet. That's all right, so. then. That's all right. <laughs> I'm going to plagiarise that later on. He's his fifth anyway. He's still, but this is his highest score of the season. He's on strike. And he leaves that one. Outside off stump from Reese. Um, Good tooth, Hank. Oh, oh no. Well, that's uh, not much fun. I also think I missed my uh, 3.30. Oh no, update next. You carry on, I'll okay. go over here. <laughs> one seven, one for four here. Again, sunshine, it's been interesting days cricket too. Two sort of braces of wickets going. The little partnership there was a play and a miss by uh, Hay. And that one moved away from him. And he was prodding at it and did well not to get an edge on that one. So it goes through to the wicket keeper. So still, well, this is a decent partnership. The batters are not looking completely in control by any means. <clears throat> 66 they've added now for the fifth wicket. <clears throat> but there have been scares on the way. Two slips in place. Third man down in front of us. A point. Cover mid on mid off. Mid wicket. That was left by Hain. There's a man sort of on the wide long leg boundary. So two men on the boundary behind the batter. Two in catching positions and the rest fielding in to save the one. In the 58th over, so in tea terms, we're not actually we're not, we're going to be a little bit late, but not as late as we often are. That one comes off the thigh pad of Hayne. It's uh, going to be uh, leg by or two. Hayne's coming back for the second. He's going to have to be quick. Or one of the Burgess is going to have to be quick. The throw was not perfect uh, from Connors. And they do get through. That was a risky leg. But I think Hain was working on the theory that he was going to the danger end, so he sprinted. But Connors, although the throw wasn't great, the thinking wasn't bad. He threw towards the other end, and Burgess found himself scampering to get back. So extras on to 16. And Warwickshire to 173 for four. Reese. Left arm over, Hayne gets solidly behind that and plays it back to the bowler. Blue sky overhead, some clouds around the fringes of the sky. As we look at it, we have the county ground, which is quite central in Derby, it's right on the ring road. So you hear a fair amount of traffic. Uh, that one is a very wide delivery which Hayne leaves. End of the over, 173 for four. Warwickshire put in by Derbyshire. Reduce to 16 for two early on with Will Rose out for eight. Peter Malam for naught. Got to lunch in 82 for two, but then lost two wickets in quick succession again. Rob Yates for 37, Matt Lamb for seven, all to the bowling of Sam Connors. But since then, Sam Haynes moved on to 76 and Michael Burgess playing with some confidence is on 27. It'll be Burgess to face Matt Critchley. Critchley with a dark towel on the back of his flannels, balls, and that was pushed to uh, Dahl in the covers. Throws the ball in hard towards the wicket keeper. Two men on the onside boundary for uh, Critchley. Ball into the right hand. It gives that one plenty of air. It's hit down the ground by Hayne. He's able to amble through for an agreed single, as they call it. And Hayne on to 76, 174 for four. And next one from Critchley off a little bit of an inside edge, but uh, Michael Burgess is able to trop through for his yeah 
and one to all I said a moment ago the school was just a little bit behind so Hain on to 77 and now Burge is on to 29 176 for four I think now the scoreboard hasn't yet now I've seen the scoreboard a disservice I'll get it right in a minute Burge just plays that one to long off so that's Burge is on to 29 Hain is on 77 it's 176 for four and I've caught up now it's Hain on strike As uh, Critchley comes in to bowl and Hayne a forward defensive just rolls in front of him Critchley walks up and picks up the ball and uh, Critchley will try again so he gets through his overs quickly so we're not too badly off in terms of overs that was a quicker ball which almost did for Hayne he just gets onto it late and pushes it out to the offside. So we've got five overs to go till we can take T. It would normally be T now. So we're going to be around about 20 minutes behind, which is um, actually not uh, as late as it often is these days. Obviously, with the sanitization breaks, it just slows everything down somewhat. No further damage for England yet. 25 for two now against New Zealand. So... Laws, you see them all out for 378 early in the day. Dave's back with that us. That was hopelessly late for that. <laughs> I completely missed it. I think we rescued it, though. Uh, yes, well done. I'm back. Uh, 176 for four. They could do with the wicket here. Derbyshire, it's just starting to get a little out of hand. Uh, what, 71 approaching the highest partnership. There's a... Uh, Lewis Rees bowls to Michael Burgess who pushes it out to Anna's Dahl at backward point. It's not as if it's not as if the bowlers aren't being kept interested either, is it? The the batsmen aren't exactly they're not dominant because no. there is always the odd ball here and there that will do something. They've just removed Wayne Madsen from No, they haven't. He's just run down the pitch to say something. Pass the ball back to Lewis Rees. I thought they'd removed him from second mm. slip and were going to put somebody in close on the leg side, but they either were never going to do it or have changed their minds. As uh, Rees is in again, and this one's uh, a little bit wide of off stump. There's a chase on here for Ben McDermott. Ben McDermott against Billy Godelman. That's uh, an interesting race. Godelman <laughs> gets the ball and flicks it back for McDermott. The batsmen have gone through for two. Uh, oops, excuse me, McDermott. Uh, hurls it back in, 178 for four. You'd be surprised how often I forget there's a microphone immediately in front of my mouth, <laughs> considering there is one there most days. It's very unprofessional. I apologise to anybody who may have uh, suffered any hearing damage. <laughs> 178 for four. 77 to Hayne. Burgess has just moved on to 31. Played some expansive shots, but has largely been watchful. He waits there now with his bat raised and goes forward and leaves it alone outside the off stump to go through to Brook Guest. Yes, I think from what we've seen, Warwickshire will feel they get to 300. They've got a pretty yeah. formidable total on the ball. And obviously, they'll hope to go on beyond that from here, but to get to 300 would... Uh, would be a decent effort, I think. Well, Derbyshire rarely get to 300. Certainly this season, it has been their batting that's been uh, a little disappointing. Anybody who thinks I'm being pessimistic, as, uh, that one is uh, clipped off his legs by Michael Burgess for a single down to deep backward square leg where Connors does the fielding. Burgess moves to 32, 179 for four. Might want to listen back on BBC Sounds to Billy Godelman's assessment of the season so far, which he gave me yesterday, which he said, well, it, it really has to improve. It hasn't been very good for the large parts. They got the draw at Edgebaston largely because of snow. They've <laughs> uh, been soundly thrashed in three of the last four matches. The one in between was badly rain affected. There's a uh, Reese Bowles a bouncer this time. I'm not sure that that's going to get him very far at his pace. And it's left alone by Sam Hain. Uh, and they got a draw at Durham, which was. A proper draw. But apart from that, anyway, that 
That's, just, that's all I've got to say on the matter. Ben McDermott and Billy Godman eventually get the ball back to Lewis Rees. McDermott having a chat with uh, Michael Burgess from a distance as Rees bowls edged and caught by Wayne Madsen and Haynes gone for 77. Lewis Rees hasn't picked up many wickets this season but that could be a big one for Derbyshire because Hayne was batting really nicely and Warwickshire lose their fifth wicket on 179 Hayne caught by Madsen for 77 well Hayne will be frustrated again um, I mean obviously to get six half, uh, five half centuries in the season is you know, a decent effort but to not convert any of them will be a frustration for him but it's never been easy out there and another good catch from Madsen I mean, they, they've been straight at him I don't think either have been gimmies by any means he's held on to them well so a good innings from Sam Hayne will just feel it could have been even better but 77 179 for 5 again they don't quite manage to make it a century partnership by the 74 added Not too many century partnerships this season it would uh, be fair to say that Derbyshire needed that. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And and Lewis Rees probably needed it as well. His, uh, his bowling has been terrific for Derbyshire since he arrived. His batting's been very good as well, but this season it, it hasn't quite happened for him. So uh, he'd be more than happy. It's been the beginning and end of overs is where things have happened. That's the second wicket to four off the last ball of the over. Two wickets have fallen off the first ball of the over. So it's Concentration. Yeah. Or coincidence. <laughs> it's <laughs> one or the other. There. Something beginning with a C, I reckon. Yeah, only his sixth wicket of the season, Lewis Rees. Not necessarily how much he struggled, but it, it just hasn't quite come off for him this year. Well, good wicket to get. Tim Breson has probably made a bigger contribution so far this season with the bat than he has with the ball. He, he did take some wickets in the win against Knotts in his last game, but it's the batting in particular where he's, uh, he's gone well. Um, he's at the non strikers end because it was the last ball of the over, but he'll soon get into the action because Burgess has pushed that one from Critchley out into the offside for a single. I'm now contractually obliged to say the word Chesterfield. Where Tim Bresden was the bowler and Matt Critchley was the batsman. But he was playing for Yorkshire then, Tim Bresden. And he got hit for 22 off the final over as Derbyshire crossed the line in a T20 match. Great fun it was. <laughs> Great fun. <laughs> With a ball to spare. And comes uh, Critchley to Bresden and he whips that away. The offside for Sigler. I say he's been in the runs this season. He has just avoided a third consecutive duck because he, <laughs> he did bag a pair against Nottinghamshire. But before then, he got an unbeaten half century in the home in the away win at Notts, half century against Essex, um, and also a, a 39 not out in a remarkably low scoring effort by Warwickshire against Durham. That one he plays to mid wicket for no run. So he has, in fact, only got seven wickets so far this season with the ball, but he's, he's made a few runs. Anyway, it's uh, Burgess who plays that one to long off. He doesn't want to go on now, Burgess. He's on to 34, which is still with work to do here. So they're looking, I think, for a minimum of 300. They've still got work to do to get that. 82 for five. Critchley does get through his deliveries very quickly, doesn't he? That's uh, pushed out to point off a bit of an edge, hence the oohs you would have heard, or the o's. Yeah, it's not much time to chat when he's bowling. No. <laughs> when Madsen's even quicker if he ever gets on. Critchley then to the new man, Bresnan. Gives it a bit of air. Bresnan whips it away. He's not. Uh, uh, look around too much in these denied runs by a very, very good tumbling stop by Billy Godelman. 182 for five at the end of the over. That yeah, was a good stop by Billy. T now up to Lord England, 25 for two. Mm. Bit of work to do in that yeah, game. Yes, haven't they just? Lancashire all out, 173 against Glamorgan. At Cardiff. I, I was listening to of the Roses match driving back from mm. New Road on Sports Extra last Sunday 
Uh, and Scott Reed, the Lancashire Radio Lancashire's commentator, was saying he was going to have to look up the last time that Lancashire had been to Cardiff because they normally play at mm -hmm. Colwyn Bay mm -hmm. when they play each other. It's, it's a good while since they've been there, I think. It's not the ground it once was, sadly, Sophia Gardens. There's Lewis Rees bowling to Michael Burgess who pushes this out into the offside. It's fairly bad. Ben McDermott is nothing more than a glorified football ground <laughs> for me. Very, very rectangular. But Colwyn Bay is nice. I can imagine Lancashire yes. take a lot of supporters there when they play there. Yeah, Derbyshire, we've, they've had one game at Colwyn Bay since, since I started doing this. Uh, it was blisteringly hot. Fortunately, the uh, ISDN in the tree and the, <laughs> the, la yes. the lady with the electricity were all in place <laughs> behind us. It's, Reese bowls a short one and it's pulled by Burgess around the corner for a single. There is a man down there. It's Sam Connors, 183 for five. Burgess moves on to 35. We've had two games at, at Swansea as well against Columbia. That's an odd ground. I, mean, I like it, but it's an odd, odd looking ground, Swansea. Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. You know, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed Swansea. Yeah. I, I, love, I mean, I'm a great fan of our grounds. Yeah. I do like Cardiff, though. I mean, as a city, Cardiff mm. is, there's, there's few better. Yeah, outgrounds are becoming few and far between as well. They're desperately clinging on to Chesterfield at the moment. Got a four day game, a Royal London game, and a T20 there this year. Fingers crossed. There's a Reese's in bowls to Preston, who just dabs this down into the ground. And well, that's no one. He got his cap earlier this season, didn't he, Tim Preston? I think I saw a photograph of that. Yes. I always think it's a bit odd when a player of his pedigree well, yeah, gets a ball to the cap, yeah, but there we absolutely. are. I know you had some nice quotes from him saying he wasn't actually expecting it. Mm. But, uh, what a player he's been over the years, Tim Bresley. Yeah, of course, one of the England heroes. And yeah. I'm quite right, too. He's a good, he's a good bloke. He's trying to turn it to the leg side. Bye, Bresley. Straight to uh, Mikey Cohen, mid-wicket. Talking about age, I did commentate on his senior debut when he was 16. Blimey. For, playing for Yorkshire. I was covering Yorkshire in those days. You don't look old enough, Clive. Yeah. I suppose, I suppose I should be gratified that the player's still playing when I was commentating for yes. years ago. <laughs> it's when the sons and grandsons of players start appearing, you think, oh, blimey. Bresnan waits and leaves this one from Lewis Rees alone outside the off It was very, very wide. Uh, I'm sure Billy Tanner probably thought about it, but decided against it. And everybody scampers in uh, various directions because they can't count to six. <laughs> there's another ball left of the over. That's very peculiar. <laughs> so it, they're a bit like, um, a bit like sheep, though, aren't they? Yes. Once one goes, the rest of them panic. Start running around in all directions. Reese comes in to complete the over. That one's wide of the off stump. Bresnan leaves it alone. He goes through to the keeper. And this time they can move. Well, they could move before, but they can move into their positions for Matt Critchley because it is the end of the over. 183 for five. Bresnan one. Burgess 35. Up till two, well, two overs till yeah. two, in fact. So uh, we may well hit the four o'clock news at tea, which is never great. No, you lose your tea break, yeah, don't you? Pretty much, either. pretty much. I'm not complaining though, I'm just, no. I'm just a statement of fact. <laughs> <laughs> Matt Critchley to ball, and that's pushed out onto the odd side for no run. 183 for five. Been an interesting day's cricket. Never looked easy for the batters out there, but they have worked hard to try and get a total on the board. And uh, quicker ball there from Critch, I think almost fools Burgess, who was making room to play the shot and had to adjust at the last moment and just push the ball back down the pitch. The ice cream van have evidently cranked it up. As that one is uh, guided away to the offside for a single. Yes, we're both old enough to remember he'll <laughs> not sell much ice cream going yes. at that speed. Indeed. 36 to Burgess, <laughs> 184 for five. Next 
one from Critchley is a little bit of an edge and goes back down to point. And Bresnan rehearses the shot. Tim Bresnan, he's on one. And uh, Critchley balls to him. Bresnan forward to that, pushes him to the offside. Brought him on Warwickshire. Got a lot of young players coming through, so they needed to uh, add a bit of experience. And Tim Bresnan, very really much in that role. They've lost, of course, a couple of, a few very experienced players the last couple of years. As Bresnan plays that to point. A little bit late on it, but it gets it away. Obviously, they've Ian Bell retired at the end of last season. Gitan Patel, Tim Ambrose, and a few others gone before. So, they brought Bresnan in. He wasn't being used in all formats by Yorkshire, so he was getting a little frustrated by that. And probably Paul Farbrace, being uh, knowing him well, helps and, uh, and brought him in here. A little bit of experience and presence in the changing room. 184 for five, Warwickshire. Bresnan will be at the non-striker's end for the start of the final over before tea. Ball by Lewis Rees. He's picked up the most recent wicket to fall that of Sam Hain. It's Michael Burgess. He's bowling two. And that's Ooh. playing at that one outside the off stump. That wasn't a good shot. Went through to... Guest, but kind of missed the edge of the bat by much. Yeah. Gives a little walk about, does Burgess after that one? Yeah, refocusing. Which is the uh, treatment that he was having focused rehabilitation on his knee, apparently. Uh, Lewis Reese, whatever that means. He's in now, bowls that's wider of the off stump than the previous ball and left alone. He, Hitches up the knee support that he's wearing on his right knee, which, which clearly isn't tight enough, or is just slightly loose. I suppose if it's too tight, then his foot will drop off eventually. <laughs> that wouldn't do anybody any favours. A bizarre email. Reese turns at the top of his mark and he's in again now. Balls that one uh, just bounces a little bit on Burgess. He manages to control it and guide it down to third man where Alex Hughes does the fielding. Burgess moves to 38. 186 for five. So two wickets this morning and three so far this afternoon. And that. Uh, it has, as Clive said, been a really interesting two-thirds of a day's cricket so far. Reese with two slips in place is in, and that one is played into the ground rather uncertainly by Tim Bresnan. He needs to do something about that knee support, though. He's having, hmm. to, having to drag it up nearly every over at the moment, or every delivery, rather. Like Dougie yeah, Brown used to pull up his socks after every delivery. Yeah. Tighter socks. <laughs> I think. I would swear to it, there are two balls left. This could be the last one, though, because I can't count to six as this next delivery is turned into the leg side by Bresden. There are indeed two because there's no one. Now, who's the umpire? I heard this because quite often in commentary we sort of think, oh. Is that a no ball? There were a few who just signalled two to the... That's right. Uh, yeah. I'd not, I've not come across this before. I heard that in the season. People yeah. were saying that after four balls, they'll hold just quite a little just tiny signal often. to the scorer. Yeah. Just but to you're confirm. right. If the arm goes out too far. Yeah. No ball. So the last delivery of the afternoon session. Lewis Rees in and bowls to Bresnan, who defends it. Straight back to the bowler. And that is T. Bresnan has won. Michael Burgess has 37. Warwickshire 185 for five, having lost Rob Yates for 37. Matt Lamb for seven. And most recently, Sam Hain caught up second slip by Wayne Mountain off the bowling of Reese for 77. So three wickets have fallen in the afternoon session. Two this morning. Derbyshire, well, they'll be looking to, hopefully, they'll be looking to polish off the remaining five in the evening session and get batting themselves. But all that to come. The clouds have lifted. 
can even see an aircraft down towards the south flying across some blue sky. We will be back online and on the uh, Derbyshire stream in around about 15 minutes time or so.
19 years in the making. Finally, they make it to Edgebaston on finals day.
Welcome back to the Encora County Ground, where uh, the players are returning after the tea interval. Looks as though we're going to see Anish Dahl from the race course end first up. Thought it might have been Sam Connors with his four for 31, but now it's Anish Dahl. Two not out bats when Michael Burgess on 37, Tim Bresnan on one. Still to come Danny Briggs, Craig Miles, Liam Norwell and Ollie Hannon Dolby. But it will be Anaj Dahl to resume the bowling attack. As I say, I thought it might have been uh, it might have been Sam Connors. Is he down at the uh, long leg? Perhaps he's going to bowl the next over from the city end as uh, the first delivery after T is driven away for four runs off the back foot by Michael Burgess. And he moves into the 40s. 41 to him, 189 for five. Warwickshire. Dahl marches back to his mark. A little bit chastened by that first shot after T. Just two slips for Dahl. There's a man down at third man, that's uh, Matt Critchley. The long leg is indeed Sam Connors as Dahl bowls, and this one is also driven into the offside. This time, Billy Goldman has the time to get round and pick up the ball. Critchley, well, he's wheeling his arms, windmilling his arms over on the far side. This ball in its 65th over There's still a way to go until the uh, the new ball well, 90 for 5 now Dahl's in again and off the back foot Bresnan just pushes it out into the offside where McDermott does the fielding perhaps they're keeping Sam Connors back for that new ball should he be required which he probably will Godman going through his uh, post T exercises as well, balancing on one leg and <laughs> all that kind of thing. It's a bizarre sight, Billy, doing his exercises after T. Dahl is in again and turning to the leg side by Preston to go through for a quick single, and it is there because Mikey Cohen has to move across to his right and he's left handed. So uh, the chances of him picking it up and throwing the stumps down were fairly slim. Preston picks up a second run. 191 for five. Finish around about 6.15, 6.20. It's pretty good these days, yeah, isn't it? not bad at all. <clears throat> not bad at all. Imagine that a fair number of the crowd will have departed by then. Been a good crowd today as Dahl bowled to Burgess. Pushed it out to the offside. There's a misfield there by Ben McDermott, but the batsman had already agreed that they weren't going to run. And McDermott is not very happy with himself. In fact, is he limping? No, he's not. Goodness for that. He's just looking down at his boots. I think he perhaps slipped a little bit and was anxious for a moment. But he's OK. 191 for five, it remains. Final ball of the first over after T. About to be bowled by Anos Dahl. They're now down to one slip. Man out on the cover boundary. Dahl is in. Oh, and that goes past the edge of the bat and through to the keeper. Can't kind have of been far away from claiming Michael Burgess in his 40s. He's there, though, on 42. Bresden to 191 for five. And it is going to be Matt Critchley. So uh, they're going to race through a couple of overs here. So I just realised I left my glasses next door and I debated with myself. I've only got 10 minutes before I've got to go next door anyway. Do I, oh, no. do I risk <laughs> just doing 10 minutes without my glasses? And I thought, no. no. <laughs> I'm well, go I, I would be able to do it. <laughs> um, otherwise, it might be. A bloke there with a the white blur is about to bowl to. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, 191 for five. Here. Yeah. And who we're going to see bowling here? We're going to see. Critchley continued with 15, Critchley, 15 overs away from the uh, from the new ball. And I'm not suggesting that Critchley is just bowling because the new ball will be available, and, and the same for Anish Dahl because they're both potential wicket takers. But 
could be the only reason for not bringing Sam Connors on first up after tea, having picked up wickets immediately this morning in the first half hour and immediately after lunch. So One slip in place as he comes in over the wicket. Gives that plenty of air and Bresnan has a, quite a hard swing at it, but doesn't really connect properly and he plays it out to mid off for no run. Tim Bresnan on two, Michael Burgess 42. So Critchley comes in to bowl. Let's push back to the bowl. If you're watching, you need one more decent partnership to make sure they get to that sort of 300, which I suspect they might have had in mind when they started. That's been a competitive score. As that one is played out to mid off, there's no run. Wickets. Well, got in pairs up to now. Question can Derbyshire do that again? It's 12 runs since the last wicket fell. Fifth wicket, that's after a stand of 74. And uh, Bresson leans four plays to that. There was a stand of uh, 77 for the third wicket. But two wickets went for three runs early on, and then two for 12 just after lunch. So early in each session, the wickets have fallen. The reason I want, I'm sure I want to get one now is Bresson plays that back to Critchley. There's no run. I have a feeling that Bresnan won't be able to resist mm. having a go at Matt yeah. Critchley at some point. Mid on, mid off, up. And he does come down the pitch and he hits it. Oh, bounces in front of mid on. Well, I think Matt Critchley feels as I do that I don't know whether mid on saw it late, but he stayed where he was and just wonder whether he moved forward sharply, whether he could have potentially turned that into a chance. Certainly it was a false shot. 191 for five. He couldn't resist, could he? He couldn't resist it. Just uh, Lewis Reese. Yeah. He, uh, the ball went to, and he looked in two minds, didn't he? Really looked as though he really should have gone for it, should he? Shouldn't he? And in the end, it, it sort of bounced and hit him in the chest. He's had a few, hasn't he, Lewis Reese? He, he, yeah. he very nearly took a spectacular one the morning session. Did take one later that was skied to him. There's been a couple that he just short of there's been a message sent on I think there is a, this one is short from uh, Anuj Dahl and pulled away into the leg side out to Sam Connors at square leg by Burgess who moves to 43 192 for 5 it looked as though a message had been passed via Ben McDermott to Billy Goldman who passed it on to Anuj Dahl I've no idea clearly what that message might have been a bit of intelligence headquarters goodness knows what it was but all as to the intrigue <laughs> Dahl is in again from the race course and left alone by Bresnan to go through to the keeper Start, traffic starting to build again towards the Pentagon mm. Island as you might expect it's certainly got a lot busier in the last two or three weeks noticeably busier I know where just arrived, but I'm afraid I've got to go again. I've got to That's all right. Well, I've got, one at, I've got one about 35, which always makes it slightly awkward. But we'll work our way through it, Clive. We'll work our way through it manfully. As this next delivery is driven very nicely, very handsomely by uh, Tim Bresnan. It's going to go for four. That was a glorious shot out to the extra cover boundary from the former Yorkshireman. Well, he's still a Yorkshireman. Once a Yorkshireman, he moves on to six, 196 for five. Yes, he'd be a proud Yorkshireman as well. I rather fancy Will Tim Bresden. Just uh, lose that and then dial in again because it was starting to buffer a bit. In goes uh, this next delivery that strikes the pad of Tim Bresden but was going down leg side, so no appeal from Dahl. Just that pleasant hum of a crowd in the background. Always oh, good to hear. Next delivery is defended by Bresden, back up towards Lewis Reese. Uh, 
uh, full round of the day's play, of course, into sports scene at six. Then we're uh, face to face with our post match interviewee. Hopefully, get it back to base in time. As in comes Dahl and Bowles. That's turned into the leg side by Bresden, but straight to uh, Mikey Cohen, who's at mid wicket. It's the end of the over. Conceded five runs. Nine overs for 25 now. Anuj Dahl. Warwickshire 196 for five. Michael Burgess on 43. And Tim Bresden on six. England are now 38 for two in reply to New Zealand's 378 all out. Joe Root on nine. Rory Burns is still there on 26. Elsewhere around the country. Let's have a look if we can get some of these in while he's having a long chat. Is uh, Matt Critchley with Billy Godwin not 171 for three against Essex and Worcestershire having been bowled out for 131. Durham in reply 49. 4-1, trailing by 82 as Critchley begins a new over with a full toss that's uh, driven out into the offside where it's fielded by Anos Dahl. Critchley in again. This one is slapped into the offside by Burgess, but straight to Anos Dahl once again. Rattling through his over as normal, Matt Chris. This one's a little flatter and almost beats the defences of Michael Burgess, pushes it out into the offside when Madsen comes around. Comes Critchley, and that's dragged short. It's pulled out into the leg side. It's gone for four runs. There's a manful attempt out there on the boundary by. Ben McDermott with the dive to try to stop the ball from going across the rope, but he couldn't get there. It wasn't a great delivery from Matt Critchley, in all honesty. And it was clubbed away for a boundary. He's in again now, and now, oh, almost gets Burgess with a quicker delivery. He goes back into his stumps. That's always dangerous with the leg spinner. He's in again, he's Critchley. This one is uh, almost a Yorker as he just gets his toe on the end, toe end, toe end of the bat on the ball. Does Michael Burgess and he picks up another single from the final delivery of the over. He moves on to 48, 201 for five. Tim Bresnan has six. The 200. up for Warwickshire with that boundary in the uh, 69th over. Full calculations from Clive to come. And then there's Dahl to begin a new over from the race course and he's in bowls. This one is slapped in the air but in between two fielders by Sam Hayne. There's a chase on here for Lewis Reese. They've run two. Reese will keep it in. They'll think about coming back for the third and they will. Lewis Reese saving a one run there with that chase. It wasn't too far away from either of the fielders. Michael Cohen at uh, mid wicket and uh, Lewis Reese is now limping. That's not good because he's just had rehabilitation on his knee and he is limping now. In goes Dahl again. Bowles, that one is uh, played along the floor by Bresnan into the mid wicket region where Michael Cohen does the fielding. Update for BBC Radio Derby coming up after the weather, which is uh, currently ongoing, as weather generally is. 204 for five. But just reached his half century as well.
They have Warwickshire have just gone past 200. They're 204 for five with Michael Burgess just going past a half century. 51 from 89 balls and five fours. In the early stages of the evening session here, they picked up three wickets this afternoon. Though Rob Yates and Matt Lamb for 37 and seven respectively, both going to Sam Connors. And Sam Hain caught by Wen Manson at second slip off the bowling of Lewis Rees. Uh, Lewis Rees, his sixth wicket of the season. He's just completed a very fine piece of fielding down below us and limped away, which is a bit of a concern because he's playing his first match back after a knee injury. Earlier on today, this morning, Will Rhodes and Peter Malam were both out inside the opening 25 minutes after Derbyshire won the toss and decided to bowl first. At the moment, in the attack, it's uh, Matt Critchley and Anuj Dahl as Warwickshire look to... Uh, they'll be looking for 300. Derbyshire will be looking for these last five wickets as quickly as possible. New ball avail available in 12 overs time. At Warwickshire, 205 for five. Couldn't put it better myself. Well, that was just a rambling mess. <laughs> <laughs> not, for the, not for the first time in my career. I'm just going to keep an eye on Lewis Reese because he was limping, but he seems to be all right at the moment as Dahl comes in and bowls to uh, Burgess. He pushes it out into the offside where it's fielded by uh, Ben Aitchison, who's in that uh, close-ish cover position that he quite often finds himself in. End of the over, 205 for five. Burgess, 51. Tim Bresden, seven. Yes, I didn't give those details because it completely passed me by. No apologies for that. Well, Burgess, uh, it's a second successive 50-plus score. He made 80 in the second innings against Knotts. Um, <clears throat> and he's actually passed 50 on three occasions this season, including when he got to 100, 101 against Worcestershire. Does that include this one? That includes this one, Thank yeah. very much. Let's check him. Critchley in, that's worked away by Bresnan out into the deep, and uh, he gets one, I think about a second, as Connor slightly misfeels, but there isn't a second there. Yeah, so that is his third 50-plus score, second in a successive innings. Even the ball that got into his 50, though, was aerial, wasn't it, between two fielders? <laughs> yeah, there's a there's forward to that and place it to the offside. He's talked about trying to get a uh, balance. He's, he's a naturally aggressive batter, but he's trying to balance that with that. But not you know, giving his wicket away too easily. That one's played out to the offside for no run. Been keeping wicket well as well this season. He's done well. It's a big, big act to follow in Tim Ambrose. Critchley. A bit of that's cut by uh, um, Burgess and well stopped at a backward point by Aitchison. Quite a big man for a wicketkeeper, isn't he? Yes, yeah. This one he cuts again and Aitchison <laughs> moves the other direction and another, okay, it's another fine stop. Yeah, he's a good fielder for a, for a six foot four predominantly. Quick bowler. He's a very good fielder, Mike. Uh, ben, uh, ben Hitches. And uh, he's almost gone to action again. That one's actually gone past him. In fact, gone all the way for four. The lovely cut shot. No chance of Aitchison to cut that one off. Lovely cut shot by Burgess, who moves on to 55. He's got Warwickshire going again. 210 for five. It's disappeared into the, uh, into the groundsman's area, which is all fenced off. He's finally emerged with it. I don't think anybody else touched it. I hope not. <laughs> he had to go and fetch it himself. Now, uh, poor, poor, <laughs> poor old Sam Connors is about 150 yards away from uh, the nearest hand sanitization point. So, Billy Taylor has got his own private supply and has applied it to Sam Connor's hands. That's a very decent of him. Otherwise, Connors would have had to have uh, done a 200 meter round trip just to sanitize his hands. He'd be uh, more than happy with that, I think. The young Derbyshire quick. Goes back down to long leg where he's been fielding to Anish Dahl, who's going to continue from the race course end. Sun shining brightly now, and most of that cloud that was hanging over us 
around lunchtime has burnt away completely. It's a glorious afternoon now. Just hope that uh, everyone's got enough shade as the first delivery from Anuj Dahl's new over goes past the off stump and through to Brooke Guest. I'm thinking specifically of those people on the uh, permanent temporary stand and in front of the players' pavilion to the left who are pretty much will be looking straight into the sun fairly shortly, which is never very pleasant. Mm. I know it's quite high at this time of year, but... Do you uh, a bit of protection? can be deceptive, can't it? Mm. Dahl is in again. Bresnan goes back into his crease and pushes it straight back to the bowler, who gives it to Aitchison to give it a bit of a polish. Ordinarily, the ball would be tossed to Dahl to polish it, but when he's bowling, he tosses it to somebody else. He's got the red mark on his stomach where he uh, polishes it. Lewis Reese does a lot, a lot of that work as well on the ball. Not quite sure what they can do with this ball now. It's in the 71st over. He's in, he's down, and that one is pushed by Bresnan up to Billy Godelman at mid-off. Godelman has a look at the ball, and he's decided he's not going to polish it. He's going to give it to Aitchison, who gets some sweat off the small of his back. How very unpleasant. <laughs> He's had a good old rub on the back of his right leg. For the record, the 200 came up in 408 balls. Break that down in a moment. I said at the time you'd have the uh, yep. you'd have the calculation. Well, he's done it. Left alone <laughs> outside the off stub by uh, Bresnan. Um, 408 balls. So the second 100, in which they lost two wickets, took 187 quicker than the first, which took 221. But they have slowed down with the fourth 50. Remember, the third 50 took just 74 balls, or the fourth 50 took 113. So they lost one wicket in that time. So sort of between 100 and 150 is where they really pressed on when um, Hain and Burgess were together. Dahl's in again. That's a full delivery, a one-handed drive Ooh. by Bresnan in the end. Took his bottom hand off the bat. And then he practices the same shot and does the same <laughs> thing, which is slightly bizarre. Not, not necessarily in the uh, coaching manual, that one, but if he feels comfortable, I mean, he's powerful enough to hit the ball with one hand. Perhaps it'll be in the Tim Bresnan coaching yeah, manual yeah. when he writes one. For that one at Christmas, everybody. He waits now as Dahl is in and he's beaten oh outside the <laughs> Just a defensive shot. Uh, played down the wrong line, I think. It goes through to Brooke Guest. It's the end of the over. There's always one ball and over that beats the bat, it seems. Well, that certainly seems to have been the way throughout the course of the day. 210 for five. Warwickshire, eight to Bresden, 55 to Burgess. So Warwickshire going just short of three and over at the moment. So. If they uh, last 110 overs, then 350 would be a possibility. They'll have to accelerate a bit, but it would be a possibility. In terms of getting bonus points, and they have struggled for batting points. They got three in rather bizarre fashion against Knots. It looked like they were going to miss out until Ollie Hyland Dolby, the Don Bradman of the uh, Warwickshire team, decided to hit the last two balls for, both for four to get them there just in the nick of time. Critchley comes in to bowl, and that's played uh, towards fine leg for no run, 2-10 to 5. How sluggish this is. Essex scored 412 for three, declared in 76 overs. <laughs> ah, OK. <laughs> all right, all right, Essex. Yeah. <laughs> uh, in comes Critchley to, uh, to bowl. Uh, that's played back. So there's no run. One of those ways. They always say you, you can never take the weather into account. They lost the whole of the first day, and then went... Ballistic on day two. <laughs> it's uh, worked out to the offside. Game for no run, 210 for five. Well, the likelihood is we'll pretty much get the full four days in terms of mm. the weather to uh, decide this game. So, no need for either side to hurry as uh, Burgess plays that one away for a single, just a wide mid off. Burgess onto 56. No, it'll run its natural course, won't it? This one you would have thought. Indeed. If it's a draw, as you said earlier, it would be a proper draw. Mm. Critchley tossing the ball from one hand to the other bowls. And that's pushed out into the slip area for no run. And while I'm more than happy to be here on Sunday, the, the prospect of a 21-year-old Fletcher Jr. keeping wicket for the third team, oh. he's normally a bowler. Very <laughs> enticing. 
That uh, one is whipped away by Breslin. It's a good stop. Uh, inevitably by Dahl in the covers. And he's not able to get a run, Breslin. Again, he likes to rehearse his shots, Tim Breslin. He's on eight. Burgess on 56. Warwickshire 211 for five after 72 overs. One run off that over. Yes, and Fletcher Jr. rather fancies, always fancied himself as a wicketkeeper, but again, at six foot four, I think he's probably far too tall. What, what age are we talking about? 21. 21. Okay. Yeah. Six foot four. It's too tall for him, and he's got a bad back anyway, <laughs> through all the various sports that he plays. But he didn't, he didn't, he's looking forward to that, and I must say. I think he's only doing it because they, they have no first team game on uh, on Saturday. Odd number of teams in the Bolton League this year uh -huh. as they dwindle away. Shame. One we'll move across, dear, oh dear. Billy Gotham has just thrown the ball to Andrews <laughs> Dahl. It's overshot him. Uh, it, w it won't count. No, as a four, say, because, four runs for that, please. Yeah, so the ball is <laughs> clearly dead at the moment, but it's gone all the way to the boundary. Uh, both Godleman and Dahl have seen the funny side of it. I'm not sure that Lewis Reese necessarily did. on his way in from the race course line, and that one is uppish into the offside off the bat of Michael Burgess but nowhere near a fielder so perfectly safe Paul is let the batsman go through for a single 400 at uh, 400 200 that's good grief a flashback to Chelmsford 212 <laughs> for five one slip for Dahl, that's uh, Wayne Madsen, of course it is, and that's driven straight down the ground. Glorious shot by Tim Bresnan. Beautifully played, just to the onside of the stumps at the bowler's end. And he moves into double figures. He's on 12, 216 for five. Yeah, really good shot. Lent into it and timed it nicely. So 37 now, that is, it's the fall of the fifth wicket. To be having some difficulty retrieving the ball here. He's got it. Billy Godelman's got it. Here is uh, spikes, spikes on the concrete yes. down below. You, they used to put the covers there, but they keep them to one side of the field now. Whichever, whichever side has got the, uh, the boundary rope in from the full distance. Quite a large playing area here. The Dahl is in again, defended by Bresden this time. Back to the bowler. England have got to 50 now, 50 for two. So Godleman's number one. Does a captain always wear number one here, or is that just Godleman's number? That's just Godleman's number. Okay. Yeah. Fancies himself as a goalkeeper, it's, perhaps. It's very Billy Godleman. Well, you know, he's not a footballer at all. Oh, he no, he doesn't. Never joins in the pre <laughs> pre match football, for which I applaud him. As this next one is left alone by Bresnan. Yeah, he's a very. I don't know. I, don't, I think he's a Liverpool fan. Uh, but yes, I don't think he's a. I don't think he's a huge football fan. Born down in London, of course. Started his career at Middlesex, moved on to Essex, and then up to Derbyshire. He took over as captain in 2016. He was the first cricketer I met here, because he'd not long been appointed captain. And the captain walked up to me with his right thumb in a plaster cast, <laughs> which wasn't promising. <laughs> Dial balls, and this one is pulled in front of square. That is it's a ferocious shot from Tim Bresnan out towards what people call Cow Corner, but that was a proper shot from Bresden onto it very quickly indeed to pull it in front of square, that far in front of square. He moves on to 16, 224, five. He's a powerful man, as we know. As I say, he has uh, contributed a couple of times with the bat this season for Warwickshire. Looking ominous at the moment. Leaning on his bat, and he lifts it up, waits for Dahl to come in and bowl to him, and just pushes this one into the onside. Mikey Cohen's in quickly to do the fielding. End of the over, nine from that one. Dahl naught for 38 from 12 overs. Warwickshire 220 for five. Bresden 16. Burgess 57. And, uh, so they're almost treading water a bit here. Derbyshire with uh, another seven overs until they can claim the new ball. 
Wayne Madsen and Billy Godelman chatting. I wonder if that's Madsen saying to Godelman, bring me on and I'll rattle through a couple at the uh, race course end. I wouldn't be surprised. It's the kind of thing that Derby should have done in the past. Quite a long chat. It might have it taken was. a bit of persuading. <laughs> Anyway, you've got the first weather interruption of the day at Taunton. Bad lights, I mean, play at Taunton. Well, they've it's got new powerful new lights as well. Yeah, it starts raining there. It's, just, it's there for, for the week. Uh, he comes down the pitch here, Burgess, to um, Critchley, who sticks a boot out and uh, stops it, deflects the ball away. But attacking intent from Burgess didn't quite come off. Attacking a big dip it out of the pitch there as well. Critchley's had to be careful. 220 for five. Comes in again, Critchley quicker ball, and it's punched out to the onside for one run to uh, Burgess. And we've already seen Bresner being tempted to go for an attacking, an attacking Critchley. We should see if he. Just have a sweep for which delivery, again. I think. The the second delivery of faces this over. Actually, well, he doesn't defend the first very solidly. Here we <laughs> go. Set himself up. Here we go. <laughs> Front of the pitch. Mid on, mid off, up still. So he, he tried try to go over the top and end up just short of mid on earlier. Oh, this one, he's, uh, mm. eh, he's, not, he's not predictable, you see. Tim Bresnan no. works it away to square leg for a single. He's under 17, 222 for five. I've always found it very difficult to read the Yorkshireman. <laughs> <laughs> I require no other thinking. Apart from in Yorkshire, great. Which is pretty much what they're thinking most of the time. <laughs> That's what is played out to the offside by uh, Burgess. I'm keeping out of this. 222 for five. Well, I worked in Leeds for a while as well. Yeah. So. Well, I, did, I did Yorkshire for two years. Yeah. I won the championship. They hadn't won it since the Stone Age. They won it when I was commentating. That one is uh, it was an appeal there for LBW. He maybe hit the pad first, presumably. It was a long way down, Burgess. So it would have been a brave umpire to have given it out. But uh, not out is the call. 222 for five. I think uh, Matt Critchley is just saying to Billy Taylor, well, you've got to ask. I mean, you've got to ask. He's got his arms outstretched with his palms facing upward. He might have gone to DRS, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, and Alex Hughes is going to come on. So that conversation with Wayne Madsen wasn't bring me on, it was bring Alex Hughes on. Let him bowl with the uh, that rag of a ball <laughs> that they're currently working on furiously, but to little effect. Did bowl this morning, Alex Hughes. Didn't bowl in the afternoon session. This is only his second. He'll do that... Uh, like the one out the back of the hand, which goes straight up in the air, but he's, he's not doing that, the Oz. And he'll be bowling to Tim Bresden. He will quite fancy the medium pacer as well, I reckon. Guest standing up to the stumps as uh, <laughs> Bresden is beaten. Is he caught? He is. That's a brilliant catch by Wayne Manton. It might even have flicked up off Brooke Guest as well. And Alex Hughes has his first wicket of the season in first class cricket. It was just a tentative prod, really as much as anything by Bresden, and it went through to the left of first slip. That's where Wayne Madsen took it. Good catch, his third of the innings, and Warwickshire at 222 for six. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it did come off the wicketkeeper first. That's a really good take. And uh, an important one, because he felt he could have done some damage there, Bresden. But not able to do too much out for 17. Oh, clearly, Wayne Madsen knows what he's talking about. Well, absolutely, absolutely. Um, and 222 for six. That's the work for Warwickshire to do to get to uh, 300. That's what they're looking for. We've got 22 overs left in the day, including this one. And it's a third time this innings that a wicket's gone down the first ball of the over. Oh. Uh, 222 as well if you want to get all superstitious yes. nonsense on us um, <laughs> double Nelson strikes although single Nelson singularly failed to strike <laughs> but yeah a first wicket of the season for Alex Hughes that'll, uh, that'll cheer him up not that he needs cheering up he's a fairly cheery character despite his demeanour 
uh, one of my favourite cricketers, Alex Hughes. I, love, I always feel a bit awkward about having favourites, but <laughs> he is such a such a top man. And he's had a, a very difficult season. Well, he's one for six off 25 balls so far today, so he's doing well. He's got himself a bowling average. He's 78, but he's got himself a bowling average <laughs> with that wicket. He was... Uh, he was very good, good enough to speak to us at the close of play on day one at Chelmsford when there hadn't been any play and it was the first time he'd been named in a starting eleven. Uh, I was asked him how frustrating it was. He said, oh, it, was, it wasn't too bad. But, you know, I had a chat with a few people I hadn't seen for a long time <laughs> and he gave a really good interview, as he always does. So the new batsman... Is, don't tell me, Danny Briggs. Yes, uh, again, he's another player. Uh, he shared in that sentry stand with uh, Burgess. Crucial against Knotts. Briggs defended the first delivery of, that he's faced out into the offside. Anuj Dahl, he's here, he's there. Does the fielding. Polishes the ball for Alex Hughes, who looks at it and thinks, I've got bother. Puts it very carefully in his right hand. He's on his way in now. Briggs leaves alone outside the Austin, taken by Guest. Not to see which part of it just came off his gloves or nicked his arm on the way through to Madsen. It was. Uh, we'll get a chance to see a replay, of course, with it being a, wick, a wicket, won't we? So uh, I'll have a look out for that. I'll be able to wind it back and see if I can see it. It there is this next delivery from Hughes is driven, but Hughes goes down to his left hand side, gets a, a finger on it, prevents it from going anywhere. Let's have a look. Hughes came in and bowled, it uh, just moved a little bit. Oh, yeah, taken a huge deflection off the uh, off the keeper, off his right elbow, I fancy, or the right glove, but certainly the right hand side of him. And Wayne Madsen had to adjust very quickly to move to his left hand side and take the catch. Good catch. By Madsen, the solitary slip. He's there again now. As this wolf was left alone by Danny Briggs. It's a decent leave. Good hello. This if he's bring, been brought on just to sort of see off the old ball. He's doing it rather well. Certainly can't imagine he's going to take the new ball, Alex Hughes. That would be a turn up. With each wicket, he knows his uh, his first class average will be plummeting. Is it in again, and this one is defended by Briggs up to Lewis Reese, and it's a wicket maiden for Alex Hughes. He gets the applause of the crowd and a pat on the back from uh, Wayne Madsen. A low five from Ben Aitchison. A successful over for Derbyshire, 222 for six. Warwickshire. A terrific catch in this game from Wayne Madsen. Three catches for him. We said, what, he was fourth at the start of this out in the country. We, he'd be right up there now. Yeah. Let's see if I can find it this time. See if they have added them on. It was 14 when I looked this morning. Yeah. I think he'd taken one by then. Critchley comes in the ball, gives him oh, a full toss. He gets away with that. And uh, Burgess just hits it on the ground and mid long arm for a single. I didn't quite get that one right, Critchley. 2-2-3 two, two, for 6. Burgess moving easily on to 59. Now on 14. OK. Two, be two behind. I Carl thought he was on 14 when I looked. Or oh, was he on... Oh, maybe he was on 12 when I looked earlier. Yeah, yeah, no, I think, yeah, yeah, I think yeah. They, are, they are updated, aren't they? Yeah. Colin Cabell's still on 16, is he? Yeah. That one's a four defensive. I don't think they're playing, actually, are we, this round? So. Um, no oh, run there. No, indeed. 2-2-3 two, two, for six. Yeah, Hayne 14, Madsen 14. Yeah. Well, Sam will take four or five on the Derbyshire innings. Oh, no. So, yeah, I'm sure. Oh, no. <laughs> Give that one a bit of air. It's uh, played into the offside. Very really well stopped. Again by Dahl. 2-2-3 two, two, for six. So the game at up. Blackpool, Ricky Clark created a new record for the number of catches in the innings by the last catch as that goes 
was passed about down to the ground. He felt if the ball had gone to long on, he just sprinted there, pushed the field out of the <laughs> way and taken the catch. <laughs> two, two, 223 for six, Warwickshire. Briggs yet to score. And, uh, Critchley bowls to him. And Briggs plays expansively, but straight to Dahl. <laughs> Feels it well, but that makes the wicketkeeper work a bit as he throws it in hard. I guess it takes it by the stumps. Oh, my God. Oh, just about a moment. Um, Critchley in, and uh, it doesn't uh, quite time that. Briggs straight back to us. And the maiden, so Warwickshire getting a bit tied down. Um... Oh, actually, they got a single over, didn't they? De Burgess is on 59. But 223 for six, 75 overs ball, 20 left in the day. And we are, what, uh, four overs away from the potential new ball. Took three catches in the first innings against Warwickshire at Edgebaston back in April as well, Wayne Madsen. The most in an innings this season with Liam Dawson, who took four for Hampshire against Leicestershire over that same weekend. Madsen now has three in this innings. So uh, he's closing in on the most catches in an innings for the season, such as it is that is a record of any kind. England 54 for two. Next delivery is pushed up to uh, mid off for the first delivery of a new Alex Hughes over. Driven out to Billy Goldman at mid-off. Two men out in the leg side in the deep. So, uh, Sam Connors has started to do some stretches with the new ball just uh, four overs away. Hughes is in to get bowls, and that one is guided down to uh, backward point by Burgess. From Hughes is a full length delivery that's driven by uh, Burgess to Billy Godelman. Sam Connors, the hero with the ball so far today, with four for 31. Wicket for Lewis Reese as well, and Alex Hughes. Hughes runs away from us at the race course and bowls a full toss that he feels with the inside of his left boot but it can't prevent the batsman from getting through for another single 224 for six. Burgess moves on to 60. Danny Briggs, yet to get off the mark, having faced 10 deliveries, is on strike now. Sun has disappeared for the time being. Hughes is in, that one is defended, back to him by Briggs. One more ball left of the over. And then three to go. Yeah, good contest this one, Heidi. Uh, Warwickshire 224 for six now. They've just lost a wicket to Alex Hughes. It's his first wicket of the season. He managed to uh, get uh, a Tim Bresnan caught by Wayne Madsen at first slip off the glove or forearm of wicketkeeper Brooke Guest. It's the third catch of the match for Wayne Madsen as well. Michael Burgess is still going strong, though. He's on 60. Danny Briggs yet to get off the mark. And uh, uh, Warwickshire, who were asked about first this morning at 224 for six. End of the over. Big shout for leg before wicket. Critchley to continue from the city end. Just wants Mikey Cohen in a little bit at deep backward square leg. There's a man out on the mid wicket boundary as well, and there's a long on as the ball is pushed by Burgess into the offside. Guess who's there to prevent the single from being taken? It's Anuj Dahl, everybody. Terrific piece of fielding again. He is fantastic in the field, Dahl. To see the stat on saved runs as Critchley's in again. That one's pushed back to him by Burgess. 
there's no run. I'm in out of this room like a cuckoo at 12 o'clock. I'm thinking of the steps, guy. Think of the steps. <laughs> That's a flatter delivery, and Burgess pushes it up to Alex Hughes at mid on. It's more mid wicket, really, than mid on. There's a long on, and then Alex Hughes is covering the, uh, the ball close in on the leg side, really. But it's Reese down there in the distance as this one is defended back to Critchley. Rattling through another over. The new ball just two overs away after this one. Sam Connors has already started limbering up, salivating at the prospect as this next delivery is pushed into the onside by Burgess. Again, it's Hughes who does the fielding. At the moment, there's only Critchley, uh, Burgess, and either Hughes or Dahl involved in this game. As Critchley is in again, this one is pushed into the offside. And this time, it's Sam Connors who comes in to do the fielding. Single taken. Burgess keeps the strike, moves on to 61, same as the number on the back of his shirt. Briggs yet to get off the mark, having faced 12 deliveries on Warwickshire 225 for six. Yes, it's always a lot harder for Michael Burgess to reach that landmark than it is for Tim Bresnan. To get his shirt number on the scoreboard. <laughs> yeah, I think I'd be wearing three, just, <laughs> just to be on the safe side. Yes. <laughs> A couple of 99s over the years. Um, I've got no chance. <laughs> Alex Hughes took into your wheezy eagerly. He wants to get in. He wastes any time. Not to come in the boulder. Burgess wants to slip in place. Burgess punches that down the ground straight to Billy Goldman at mid off. But there's time for Burgess to jog through for one. Dealing mainly in singles at the moment, Burgess. But an important innings from him. He's now on 62. comes Hughes to Briggs and leaves that. Oh, he's a wicket keeper. Wicket keeper standing up. Are they able to really parry that? But uh, did he have to stop it? Tom going very well against Worcestershire, and they're, they're very strong contenders in this group. So that maybe adds to the pressure to the others. Dunham 71 for one, applying to Worcestershire's 131. Looks pretty even at Chelmsford at the moment. I would say at Chelmsford, 180 for five might not be a bad score, is what knots are on at the moment. That's played back to uh, the bowler for no run. 226 for five, eight, for uh, six rather. I well, didn't turn off the straight when uh, Derbyshire were down there, but Simon Harmer still managed to pick up yes. nine wickets. He yeah. never turned. Why well, don't think he turned one? <laughs> Talk about getting wickets on reputation. Yeah. Uh, Hughes comes into bowl, and that's whipped away to the offside. I think that and the fact that they'd never seen him bowl either. The mm. only time they'd ever faced him was at Edgebaston in the, in the T20 finals day in the semi-final with a white ball. So uh, well, the Derbyshire players were going in blind, effectively. Hughes to Briggs. will be the spinner that Derbyshire will deal with later. But Briggs has uh, played that to the sweeper on the offside. So Briggs is off the mark. 227 for six. Engine backfire somewhere. Off he goes. It's huge. Balls. Quickish boards pushed out to point for no run. So Hughes keeping it tight. Single to Burgess and Briggs out over. Burgess 62, Briggs 1. 227 for 6. I couldn't help but notice on the on the scores, I've actually gone low enough to spot these. Uh, <laughs> it's the Dakar Premier Division T20 yes, Cricket League. Have you seen the names of the yeah, teams? Yeah, some great names. Uh, there. The legends of Rup Gunge have rather over their uh, title because they've been thrashed <laughs> by eight wickets by the Brothers Union. Oh, it sounds like a... You know, fantasy film, isn't it? The legends of. I do like the oh. idea of the Partex Sporting Club. That's presumably where you take your dumbbells <laughs> when you finish with them. <laughs> I imagine. Anyway, check them out online if you want to. This next over begins from Mark Critchley from the City, and I rather fancy it'll be his last over of the day. The old Doe's Sports Club sounds like where Homer Simpson might end up. <laughs> 
Absolutely brilliant. 227 6 here. Playing old Warwickshire against playing old Derbyshire. That one is pushed into the offside by Briggs. Who's got one? Burgess on 62. It's Matt Critchley's 18th over of the day, which has rather sneaked up on me. He didn't appear to be bowling very much at all. Now all of a sudden he's bowled quite a lot. Tosses himself a catch and into Briggs, who goes very watchfully forward and pushes it again out into the offside, fielded by the keeper coming round from behind the stumps. Of course, Yorkshire are playing today, but Cola Cabor hasn't got a catch yet. They're in the field against Sussex, 194 for five. Let's keep it that way. That's yeah. right. Driven by Briggs up to mid off where Billy Godman does the fielding. Is there a prize for top catch, like the golden boot, the golden, I don't know, golden glove or something? It should be, shouldn't there? It should be. It'd have to be a golden hand. Yes. Yeah, I think there should be. Perhaps a golden hand sanitizer. Yes. Critchley bowls the three crows fly right across in front of us. The ball is defended back to the bowler by Briggs. Very short, it'll be new ball time. A couple of deliveries left. He's in again. Bowls, and that one is turned into the leg side by Briggs, and he's going to pick up another single to double his total. 228 for six, and that was in fact the last over, so that was the end of Matt Critchley, I fancy, for the day. Probably the end of Alex Hughes as well, who's called for his cap. And a man removing his cap rather purposefully has got four wickets already. Four for 31, Sam Connors in a couple of spells immediately at the start of play and then immediately after uh, the lunch interval. And he's going to come on now with the new ball, which is being shown to uh, the crowd and anybody else who's interested in it by umpire Nigel Long. And it will be Sam Connors who gets first use of it. Glad he's second first ball. I, I can't get my head around this nonsense of bowling a couple of balls with the old ball and then no. taking it. You've waited all this time. Yes. Might as well use it. So uh, anyway, Connors is bowled really well. He's not going to get all uh, all ten after all, because uh, a couple of wickets have fallen since he took the first four. We could still get career best. I think I've got one today. <laughs> yeah, well yeah. Do you want to take this over? No, no. Well, uh, no. <laughs> yeah, go on. Yeah, go on. Go on. You yeah, take I'll it. take this over. Yeah, go on then. And then uh, whoever takes the new ball at the far end can mop up the tail. <laughs> I'm sorry, Sam, it's all my fault. Here is Connors then with the new ball in hand. Three slips in place as well. Bowling to Danny Briggs, who yeah. gets an edge on that immediately with a very tentative push forward. Bat quite a long way from his body. Bounced into the ground and uh, was quite a long way short of Matt Critchley at third slip, who did well to prevent it from going down a third man. But straight away, edge of the bat taken. So uh, that'll encourage young Sam Connors. His first five for earlier this season. They'll be very keen to get another one here today. He's in. The bowls to Briggs. It goes back into his crease and immediately says no by holding his bat up as Billy Godelman comes in to do the fielding. It's easy to forget Yorkshire are playing, though, when you have <laughs> no interest in them at all. <laughs> yeah. Durham, 72, oh dear, oh dear. I do feel for uh, Dan Wheeler. He's got four days up there. <laughs> Bless him. Connors in fairly smooth run-up, then quite a quick arm as... Uh, Briggs pushes this to Dahl at point. Yeah, five for 83, his career best. He's currently on four for 31. Only has 30 first class wickets in total. Sam Connors is making his way in the game, the 21 year old. He's 12th over, a couple of six over bursts from him earlier in the day. In and bowls to Briggs in full delivery that he manages to get the bat down on and keep out. So a very gentle start, really, apart from that first delivery, which clearly took the edge but went straight into the ground. With this new ball. What do they say? Dark red, the darker the red, the better the ball. I think. They say something anyway. <laughs> 228 for six. 
and I could remember what it was. At least they are attacking with three slips, which is good to see. Connors is in again, and that one is uh, clipped into the leg side. Lewis Reese will get down with a tumbling stop to uh, ensure that they only go for a single. He gets a little bit of an applause there from Ben McDermott, who's fielding at mid-wicket. And uh, Danny Briggs moves on to three. Warwickshire 2 2 9 for six. Been a really good day's cricket so far. Pretty even. Yeah. And it just depends on the last four Warwickshire wickets can get the, uh, the 71 more runs to get them up to that 300, which is always a decent benchmark, isn't it, in a four day game? You can get up to 300 and give yourselves a real good chance. As, uh, this one is an expansive looking drive from Burgess. Ball goes off at an inside edge, straight back to Sam Connors. So me so swapping ends with me has worked an absolute <laughs> treat for Warwickshire. One run off the over 229 for six. So 14 overs left in the day. In terms of bonus points, you've got 29 overs left. So you would think Warwickshire would certainly get to 300 if they are still around. Um, by 110 overs, they might struggle to get anything more than that. Probably won't be at the top of their thoughts at the moment. The top of their thoughts will be getting as competitive a first innings total as they can. Back by yeah, so it's uh, the new ball attack that we saw at the start of the day. Ball very well. In tandem. This is always the test, though, isn't it? When you come back in the evening session, you've been out in the field all day and, you know, possibly stiffened up a bit and all the rest of it. So I'm interested to see how Mikey Cohen goes here. He's bowled, I think he's bowled well today. <laughs> yes, I do too. And, uh, lucky not to get wickets. The uh, wicket takers have been... Uh, Connors is now four for 32, Reese one for 15, and Hughes just one for just nine in seven overs. Seven bowlers used in all. Michael Cohen's 11 overs have cost 27 runs. He's bowling to Danny Briggs. Two slips there. They're really quite close at mid wicket. And Briggs opens the face of the bat, doesn't quite manage to beat backward point. And it remains 229 for five. He clearly enjoys his fielding, Dahl. Even when he yeah. could just sort of jog to the ball and lob it gently back, he doesn't, does he? He still attacks the ball and throws it in hard. No, he's <clears> a, <throat> it's a huge part of his game. It's the part of his game that gets him into the T20 side in the first place, generally. I mean, he played in the campaign in 2019 when they got to finals day for the first time. But look at him impress uh, Dominic Cork again. This one wraps on the thigh pad Briggs as he tries to work it on the leg side. Who's and ours? But no cigars. 2.29 for six. And Corky back for uh, a T20 coach again this season. See, okay. He'll be casting an eye over all the, uh, the various permutations as we speak, I'm sure. Can't be listening today because he doesn't let me know. Yeah, Warwickshire or the Bears will be keen to impress in T20 after underachieving a bit in the last couple of years in the uh, competition. As, uh, Briggs drives that. That's a good shot. It's gone straight down the ground. The only thing that was going to stop that was his batting partner, but Michael Burgess managed to jump out of the way and the ball went through for four runs and Briggs is on to seven. 2.33 for six. They um, T20 entered in real disappointment last year they looked as if they were going to qualify and they had the game against them we? Which everyone just thought that's it they've won this match and an astonishing turnaround saw them lose the game and it probably did sadly cost Jim Trout and his job as uh, head coach that's left there's no run I mean not just that but obviously that was the perhaps the Straw that broke the camel's back that made them decide they needed a, a change. Very tough on Jim, but that's a little cruel to lose your job in, in 2020 of well, all years yeah. when, when it was a, a really strange well, old that's season, right. wasn't and, it, as well? Uh, they didn't win a match in the Bob with his trophy, but again, there were, there were mitigating circumstances in that as well, so yeah, it was. But anyway, they got Mark Robinson in place now. 
formerly the enemy, really, of Warwickshire, now, now their coach, when he, he and Ashley Giles were on opposite sides. They had a few frank discussions. That one is left outside off stump. There's no run. 2.33 for six. Nothing wrong with a good, healthy debate. No, and it was respectful, I think, but uh, there was one particular occasion where we were, I think we were at a festival ground. There was a big argument about use of nets, which was quite entertaining. Yeah, I don't mind that. <clears throat> And again, trying to make this new ball count for something for Derbyshire. And he nearly does there as Briggs drives and misses. And the ball goes past the outside edge and to the wicket keeper. It's the end of the over. One glorious shot and that over from Briggs onto seven. But played a miss at the last one. 233 for six after 82 overs. Yeah, I'm not sure what, uh, what Mikey Cohen's got to do to get a wicket, really. It was uh, as close as anything. And... Uh, Brooke Guest is uh, going across to him, putting his arm around his shoulders and presumably saying exactly the same thing. Nice touch. Telling him to keep going. It will come. And it just looks like it'll come at any minute, but it, it hasn't yet. Sam Connors is going to continue, though, from the race course end. 12 overs, three maidens, four for 32, his figures. daughters just booked their vaccine <laughs> here's Sam Connors in a ball that struck the pad but it might have been a little inside edge from Burgess that saved him there there was a, a half an appeal mm. getting younger and younger these vaccinated people these days yeah. have you noticed it's like a policeman isn't it <laughs> younger and younger Connors turns at the top of his mark. Past umpire long and balls to Burgess, who pushes this out to Billy Godman, who's relatively close at mid-off. He's uh, having a conversation with Danny Briggs there. Well, it's just Twitter feed just posted a picture of a, a Warwickshire flag being put up somewhere on the ground. I haven't oh. seen that somewhere by a spectator. Because, of course, away fans were, have been able to come, but yeah. they've been able to buy tickets on general sale. Let's have a word with them. <laughs> Spurs, uh, Connors is in, and that's uh, off an inside edge down to long leg. That's not where he intended that ball to go. Michael Burgess, he moves to 63, 234 for six. I noticed that uh, Connor Marshall was on again. I think it was uh, he's off now, but Lewis Rees had nipped off for a moment. He seems to be walking quite freely now. When he bowls his first ball, as he inevitably will at some point before the close of play, he'll pull up sharply. That's my prediction. He'll look in all sorts of trouble and then carry on. Connors is in, and that one is uh, when he reaches for that one, does Briggs manages to push it out into the offside where Billy Godelman does the fielding and single. He's taken Briggs as eight two thirty five for six. That is Lewis Reese. Nothing wrong with his uh, voice or his clapping. They don't have a prolonged clapper out there, though, Derbyshire, <laughs> which is good news. There's nothing worse than the prolonged <laughs> clapper. They seem to share it around the team, don't they? Burgess waits and go oh, another inside <laughs> edge from uh, Burgess picks up another single down to long leg. His last two runs have come in exactly the same fashion. He's still there. He's on 64, 236 for six. Good use of the inside edge of his bat. <laughs> yeah, well, he's paid for it. Yeah. Might as well use it. It's just, his bat is a little bit away from his body, mm. which is just letting him down a bit. Briggs has got eight to his name. He's on strike now as Connors bowls two and it's pushed up to Billy Godelman. The umpire says that will do for this over. End of it.
three runs from it, two inside edges from Michael Burgess, who's on 64, and Danny Briggs picked up the other one, he's on eight. Warwickshire 236 for six with 13 hours to go in the day. Well, the new ball is um, has not produced wickets. It's not, as it sometimes does, producing a whole lot of runs either. The game's going through a fairly slow phase. Cohen continue to persevere. Still with two slips in that shortish mid wicket. Do have a third man, which will please those that always chunter every time the ball goes down to third man for runs. Cohen then to bowl to Michael Burgess. Pushes that out to mid off. There's no run. It's almost as if he's reined himself in slightly. I actually suggested when he got his centre, I suggested to Michael Bush as he'd done that. He, he sort of denied it, but I got the impression then that once he got to sort of 60 yard, he's something right. Okay, I want to make this a really big one. And just reined himself in for a while. It feels like he's done that a bit here. Yeah, I'd say so. Comes in. Now just coming. Left arm over and Burgess pushes that out to mid off. I think his aim is back more towards mid arm with a bit of a an edge out to Godelman at mid off. A pleasant evening. Yes. Nice day for cricket. That just that strange weather briefly in the morning, didn't uh, we? Uh, not very hazy and quite dark. No actual interruptions. I could actually doze off now, so uh, <laughs> do be careful. <laughs> and uh, next one, he uh, defends to mid-off. Does Burgess. Again, good accurate bowling from Cohen. But maybe second time around, the new ball not doing quite as much as it did on the fresh new pitch this morning. So it's quite green. There have been some thoughts in the dressing room about oh, here we go when they were 16 for two this morning, but that third wicket partnership has pulled them round. And the next one is play to mid off. They've not looked in total control at any point, but they have looked to be steadily getting themselves towards a total. Sam Haynes, 77, the main contribution. Now Michael Burgess, 64, not out. Rob Yates, 37. Um, but you say they can't give it away now because, you know, 250, well, that's probably below par, isn't yeah. it, you would say? Yes, so, absolutely. Uh, we have to be relatively watchful. Only one of the playing double figures. It's Tim Preston, who made 17. Last man out, Burgess again, plays that to mid-off. Oh, that bounces awkwardly in front of Godelman. But, uh, did the right thing, got his body behind the ball, so it hit him rather than went past him. Just it down to Alex Hughes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Followed it away. Yeah, he's just feeling to the uh, to the right as we look of, uh, of an old pitch, so it would have bounced up out of one of the footmarks, presumably. But, yeah, it was fairly unpleasant for a moment, I'm sure... Uh, he did worry. Cohen to Burgess. Burgess down on one knee. Tries to drive that away. Has a look at the bottom of his bat. The ball rolls fairly apologetically to mid-off. So good tight over from Cohen. 236 for six. Michael Burgess, 64. Danny Briggs, eight. Listening to live cricket from the Incora County Ground in Derby on uh, BBC... Uh, WM and CWR, and as I pointed out in the first game, BBC DERBY. I just <laughs> felt slightly left out that there was a number of initials, the same number of letters in, in both. Clive Eakin with us in Derby for this one. Sam Connors begins a new over from the race course, and it's pushed out into the offside 
And as Dahl does the fielding and hurls it at 100 miles an hour at Brooke Guest. There was no run. We'll have a five. Well, it's not really 5.30. It's a more, of a, more of a Thank five. you for reminding me. Well, that's, I'm not, I, I would, would be lying if, if I said I didn't entirely mean that. Uh, yeah, it's sort of 5.35 in the sports desk kind of update coming up shortly for BBC Radio Derby. Clive has dashed next door as Connors is in and bowls to uh, Briggs, who turns this down towards long leg. Uh, Mikey Cohen gets around quickly from finally to do the filling, keeps him down to a single. Briggs moves on to nine, 237, four, six. So three catches today for Wayne Madsen, a first wicket of the season for Alex Hughes, a sixth wicket of the season for Lewis Rees, four wickets for Sam Connors. Wayne Madsen in the top of the most catches for the season charts. I suppose the Americans would call it the most catchingest. Burgess Wade's Connors in, and this one is clubbed for four runs out to Cow Corner, effectively. Got onto that really quickly and just smashed it away. That's a very powerful looking shot from Burgess who moves to 68, 241 for six. Derbyshire with two bonus points currently. Warwickshire moved within nine runs of a second bonus point. Billy Godwin has a chat with Sam Connors. That was Jesse Ware. Uh, I think I played that last night. Connors is in again. Three slips in place and he bowls now. And that one is uh, guided very comfortably indeed down towards a wide third man. That's Alex Hughes down there in the distance, I think, who does the field. He's the turn around. No, it is. It's Alex Hughes. Of course it is. He was... Uh, not necessarily in a foot race with Anush Dahl, but Dahl was closing in on him. Personal pride meant that Hughes got there first. 242 for five, Burgess to 69. Seven fours, 131 balls. He's faced Riggs 37 balls for his nine. He's on strike now as Connors is in, and that one is an effort ball. You can hear the grunt from Sam Connors through the effects microphone, but unfortunately didn't get the uh, direction. Quite right. The wind's just starting to drop a little bit now. The sun has disappeared for the time being, but still a perfectly pleasant evening. Connors. He's in now on bowls. That one is guided. Down to third man by Danny Briggs for another single. He moves into double figures. He's on 10. Burgess on 69. End of the oven. They're going to have a hand sanitization break. Elsewhere, while we go through the weather on BBC Radio Derby, England are 77 for two, trailing New Zealand by 301. Sussex 204 for five against Yorkshire at Headingley. Durham 81 for one, trailing Worcestershire by 50 up at, uh, oh no, down at New Road. Nottinghamshire are 196 for six now against Essex at Chelmsford. Northamptonshire 318 for four in 85 overs against Kent at Canterbury. Glamorgan 75 for three, trailing uh, York, uh, Lancashire rather by 98 in Cardiff. Somerset 284 for seven against Hampshire at Taunton and Leicestershire 311 for four against Gloucestershire at Grace Road. Still waiting for my Clive. You can see, I oh know we're not going to see a change in the bowling. Mikey Cohen's going to continue from the city end. Update in a matter of seconds. Four minutes as Cohen from the city end is in to bowl to Briggs, who turns it into the leg side. And that might go all the way to the boundary for four runs. You know it does. 
247 for six. Yeah. Warwickshire, 247 for six. Danny Briggs has just moved on to 14 with a neat turn off his hips for four out to the square leg boundary. Michael Burgess is 69 not out. And these two are going really nicely. 25 runs uh, after the loss of the only wicket since T. Tim Bresden was caught by Wayne Madsen. His third catch of the match at first slip via the uh, arm of Brooke Guest, the wicketkeeper, off the bowling of Alex Hughes, and it was his first wicket of the season. Earlier on today, Lewis Rees managed to pick up Sam Hayne. He was dismissed for 77, another of Wayne Madsen's catches. And prior to that, it was four wickets for Sam Connors, Will Rhodes and Peter Milan in the morning for eight and naught, respectively, then Rob Yates and Matt Lamb in the afternoon. Yates making 37, Lamb making seven. The new ball is uh, was taken as soon as it became available, Derbyshire, hopeful, or you would have thought, of polishing off the uh, Warwickshire tail, but there's going to be some defiance from Burgess in particular. He's on 69, Briggs on 14, and uh, uh, Warwickshire are 247 for six. Nonsense. Absolute nonsense. Top ball from Cohen, and the next delivery is, uh, oh, a misfield from Anush Dahl. He moved to his left, bent down to pick the ball up, and it had gone through his hands. And I don't think he can quite believe it. I certainly can't. Two more to Briggs. He moves on to 18. The 250's up. 251. No, it's not. The scoreboard's been there. <laughs> That's an unbelievable bit of scoreboard work from John Brown in the, in the box next door. They've moved to 249 <coughs> for six. Outrageous. Yeah. That was a, a, a very accurate summary, but you say, what's your, what's your no, tail? No, You've not seen you know, Liam Noble and Ollie Allen Dolby? As soon as I said it, I knew there'd be <laughs> objections up and down the country. Is Cohen in again, and that's a short delivery. He just crouches down, really, Briggs, and allows it to pass over his back. Yeah, that's the, always the problem with those, isn't it? Because uh, with those updates, because he's sort of doing it from one side's perspective without oh, really course. seeing an awful lot of the opposition. No, I think uh, <laughs> slightly on yeah, Norwell and uh, yeah, Dolby. He, he has got a first-class entry, Norwell, but journalists who witnessed it for Gloucestershire says they still don't quite know how he got it. But <laughs> well, it was against Derbyshire. Was it against Derbyshire? No, um, was it against Derbyshire? I'm pretty, sure it? It, I'm pretty okay. sure it was down at Bristol as a night watchman. Uh, Cohen is in, and that one's, thanks for remi reminding everybody. That's turned into the <laughs> lake side, but I'm trying to be positive today. <laughs> turned into the lake side by Briggs and fielded by Matt Critchley. Yes, it was down at Bristol, uh, and it was Cornish pasty week, which was even better because he is a Cornishman, of course, Lynn Norwell. And um, yeah, he got centuries of night watch when I'm sure against Derbyshire. Happy days. Seems like a, a decent young man. And, uh, and we all got at least two Cornish pasties each. So, uh, well, that's all right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we couldn't partake in the Cornish. When's Cornish pasty week? It must make it out of that. I think in Cornwall it's most weeks. <laughs> but in <laughs> Bristol, I can't remember. <laughs> 249 for six. Cohen in to bowl to Briggs. He pushes this one out into the offside where it's uh, fielded by uh, Billy Goldman. And there is no run to end the over. Six runs from it. The boundary from the first ball. Burgess 69. Briggs 16. And the tractor is that's the big mower. They're getting a bit ahead of themselves here, the ground staff. Because we still have ten overs to go today. But my 620 slot looks pretty decent. Ben Brown scored a century for Sussex against Yorkshire. 208 for five. Century stand with the former Warwickshire player Aaron Thomason. Essex have got a sixth knots wicket. We've just gone through the scores, haven't we? 190 for six. All that on the BBC Cricket County Championship page. Oh, how have I ended up with this end again? <laughs> We need wickets, Clive. Come on. <laughs> Let's play the Shake square yourself. leg uh, for a single. Connor's the bowler. That's the 250 up. I wanted to give you the 250. That's um, what it was. <laughs> so, calculator at the ready. I'll work this out in a minute. No, I think it's a quirk of fate. But you're destined to commentate <laughs> from the uh, from the race course end in this match. It is bizarre how these things turn out, but Sam Connors needs all the help he can get to push him on to five. We've got four. Yeah. 
in he comes to ball and that's pushed out to the onside for no run by Briggs 250 for six going in 519 balls this new ball doesn't seem to have been misbehaving as much as the, the first no. one did if, if indeed it was misbehaving or it was just better bowling but there hasn't been as much in it for the bowlers this time round so far isn't to add yeah, 650 and 111 balls, so not lightning quick by any means. Connor's in to ball. That's gone past the outside edge of Briggs playing forward to that. I knew it wouldn't be long before you started to weave your magic. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's gone as weaving the magic. Took the first four wickets of the innings. Could have had more. Danny Briggs is the only player I think has got his name on one of the advertising hoardings I just noticed. Uh, to the club bookshop. Well, there isn't a player called East Midlands Demolition, is there? In comes, <laughs> in comes Collis at the last edge, but edge down. Soft hands from uh, Briggs. It's well stopped at third slip. No run. You've got me reading all the adverts, so, know, yeah, yes. so that's a good effort. <laughs> that's a clever ruse. No, I think you're right. I think that's the only one. Because turns away from us. And, uh, bowls, and that's a. Uh, Pushed out to the onside. A dot ball. Nine overs to go after this one, so they've, uh, with the help of Critchley bowling a lot of overs, they got through them nice and quickly, Derbyshire, and we won't be doing too much overtime. Turns again, we're in number 59. Balls, and now oh, he hung his bat out to dry there a little bit. Briggs nudging forward to that one, it's whistled past him. And goes to the wicket keeper. So, again, he's beaten the bat a couple of times there, Connors, but not found the edge. Warwick should survive the over 250 for six. He gets a pat on the back from Billy Godwin for his troubles there. Uh, Sam Connors, who in combination with Clive Eakin produced <laughs> quite a decent over there. We'll stick to this. We'll stick to this end and that end. Mikey Cohen's going to continue He's drying his left hand on the grass. One or two people leaving the uh, permanent temporary stand at the far end. Buses to catch. Tea to eat. Do you commute every day? I'm. I've booked myself in for tomorrow night just to break it up. Yeah. So the rest of the time I'll commute because I live out. In a little bit away, but yeah. it's about now and three quarters away, which is manageable, but just just going to break it up one night. Yes, yeah, I'm I'm about that from Bolton on a on a fair run. This Cohen is in, and this one is pulled around the corner, and it's uh, gone straight to Matt Critchley on the bounce, and throws it in, completely bypasses the wicket keeper, but Alex Dahl's backing up, of course he is. Go through for a single bird, just moves to 71. 251 for six. Nothing that's coming up at the lodge when I tried to book it, so I don't know whether it's either full or it's not fully open yet. I, don't know. I had a look for next week there, and it was about 60 quid. Right, okay. It seemed a bit much. Probably me. means it's pretty busy. Yeah. Half term, isn't it, this week? Yeah. Why are you going to travel lodge on the half term? Uh, Cohen. Is in and that one's a leading hedge out into the offside. Perfectly good hotels, of course. Uh, Briggs picks up another single and uh, moves on to 17, 252 for five. I stayed in there one night when I was on an early the following day after a game of cricket, and of course walked into my room and, uh, through the window was the county ground. Yeah. Which is magnificent to see. It's been like a new road. Yeah, I have that have that once. The one time I stayed there, a lovely view over the ground. It is, uh, it is nice to have that. We had a view of New Road when they were playing at Kidderminster. 
Yes, Cohen again over the wicket balls. Oh, <laughs> caught the inside edge and he's been given. I think that's an inside edge and Mikey Cohen gets his reward at long, long last. And Burgess just had to go at one too many outside the off stump. He's perished for 71. Simple enough catch in the end for Brooke Guest. 252 for seven now, Warwickshire. Yeah, uh, another good innings, but um, they managed to snuff it out before it can go on to three figures. First chance for the wicketkeeper to take a catch. He, he stood there for a bit, but um, it wasn't the umpires having a go. I think it was his bat. <laughs> he had a look at his bat as if to say, how on earth did you manage to, to feather that? Um, well, still Warwickshire, still got some work to do to get to uh, 300. They got to the 250 mark, but uh, it's, uh, Burgess gone. They really do need some sort of contribution from the lower order once again. 30 runs added for the seventh wicket. I'm not suggesting this is the tail then. Is yeah, that uh, the first ball of the over again? Oh, don't. Um, I'm not sure, actually, it could have been. Let me have a look. Uh, no, third. no, no, third. It was close. Yeah. Good to see you. Yeah, away with that start. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I've just commentated on them, and I had no idea. So I was just pleased for Mikey Cohen, if I'm honest. One, yeah. one for 39 from 14 and a half overs. His figures now, and he's bowled better than that. One for 12 in this current spell. You could see what it meant to him. I will double check, but it just looked like an inside edge to me. Uh, yes, two. I th uh, seem to, to, to play over the top like of to it. Think I'm about to see it actually. Yeah. No, that's not it. Oh, that's, that's, that's not in the air. It's going to wound back earlier, that's why. Craig Miles, new batsman. Liam Norwell and Oliver Hand and Dolby still to come. Ben McDermott's removed his cap. What's going on here? Is he going to field in it? Uh, Short leg, I think he is, you know. Going to get a short leg in for Mikey Cohen once uh, the helmet and all the rest of the gubbins is brought out. So it uh, gives me an opportunity to see the see the wicket. Let's get it. Well, I've just seen a screen. replay which just showed the bowler, which, you know. That's not much good. <laughs> that's not, that's not going to get you anywhere. Let's have a look. Let's slow it right down. Cohen comes in, bowls. And come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oof. Yeah, I think it was mm -hmm. the underneath of the, the the bottom edge of the bat, but that's a long way from his body, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. He's not in any real shape to play that shot, is he? Mikey Cohen celebrated. Umpire had no hesitation in raising the finger, and uh, Michael Burgess, you're right, looked at his bat rather disconsolately, then uh, trudged from the field. The delay is because we're waiting for the uh, helmet to be brought out for. Ben McDermott and his protector as well, as you might imagine. You don't want to be feeling that close. So what's it? Oh, no, right. So he's, yeah, yeah. He's just going to poke it down. There we go. So sorry, that's brought a jock strap out as well. But we're not going through the rigmarole of de trousering, which is good. He wouldn't be the first cricketer to take his pants off out on the field. So Cohen to the new batsman Craig Miles. He's in now, and that one is uh, well left alone. He raises his bat a long way into the air as it goes down the leg side. It's taken by Brooke Guest. He just removes his left glove. And there's a little bit more of an alteration to the field because Alex Hughes had found himself in at third slip. He's a good slipper. But I think they want Matt Critchley in third slash fourth slip or even gully. Yeah, that's where he's going as the sun comes out again. Eight overs and two balls to go, so around about 20 minutes. Cohen is on his way in once again from the city end. Bowls two miles, a short delivery that Miles Bailey has to duck to get out of the way of. That'll be one for the over. He's on a run of naught two and one in his last three innings, Craig Miles. But bef <laughs> before then, he did okay. His three previous innings this season were 14, 25, and 22. I need a mid-range mid sweater here because when I put my jacket on, <laughs> I'm too hot and then when I take it off, I cool down too quickly. I thought this through at all. Final ball of the Cohen over. He's in a bowls to Miles who just turns it into the leg side and gets off the mark. Alex Hughes goes around to do the fielding. And 
Warwickshire moves 253 for seven miles. One Briggs, 17, the man out in that over. It cost him three runs the over, but he picked up a wicket. Michael Burgess, decent knock. 134 delivery, seven fours for 71. Brooke Guest with the catch off the bowling of Mikey Cohen, who will be feeling a lot, lot better about life as he goes down to long leg. I see Rory Burns scored a half century for England. He's 53 not out and then 90 for two. Which is a bit of a recovery after they were 18 for two. Not a dissimilar pattern actually to this game. Or to this innings, I should say. Durham still dominating at New Road, 103 for one. Applying to Worcestershire's 131. They're a big threat, Durham. Warwickshire still have to play them at Edgbaston. Having been absolutely hammered by them at Chess sort of Street. Connors into bowl. That's not off the middle of the bat from Miles. It's out to the leg side for no run. Yes, I shall want to put that. Right. And they play them at Edgbaston, could be a critical game. Mm. Well, Derbyshire can't qualify, and that's patently obvious. They're 30 points adrift at the bottom of the group, but this game against Warwickshire, then against uh, Essex, and say. then against yeah. Trent Bridge, they could have a say in it if they can have an upturn in form. Yes, if you could start that after this game, that'd be lovely. That's pushed out <laughs> to mid on for no run. Well, this has definitely been an improvement on. Uh, recent performances. The, the Durham game accepted, but I mean that was a game without pressure because we'd lost two days effectively. They're stuck to the task well today. It's, it's yeah. coming in flurries, isn't it? They've had spells where they've been frustrated, but they've kept at it. And uh, still have hopes of keeping Warwickshire well below 300. Three more wickets required. Connors bowls. Well, that's a Tight lead from Miles. Goes low to the wicket keeper. Warwickshire, of course, without Dom Sibley and Ollie Stone, who went with the England squad. They were without them in the last match and still pulled off a very decent victory against Nottinghamshire. Well, Robson seems to have opted for, to go for a settled side generally. He's only really made changes where changes have actually been required, apart from a little bit of rotation from the bowlers, but not much. Just left some, I guess, for a the likes of Henry Brooks and Ryan Sidebottom having a look in this season thus far. Adam Hose with a bat. That's an inside edge from Miles. It's gone down to fine legs. Not where he intended it to go at all. But he will get a run for it. Move on to two. 2.54 for seven. He's been nipping it back a bit. That's at least three in this spell. Inside edges down to uh, fine leg, long leg, call it what you will. and just doing some uh, warm-up exercises at first slip. Connors comes in to bowl. And Briggs leaves it. I suppose Cole Briggs a bit of an all-rounder, but really, Derbyshire now are down to the, the lower order batters, all capable on their day. But none of them in the team, predominantly for their batting. No. Derbyshire's batting goes down to yeah, <clears throat> eight, nine, you'd say nine and ten, similar to here that Cohen and Aitchison can hold a bat. Sam Connors can hold a bat, just not for very long. <laughs> Comes in the ball now to Briggs, and Briggs pushes that down to a fine leg for a single. The batters to come, you've got Liam Norwell who'll He'll go for it, and it sometimes comes off. He can do some damage, and then you've got Ollie Hannan Dobby, who's almost the opposite. He'll he'll set his wicket dear. He'll dig in, try and survive. Not scored too many runs, which is why it was a touch surprising when he hit the two fours off the 110th over, and the last two balls of the 110th over. They get Warwickshire a point against Knotts, extra point. 255 for seven here. Seven overs left today. Sometimes. You're the number 11 bats when you might as well have a go at something yeah. like that, though, mind you. Was, does not get it. <clears throat> Mikey Cohen, wicked in his previous over. We'll continue from the city. And with two slips, he's got the third man in place down below us, Lewis Reese. 
Got two men out on the leg side. A long leg and a fairly deep square leg. As well as a man close in on the leg side at mid wicket. Cohen is in, and that one is uh, very close to taking the edge of Danny Briggs bat. Could end up with uh, three or four here if he uh, plays his cards right, Mikey Cohen, if he gets that bit of luck. I don't think anybody would begrudge him it. It's his 16th over of the day, one for 40. Connors has bowled 16 overs today and got four for 45, and you wouldn't say one had bowled appreciably better than the other in the two openers. Left, left arm at Cohen is in, gets a good bounce on that one, and Briggs deals with it very nicely indeed, just guiding it with the full face of the bat down a third man for a single. Briggs to 19.256 for seven. We're going to get the short leg in. Craig Miles. Ben McDermott with his uh, US Army haircut. He's going to go in under the helmet. And we're also going to see, instead of a third man, a gully. That's Lewis Rees. Doesn't normally feel this side of the wickets. Certainly not that close. Cohen is in, and that one is well dealt with by Miles. Gets up high and pushes it down to the ground. Godelman picks up, gets there ahead of Anuj Dahl, who looks like he's been rolling around in dust. <laughs> so his whites are not very white anymore. I assume they rarely are after a day in the field with him, because he oh. does throw himself about. He's got the elbow protectors, and the uh, tubey grip, as he feels there at backward point. Going in, that one is uh, off an edge. Now there's a shot that stumps from Billy Godelman here. It hits the batsman. Uh, Godelman goes, ooh, as though it might have hit the stumps. It might have hit the stumps, I suppose, but the batsman already had his bat down and it actually hit his body rather than the bat. No hint of uh, any problems between the fielding side and the batsman. Billy Godelman, not necessarily known for his uh, quick pick up and throw. I'm sure I feel the well today. We've talked about Dahl. I can think of well, one or two slight errors in the field, but not many. And very good catching by Wayne Madsen at second slip. Yeah, yeah he's done well, hasn't he? Wayne Madsen. He's there again next to Ben Aitchison as Cohen is in, and that one is pushed out into the offside. Again, it goes up to Billy Godelman again. They sneak through for a comfortable single. Briggs to 20. Miles has three, 258 for seven. To wait for Ben McDermott to don the helmet once again because he'll go back in the short leg for Miles. Third man comes back in for the gully. He'll be happy it's not a single in, he's going to trot all the way back again. Yeah. Tapping his bat on the ground, you can hear that in the background. Miles has Cohen bowls to him and he defends it straight back to the bowler. The end of the Cohen over, three runs from it. 258 for seven. 90 overs have now been bowled. Six to go in the day. Warwickshire 258 for seven. Briggs has 20. Miles has three. So the story of the day, Warwickshire put in this morning. And uh, two wickets for the first seven overs taken by. Um, Sam Collins is struck in consecutive overs. Will Rhodes for eight. Just uh, punch one to uh, mid off. Godelman took the catch. And Peter Milan yorked for naught, 16 for two. But then a bit of a recovery. Partnership between Rob Yates and Sam Hayne, which took Warwickshire to lunch at 82 for two. But soon after lunch, they lost a couple of wickets. Rob Yates was the first of uh, Wayne Manson's. Victims in the slips again off Collins, the ball flying to Manson, who took it very well. Yates gone for 37 at 93 for three. And Matt Lamb, the player to perish at mid on, going for a hook shot, introduced a shot really. Reese took the catch, Lamb gone for seven. Now we've got change of uh, bowling as Aitchison comes in to bowl, and that's played back to him. There's no rum. And Sam Hain, the uh, bat was out just before T for 77, caught again by Manson, the slips off Reese. 
That was 179 for five. Sound of 74 for the fifth wicket. They got to T at 185 for five. And then eventually Tim Bresnan fell. Port Manson bowled used for 17 at 222 for six. In comes Aitchison to bowl. Oh, that's edged and just short. Just uh, well, almost York's slip actually did very well to stop it because it just bounced right underneath him. Damn it. <clears throat> yeah. Well, I don't think there's any question of that being a chance. We're going to look at where, discussing where the ball bounced here. Let me keep it showing where he thinks it bounced. Maybe with a view to slip coming a bit further forward, I don't know, but uh, it was a definite edge. Uh, Michael Burgess, the last man out, caught behind off Cohen. Good reward for Cohen. Burgess gone for 71, that was 252 for seven, so just six runs added since then so far. Edges and bowls, that's left by Briggs, who's on 20. Craig Miles is on three. Has it had to ask if you have a six o'clock? I do. I'd better go, wouldn't I? Well, no, <laughs> only if you want. <laughs> So I, I can hear the news. I heard the news bed in my ear, so uh, it'll be six o'clock everywhere else, I imagine. Five overs to go after this one. Two fifty-eight for seven. Aitchison to Briggs. He's on twenty balls, and that one is driven straight back towards Aitchison. He just stretches out a left hand. Two wickets since T. Tim Bros and most recently Michael Burgess caught by Brooke Guest after bowling of Mikey Cohen. Cohen. Next delivery is uh, defended. Cohen now has uh, two wickets this season, I think. Is it two or is it three? It's three. Three wickets at 47. Mikey Cummins has bowled much better than that this season. This season. This match. One for 43. Aitchison's in and bowls and Briggs plays it straight back to him. There's no run. It's the end of a maiden over from Ben Aitchison. His second 11 overs, two maidens, naught for 53. Five to go in the day's play. Briggs has 20. Miles has three. Sports scene at six about to get underway with uh, Coles. Chris Coles. Oof, I thought that was me for a moment then. 2.58 for seven. Two bonus points apiece here, but Derbyshire with two more wickets required to get their third. I'm going to see a change of bowling as Lewis Rees comes back into the attack. Lewis Reese, who's already picked up a wicket today, that of Sam Hayne for 77, caught by Wayne Madsen at second slip. Yeah, just five overs remaining in the day now, Heidi. Warwickshire 258 for seven now. They've lost another wicket since uh, you were last with us. Michael Burgess caught by wicketkeeper Brooke Guest off the bowling of Mikey Cohen. His first wicket of the day is bowled better than just one wicket. And he finally got some good fortune as uh, Burgess feathered an under edge through to the Derbyshire wicketkeeper. Tim Bresden, the only other man to go since T. He made 17. Burgess made 71. Danny Briggs is on 20, Craig Miles has three, and Warwickshire are 258 for seven. And it should have been 258 for eight, because that was a very straightforward dropped catch there by Ben Aitchison, I'm afraid. It was an edge off Craig Miles, and the ball went in and back out again. Miles dropped by Aitchison on three. That first slip. That was uh, 
That was fairly standard, and the next delivery, of course, is played out into the offside by Miles, and there's no run. It was a poor drop, wasn't it? Yeah, afraid so. Straight in, straight I was just out. about to say it in my report, and they've just lost. Oh, no, they haven't. <laughs> yeah, I handed back just as it happened, so I didn't even mention it. <laughs> yeah, that was, a, that was a hugely disappointing drop, I'm afraid, from Ben Aitchison. What were they have given to try and winkle these last three wickets out in the remaining time? And he's in again, and that one is edged, and this time it's to the right of Matt Critchley, who's fielding in the gully, and it goes all, all the way for four runs. Always the way. Always the way. And Aitchison stands, mm. looking very thoughtful. Yeah. Slightly, feeling slightly sorry for himself, I fancy. Not sure that Reese the ball has given him too much sympathy because he no. was standing there, hands on hips, glaring. Not necessarily straight at Aitchison. But... Yeah. Aitchison knows he's dropped a goober, didn't he, really? 262 for seven. Miles on to seven. With that edge to the right of Gully. Where Madsen offers Aitchison a, a quiet word as this next delivery is... Pushed up to mid on, like Cohen does the fielding. Probably just saying, Watch me. I'll show you today. <laughs> yes, indeed. 15 wickets gone in a day at Cardiff, I eh? think. Glamorgan 98 for five, replied to Lancashire's 173. Blimey. More time off for the boys. <laughs> Sentry for Lewis Gregory for Somerset, 326 for eight against Hampshire. It's a bit of a recovery by them. Reese is in, and that one is uh, past the outside edge of Miles' is bat as he went for an expansive looking drive. And still, Aitchison is admonishing himself. Can he make up for it with this next over, which will be bowling from the race course end? Four to go. 262 for seven. Briggs 20. Wait, Miles 7. It's easy for me to say, but he has to learn actually not to really go on at himself about it. Yeah. Yeah. He's got to put it behind him and just get on with the game. You can think about it maybe at the end of the day, but uh, it happens, happens to them all. Lewis Reese has just given him a, a real good clap there and mm. said, come on, and Billy Godelman's come over to talk to him as well, which is good from the senior pro players. I like that. We didn't see it as much down at Essex. I, mean, I was a bit disappointed, but that was really good. In comes Aitchison and Duval to Briggs. Oh, and he's got a wicket, so he has got a, a response. It's not the same batter, but Briggs has edged that and caught behind for 20. And he'll be feeling a whole deal better, will uh, Ben Aitchison. And uh, a good delivery, just a way swinger, got the outside edge, and Briggs didn't wait for the decision. He was already walking off. So 262 for eight. And just as long... I might just be hoping Aitchison doesn't get... Well, the opening batters might be hoping that he doesn't get two wickets this over because they might have to face one over then. Before yeah, that would be close. awkward, wouldn't it? That would be awkward, but I think they'd take it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, the well, Warriors have to do that against Essex. They just sent the night watchman in. I was going to say, which, yeah, it's one over, yeah. You, you can't lose then because no. even if the night watchman gets out, no one has to come in afterwards. So. Yeah, oh, absolutely. And Ben Aitchison will be feeling slightly better about things and he has almost made up for the uh, fairly straightforward drop in the previous over uh, by claiming the wicket of Danny Briggs, which is, I think, out of the two, was that, that you'd yeah, say that was definitely. the one that you wanted rather than, yeah. rather than Miles, if you had to make a choice. Not that they wanted to make a choice, obviously, Derbyshire, but... Well, they are the two night watchmen, actually, but I think Briggs is first choice for that role. Or Warwickshire when they need one. Who's the entertaining Liam Norwell? Yes. Which could be exciting. Somebody might just point out to him, there's only three overs to go, Liam. Let's save it till the morning. Yes, <laughs> he can go mad tomorrow and get us to 300. And Aitchison is already back at the top of his mark. A bit of encouragement from someone down below here. Come on, Ben. Yes. Has thinned out to touch the crowd now, as has to be expected towards the close of play. That's another one. That was first ball of the over, wasn't it? it he was. comes into bowl, and that's edge, and it's gone past the slip cordon down to third man for a single. And so uh, it's um, Liam Norwell off the mark. So that's the fourth instance in the innings where a wicket has gone down with the first ball of the over. I think fifty percent is slightly more than coincidence, isn't it? Yeah. Mm get the boffins at some university <laughs> somewhere in the country to do a thesis on this. <laughs> We've paid huge amounts of money. Aitchison. 
into bowl. And that's uh, nicely steered on the offside and a good run taken there by uh, Miles. Sort of started his run and then he seemed to think, oh, well, hang on, oh, I'm doing the right thing here, but he was called through by Noel. Makes the run easy, so he's on to wait. Two former Gloucestershire players now together at the uh, Greece. Arrive from Gloucestershire at the same time. Miles recently having signed a new deal with the, the county. And uh, Gorwell um, plays that out to the mid off, drops the bat on that. There's no run. Kill a defensive shot from Liam Norwell. Slightly disappointing from <laughs> yes. my uh, perspective. But I'm trying to remember when he came in in that game against Gloucester. I'll have to look it up. Of course, you sometimes happen, no what happens when they have a couple of innings where they've hit the ball over the ball place and made a big score. They sort of think of the proper batters in the next game they start start blocking, don't they? Uh, Norwell always oh, uh, hits him on the pads side edge onto the pads, going down the leg side, no run. So Warwickshire at times this innings we've been thinking we should be able to get beyond three hundred here, other times they would be thinking two hundred and sixty four would be a decent score. So be interesting to see we'll get a better idea when Derbyshire bat is to where this is. It feels to me about par. It's uh, got a better idea tomorrow, I guess. Ben Aitchison, three slips in place, bowls, and that's solidly played by Norwell onto the onside for no run. Three overs left in the day, so uh, Warwickshire looking to survive the day. 264 for eight. Getting the third batting point now looks a long way off for them. 36 runs required to get it. 2016 when he got his century as a night watchman. 102. Eventually, like before, we get to Alex Hughes. Chris Dent made 180 in that match. A very, very flat pitch, by the way. Uh, he came in at the end of day two and finished on two not out. Went on to make 102. And uh, as I recall... Didn't have the first idea what to do with his bat as he walked off the field because I don't think he'd ever thought about it. <laughs> he hadn't even dreamt it. Three overs to go. Uh, Lewis Rees is in and that one is driven slightly unconvincingly by Miles out towards the cover boundary for four runs and disturbs uh, one of the five wagtails who are searching for grubs out there in the distance. He moves on to 16 to no, he doesn't. He moves on to 12, 268 for a hit from the scoreboard. Every run there feels valuable for Warwickshire. He's going to get this first and his total as high as possible. They will have in mind trying to get at least 32 more to pick up a third batting point. He's in and balls. That's left alone outside the Ostom by miles. I might have to leave the last over to you, Clive, because mm -hmm. I might have to go across and speak to... Uh, Chris Coles, I'm sure you you know well. Mm. Coles is doing sports scene at six tonight. Having uh -huh. uh, they've had a substitute in for the last two nights. He was all right, <laughs> but you know he wasn't Chris Coles. Was that you? Yeah. Uh -huh. It was very cricket dominated, and uh, his, his first item tonight is with the Punjabi Rams. Uh, we, we'd had little mention of the Rams for the last two nights as uh, Reese bowls, and it's pushed out into the offside by Miles. Picked up by uh, Alex Hughes. There's no run. Yes, I think I'd rather do 20 past six than 25 to seven, which might just delay the, uh, the post-match interview. Mm. And we won't be far off 20 past six when we finish. Might, it might just be in the odd over. I do apologise. Finish very quickly. They take two wickets and two balls. Well, there is that. 268 for eight. Reese is in. And that one is edged, but... Where a third slip would have been. That was Lewis Reese crying no. As they go through for a single, Matt Christie does the feeling down at third man. I think it was no, it was something along those lines. Anyway, it was a, some cry of anguish. Miles moves to 13, 269 for eight. I just said something to, uh, to the batter there. To be fair to Miles, he did keep that one down. Yeah, yeah it, just, it just went on the floor where third slip would have been. We've seen plenty of edges throughout the course of the day. Some have been 
three of them have been to Wayne Madsen, two directly, one via Brooke Guest's arm as this next delivery is played <laughs> straight back to him, Corton Bowl. Well, 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 <laughs> Norwell goes for one. Lewis Rees gets his second wicket. He, he sounded like he'd hit that really well, Liam Norwell, and it just looped straight back to Lewis Rees. He goes for one. It's 269 for nine now at Warwickshire and Derbyshire. Well, if they can dismiss them inside one day, they'll feel as though they've done their job having bowled first, winning the toss first thing this morning. And Liam Norwell, who was on two not out back in 2016 at Bristol, departs for one. Yeah. So, maximum bowling points for Derbyshire. It uh, looks like it might just be two batting points for Warwickshire. That could uh, still could come back to haunt them, the lack of batting points this season. Yeah, yeah. I think, the, I think the whole key is if they can win their remaining matches, that will put them in a strong position. Oh, if they win all three, they'll be yeah. definitely Whether yeah. they get away with two wins, I suppose, is the question. question. I guess... Nottinghamshire 245 for six in the top of the table clash in this group. If Clark has come back to bat or whether he's still off. Um, yeah, he's batting, so uh, oh, right. good. So he's okay. So uh, I'll say, obviously, without knowing what the conditions are from here, that looks like a pretty good day for Notts. Durham dominating against Worcestershire. That would, I mean, as much as I've been admonishing people for writing Worcestershire off, I think that would rule them out if they lose yeah, that game. Yeah, I think so. Uh, who we got bowling here now? Uh, it's, it's still the Reese over. We've got one more ball of the Reese over. Oh, sorry. To go. No, you're all right. They've just New batter, sort of, of course. Swap round Oliver Hannon Dolby's come out, left handed batsman. Reese is into him and gets one <laughs> past the edge of his bat. Through to the wicketkeeper, Brooke Guest. End of the over, two to go. Hannon Dolby yet to get off the mark. Miles has 13, 269 for nine. So the next wicket will be the end of play, if indeed there is another wicket. I wonder what Miles will be thinking. Does he think, well, there's two overs to go at the end of the day. Let me just see this out and have a, have a go tomorrow. Or will he think, with the greatest respect to Oli Hannon Dolby, the number 11 at the other end, Miles will play a few shots even now. I think um, the one advantage to being to batting tomorrow morning is that it means that the Derbyshire opening batsmen have to come out and field and only have ten minutes to get themselves ready, yeah. as opposed to you know take your time, have half an hour, warm yourself up, all the rest of it, and knowing when they go home tonight that they'll be batting first thing in the morning. But I can't think of any other advantages, in all honesty. No, unless they go on to put a hundred on for the tenth wicket, in which case uh, well, that would be handy. All power to their elbow. What a time Warwickshire would do that sort of thing. I'm not so sure now. Oh, and that's a Yorker length delivery of inside edge onto pads, gone to the bowler. Um, there was one match, I think they managed, and that was the first time it ever happened. Chris Wokes was involved. They managed century partnership for the ninth and tenth wickets. It's eight minutes, which is pretty a remarkable. A, a but they had the opposition. a rather stronger batting lineup. I think Wokes was coming in about number 10 in that team. Yeah. So uh, they were pretty. Pretty sorry, Ashley Giles, another one who's got a lot of runs low down the order for Warwickshire. That's a bouncer, which goes to the wicketkeeper. There's no run. These days, the lower order batters are competent, but you wouldn't really expect them. And it was a bit of a surprise, to be honest, when Norwell and Hannon Dolby managed to put on 50. It was pretty crucial in the end. The game against Knotts in the last match, but you wouldn't expect that to happen too often. No, no. So, a decent effort in the end from uh, Derbyshire. They've reined this back in. As uh, Aitchison comes in to bowl, his drop catch is not proving expensive. That's an inside edge. It bounces down to the wicket keeper. There's no run. I mean, the batter he dropped is still out there, but this still doesn't look as if it's going to be expensive. And... Uh, Wickets again going in clusters. A couple of partnerships. Warwickshire haven't managed any century partnerships. A couple of notable partnerships. And just some bowls, and that's turned round his pads by miles for a single. Have you been counting the balls? 
Uh, I think there's two to go. So two to bowl at Ollie Hannon Dorby. So Miles may have taken that single part. I mean, not that Miles is, is that much ahead of Hannon Dolby, to be fair, and the batting stakes. It's a bit cruel on Hannon Dolby, wouldn't it? <laughs> I'll t I'll t all right, I'll take these. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> I remember that actually. There was, oh, was a game. Uh, where was I? It was an outground somewhere, but there was much hilarity when Chris Wokes, who was a, quite a young new player then, was batting number 10 and started nicking the strike off Boyd Rankin, the number 11. That caused quite a lot of mirth among <laughs> his teammates. <laughs> Alan Dolby, solidly behind that, plays it to the offside for no runs. To say, you can hang around, Alan Dolby famously helped Warwickshire to secure. An unlikely draw against Somerset with a broken arm at the time, patted out the last hour. They have a big role to play with the ball tomorrow morning. Well, unless he bats to lunch, but I don't expect that. Aitchison bowls. And Hannon Dolby, that's nicely out to the offside to point for no run. End of the over, just the one off it. So one over to <coughs> see off today now, 270 for nine. So the game has moved on quite nicely. The mm. scoring has not been uh, helter-skelter, but it's been okay. And uh, the wickets have gone down. So in the game where we're not expecting too much weather, it's progressed at quite a nice pace first day. Something for everyone in this game. Indeed. Uh, yeah. Teams. It's always good, that. Here's Lewis He's already picked up two wickets. Two for 24 from his 13 overs. Can he uh, polish off the final wicket in the final over of the day? First delivery is uh, a slower ball, I fancy. And uh, Miles has taken... Single. Yes, they just invited that single with the field setting. But clearly Miles has taken the view that he's not quite... Good enough to be able to <laughs> insist on keeping the strike and turning runs down. So five deliveries to go. 271 for nine. Desperately trying not, not, not to not get distracted by uh, all sorts of production detail. <laughs> Here is Lewis Reese in Boston Han and Dolby. Just props forward and pushes it out into the offside. Four to go. This course has just said criterium to Dauphin, which is slightly <laughs> off-putting. Something to do with cycling. I don't understand it. 271 for nine. I'm not a big fan of the cycling, I've got to say. Two slips for Reese as he comes in to bowl to Han and Dolby. And he pushes it straight back to him. Looking very solid so far, Ollie yeah. Hannon Dolby. He does take his batting seriously, but um, yeah, he knows it's, he can make a contribution there if he can hang around, score a few runs. We will uh, finish quite quickly at the end of this, if that's all right, Clive, mm. with, of the commentary. Three to go. Lewis Rees bowls. It's defended by Hannon Dolby. Two to go. He's just... Uh, Testing them out here, testing their patience, and Dolby. This is what he was doing on the, that third day against Durham. I was thinking, look, you've got no chance of not losing this match. Do yeah. you really need to <laughs> hang on to the next day? He was threatening to, he didn't quite manage it in the end. Two deliveries left. In comes Lewis Reese and Bowles, and he's struck on the pad. It comes down to long leg. It'll go through four. A leg by 271 for nine. Just to let everyone, they're going to play a song now, so uh, we won't have to be that quick. Um, I was just going to say, just to let people know, Sam Hain with 77 and Michael Burgess with 71, the main contributions for Warwickshire. Rob Yates with 37. He added 77 for the third wicket with Sam Hain. Hain had it seven, added 74 for the sixth wicket with Michael Burgess. So, uh, Big contributions there, 20 from Danny Briggs, 17 from 
uh, Tim Bresnan and of course 15 from Craig Miles who's going to face the last delivery of the day and he's going to keep it out uh, so Derbyshire will have to come back and bowl tomorrow because Warwick should have ended on 272 for nine at the end of day one two wickets for Lewis Reese, one each for Ben Aitchison Alex Hughes and Mikey Cohen and four for Sam Connors four for 45 he'll be keen to pick up the last wicket you'd have thought first thing tomorrow morning and finish with career best figures it's going to be another fascinating day. It's been a decent day's cricket, I think, today. We, yep. we will be back just before 11 o'clock tomorrow morning on BBC uh, Sport website and uh, the app and, of course, on the Derbyshire County Cricket Club live stream. Thanks for your company today. Thank you, Clive. We'll see you, you all tomorrow.